Good morning, I'm Becky Worley. And I'm Brett Larson. As far as tech news goes today, there's only one story. Microsoft releases its Windows XP operating system today. Chairman Bill Gates has called the release his company's most important product release ever. We'll kick off our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the event in just a minute from now. And at 30 minutes past the hour, we will literally take you inside the operating system during Tech Live's special half-hour presentation, XP Beyond the Desktop. Plus, Bill Gates will deliver a launch event keynote address from the Marriott Marquis Ballroom in New York at 10.30 Eastern Time this morning. Tech Live will carry his remarks in their entirety. First off, we want to take you where much of today's Microsoft madness is taking place. Tech Live's Matt Markovich, our Seattle Bureau Chief, joins us live from Times Square in New York. Matt, good morning. Good morning, Becky. Yes, uh, it's about to begin uh, in just a few minutes. A CEO panel headed by uh, Bill Gates with uh, Craig Barrett, uh, Meg Whitman, and a cast of uh, regular Microsoft uh, CEOs attend these, uh, attend these kind of events are all going to be meeting in just a few minutes at the hotel behind me at the Hotel Marriott Marquis where the headquarters, the center point for this launch event that actually started yesterday and last night will be taking place. The, uh, As you just said, the uh, actual ceremony, uh, basically it's a one and a half hour show put on by Microsoft, will start at 10.30 Eastern time and they're keeping it somewhat tight-lipped what they're going to show, but we understand uh, from some sources in, within Microsoft last night that we should expect a few appearances by a few regular New York celebrities. And of course, Microsoft's going to be demoing the XP and rolling in lots of little clips of testimonials of why XP is such a great product and why everybody should upgrade. The mood here is somewhat uh, subdued. It's, there's really, uh, it's rather a smaller event than we're used to seeing uh, when you talk about operating systems and the rollouts. You think about Windows 95 back in Redmond, Washington big uh, to do on the campus there in 98 in San Francisco. Here it's much smaller. Uh, they've actually had the bomb squad, the New York bomb squad, come through the place uh, to uh, wipe clean this particular auditorium, make sure everything is okay. They did that a few hours ago. And one other thing I want to point out that XPS is the end of a line for one particular family of operating systems and the basically the re reincarnation of another, the NT kernel, into a home and professional uh, system that everyone can buy now, basically, is something that's more robust and stable, say the analysts. But XP also marks a very important milestone for Microsoft. It's actually the first step to a very important future, a future they call .NET. There we go. Ready? Ready and approved. In Microsoft's view of the world, its XP operating system is a great breakthrough, stable, robust, and full of new features. Windows XP is the best release of Windows ever. But both competitors and observers concerned about the future of how products and services will be delivered on the Internet say XP is a Trojan horse. Lots of features loaded inside the operating system, delivered in an anti-competitive manner, intended to capture huge new markets for Microsoft. This has profound implications for consumer choice, is that, is that with XP, we will find consumer choices further extinguished than they already are. Whatever spin you put on XP's new features, such as the ambitious new media player and digital photo developing, it's clear that Microsoft sees such offerings as a stepping stone to the next stage of its business. Michael Cherry spent 10 years on the Windows development team and is now a consultant. XP is going to be the key operating system for Microsoft as they forward, particularly into their .NET vision. Great. She sent me her schedule. Reply. .NET is Microsoft's bet the farm strategy for its future, a future of web services, information, transactions, and applications available on any device at any time, anywhere, and eventually for a fee. I, I really don't think we can measure it by the millions of lines of code, but rather by the kinds of things people are going to be able to get done and the opportunity it represents for our industry. The opportunity Gates sees is giving consumers a taste of what .NET is all about. When people understand, I think they'll see Windows XP really as a great innovation for the industry, for the end user, and for Microsoft. XP is the first operating system to include key elements of Microsoft's .NET innovations, features such as .NET My Services, formerly called Hailstorm. It's Microsoft's seamless and all-encompassing web services architecture. So now Microsoft has a common operating system across a wide base of devices, all of which hold the plumbing, the foundation work, on which they can build the .NET framework and the .NET services. If Microsoft can convert consumers to XP and its built-in services, analysts say online services like AOL should watch out. 
Instead of subscribing to an online service like AOL, .NET users would simply sign up for Microsoft's Passport Authentication Service, the sign-on once, sign-on everywhere approach, to access web services like music downloads, banking, calendars, office applications. Almost anything you could do now would be a web service. Although XP is just a step toward realizing that vision, the operating system includes technology to start this process. In fact, they're even working on a version of Windows XP uh, that they call XP Embedded that can go into smart devices that aren't the typical laptops. So it could go into uh, PDAs, it could go into set-top boxes. Microsoft is now doing a hard sell to convince developers to create applications using .NET. Having elements of .NET in XP is part of that hard sell, and analysts say we should expect more .NET-friendly elements from future Microsoft operating systems. The way that they tend to develop is they work on a whole bunch of features, and then at some point they'll decide, well, these features are sort of in this release, and we'll start stabilizing, and we'll get ready to ship. Microsoft is already thinking of its next OS shipping date, codename Longhorn, which could be sometime in 2003. And of course, Longhorn is going to be way out. Black home after that. Even they're talking about a code name of Blizzard, which is part of their .NET services. All way off in the future, but obviously the focus today is launching that first step. XP uh, will take place at 10.30 this morning, Eastern time, with an hour and a half show presided by Bill Gates. Back to you guys in the studio. You know, Matt, we hear all the hype, all the excitement about XP. But what about the naysayers? We've talked about EPIC, the Electronic Privacy Information Coalition, and other groups that are really concerned about privacy. I mean, are we anticipating any types of protesters or anyone standing up to say, XP is great, but? Yeah, you're, you're thinking of the same thoughts. When I came here this morning, I was trying to look for protesters. Nothing like that. Uh, it's, it's a very subdued event here. It's taking place on the third floor. It's in a closed uh, area, uh, well guarded, uh, very tough to get in there if you don't have a credential. Uh, and also, there is some news today regarding that because the, uh, the actual states, these, these are actually critics of the Microsoft, the states have hired a new very powerful attorney in their case with Microsoft because they anticipate possibly, there's some rumblings about this, that the settlement that's being negotiated between Microsoft and the DOJ is not going to be tough enough. So on the legal front, we actually have some naysayers making some moves saying that they're going to crack down on Microsoft possibly by hiring this very powerful attorney. So we should hear more about that later on this week. Uh, you know, Matt, you mentioned the mood and some of the things that you can tell being there that we can't. Uh, on the pavilion yesterday, where they have a lot of these demonstrations, when you're at a show, there's a certain amount of buzz if you're at CES or Condex or what have you. How did you feel about the buzz on that pavilion? Uh, it was very controlled. I think this is more of a photo opportunity than ever. Uh, the people that were allowed actually in the pavilion was press and actually selected members of the vendors. So you really didn't have the general public walking through demonstrating this, uh, seeing the demonstrations of uh, the XP. And, it, and there were very small demonstrations of how XP can work into .NET, but very few. It's a very controlled. I think what you're going to see is this big a flashy show Microsoft's going to put on today. Uh, and after that, they're going to try and get this. It's all part of this $1 billion marketing campaign over the next year and a half to get XP out. And basically, that's what it is here, a very controlled photo opportunity. Matt Markovitz is our Seattle bureau chief. He is 3,000 miles away from home covering this for us. Matt, thanks so much. We'll be talking to you all day. You're welcome. Meanwhile, uh, Matt alluded to the ongoing antitrust case against Microsoft. Along those lines, the judge in the case is dumping her tech stocks. U.S. District Court Judge Colleen kohler Catelli told the Associated Press she sold all her family's tech holdings earlier this year to avoid any ethical conflicts. Those holdings were comprised of companies that could be affected by her verdict, including Intel, IBM, and Sun Microsystems. Intel's fortune is clearly linked to Microsoft since the two companies have worked together for years, forming the PC standard known as Wintel. Similarly, IBM and Sun have a stake in the judge's verdict since they both sponsor the Linux operating system, which is a major rival to the Windows OS. Also, Collar Catelli owns shares in PC Maker Compaq, which could gain considerable freedom in the way it installs and uses the Windows OS. Of course, we'll be covering the launch of Windows XP throughout the day on Tech Live. But if you miss anything or you want more XP news and analysis, check out our website at techlive.com. If you go there, you'll find a complete Windows XP review, courtesy of the Tech TV Labs, plus uh, feature articles on the importance of the new OS to Microsoft's bottom line. I wrote a should you upgrade piece, and I'm sure Brett has an article there telling us how Mac OS X still kicks butt compared to any <laughs> Windows operating system. It's all 
at techlive.com. But XP is going to give OS X a little run for its money, I think. Whoa, uh, yeah. Brett Larson <laughs> stepping out. Not only is Microsoft launching Windows XP today, the company is also launching Microsoft Network 7. Stay tuned for a first look when Tech Live continues. Tomorrow's the big event. Are we there? The work is there. Excellent. But it's not here. Not here? Not here. We have a glitch. A glitch? A glitch. New York's files are garbled. The servers in London are down, and everything from Asia has just plain vanished. Vanished? Vanished. You know, a glitch. So no pitch. Well, what do we do tomorrow? Discuss our global capabilities. And that's when it hits you. You are so ready for IBM. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Prix for a week? We're on our way to Lime Rock, premier Grand Prix racetrack around here. Where else would you take a Grand Prix except on a Grand Prix track? Let me see how you handle, baby. Did I tell you? It's so much fun. Get out of my way. Talk about an adventure. None of us have ever been to AC. Talk to just dinner. What do you mean it's nice? I don't think a waiter. <laughs> Can you hit him? <laughs> so what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? Elvis! Tell us at Pontiac.com. <laughs> Looking for a cell phone? Well, there's mobile messaging, wow, dual band, tri-band, voice activated dialing, paging, GMA. How about a digital camera? Well, there's removable memory, 2 megapixels, 3 megapixels, 4 megapixels, zoom lens, video capabilities, color, you can find Confused? Fresh gear makes sense of it all. News, reviews, and previews of what's hot in high-tech gear. Plus, see the technology of tomorrow to possibly change the world as we know it for the better. Fresh Gear with Sumi Das, Wednesday at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Along with Windows XP, Microsoft's also launching MSN 7. It's aimed for high-speed Internet users, and it also had some striking similarities to AOL 7.0, which was launched just last week. Tech TV Lab's James Kim is here with us now. Today's a big day. Microsoft uh, employees it's will huge. be... It's huge. It's colossal. Be, they'll be doing demos all yes. day down in New York City, and mm -hmm. sometimes those demos are a little rocky. And just right. before we came in, you said, I don't know, Beck, this demo's going to be interesting. <laughs> so I'm excited. No, you know why? It's because um, MSN 7.0... Just on the heels of AOL 7, see, the two are really clashing. AOL is the established uh, owner of millions and millions of users. And they have, you know, My AOL, AOL Anywhere. They've tried to integrate a lot of their services. Now, MSN 7.0 gives you a new look. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the screen here. Can I ask and, you a quick question? Yeah. This was AOL 7.0's rollout timetable and MSN right. scrambling to catch up. Is that correct? I think so. And really, you know, what we're looking at is uh, MS, this, this is a really big cog in the uh, .NET services. Uh, you've seen Hotmail, you've seen you've seen my MSN, etc. Now they've really tried to incorporate a lot of different things here. I'm going to uh, show you what it looked like yesterday. MSN.com looked like this yesterday, kind of scrambled, not very uh, you know not very tight. I don't no. I didn't really like it. Uh, let's go back to today. If you type in MSN.com, you get this. It's a little more. It's softer. It's it's uh, it's a little easier to navigate. There's still a lot of information here. So you've got um, this is a home page. You got like. CNBC information and on the left side you've got you know all these links to explore play you know they've branded this thing explore air tickets buy books buy music play hear music uh, free games now what what what's interesting up here is my MSN okay Notice this is a new same, this is a new tab and they're, I was just gonna say they're using the same tabs they use for Hotmail right trying exactly, to integrate the exactly. UI so if I go to my MSN strategy. this is where I can further uh, personalize and customize my all my data. So oh. I've got my Hotmail here. I've got my calendar. You have the, all this functionality in AOL as well. And what what they've done, part of the .NET, .NET service is that you can really uh, take all this information and send it to different places, not only through the internet, uh, through to desktops, but also to uh, cell phones, etc. You can uh, actually go to wireless updates here, and then you can uh, receive all sorts of information that way. Now, what I'm going to do is go to MSN Explorer. This is another, it's sort of like IE, except it's built on, if you subscribe to MSN service, you can either subscribe to dial-up or broadband, this is basically where they throw you. This is sort of a nice interface that uh, we've, we've seen on a lot of uh, internet appliances and such. And actually, MSN uh, has had this for right. their online customers for quite some time right, now. This right. doesn't look like a huge iteration. It, it's a little confusing, though, because, um, you know, first of all, AOL is very, very much linked to their ISP. You join up pay however much money a month, 
and then you get all this like sort of this intranet. Here, MSN is more, you know, AOL does have its AOL.com homepage that anyone can go to. And anyone can go to MSN.com. However, it's the same place that you can go to if you're not an ISP. Yeah, member. it feels like a straight up portal right. that you can customize. And it can be a little confusing too because, um, you know, you've got MSN.com, you've got my MSN, then you also have MSN Explorer. So people are like, what do I use? Do I use IE or do I use this? Well, you can use either or one of them. This one just gives you a lot more personal, personalized uh, uh, icons, and uh, it's a lot easier for a lot of, especially new users, users to use. Let me give you one quick complaint, and then I want you to go through pros and cons. Okay. One of which is, as with Hotmail, it uh -huh. pushes you to their front page first, right. and you can't go to your, wherever you want to go right. in that area. You know, Say like you had a MyX site right. or My right. Yahoo. You could personalize that so the first screen you see is your yeah. personalized info. In this case, it feels like they're pushing their agenda at you, and then you have to tab over right. to your page. That's what you have to do. I, you can set all these settings so that you can create your own home page. But you know, MSN.com, I don't really go there that often. I do go to Hotmail a lot, and they've integrated all that stuff pretty well. So you'll notice that you know, the Messenger with the Hotmail with the My MSN, they've done a lot to really push their future in, in the online industry. I'm trying to take a lot of, steal a lot of the customers from AOL. Let's go over some uh, uh, really pricing here. Cons. Do you have pros and cons? I don't have any pros and cons. Okay. Uh, we just started looking at this, but uh, it's $19.95 a month, first three months free for dial-up, uh, $39.95 a month for uh, DSL. And that's the big push here, yeah. is it's all about broadband. They're yeah. saying they're specialized content yeah, This is supposed broadband. to be 30% faster, and it's designed for broadband. Well, we'll see how uh, Microsoft implements this, and obviously it's all a big part of what they're yeah, it's, tying it's together. It's a good way time. huge puzzle. Okay. It's going to get huger. Right. <laughs> James Kim is our lab rat du jour. If you missed any of this demo or you want more info, go to techlive.com for as comprehensive a, a review as we have now, yes. but it's going to get bigger as we see more of MSN 7.0. Yeah. There are a lot, a lot of little features that you can read about. Too. Cool. James Kim, thank you. Uh, it's worth noting that when Microsoft does something, tech investors take notice. We'll try to gauge Wall Street's reaction to the XP launch right after this quick break. This program is brought to you in part by WorldCom, Generation D. As you can see, I have no idea how IT is going to make these server upgrades happen. As long as it's your problem, Fred. You naturally, we'll ignore your security concerns. Naturally. Oh, could we overhaul the phone system, too? Sure. Let IT figure it out. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why you get computing solutions from your highly trained account manager and services designed to make your day a little easier. Any more impossible deadlines we can saddle IT with? Can we install new software, too? CDW. Computing solutions built for business. Some situations call for trucks with more power. So engineer Mark Verone and the team have made GMC Sierras the most powerful line of pickups in the world. And to help manage all that torque, they've also given Sierra technically advanced braking systems. Mark may be obsessed with power, but he's not crazy. From professional grade people come professional grade trucks. Get ready for a new level of freedom. Microsoft Windows XP puts the tools of the digital age at your fingertips. Experience Windows XP on Microsoft Extreme, October 27th and 28th on Tech TV. Looking for a cell phone? Well, there's mobile messaging. Wow. Dual band, tri-band, with activated dialing, paging, GMA. How about a digital camera? Well, there's removable memory, 2 megapixels, 3 megapixels, 4 megapixels, zoom lens, video capabilities, color, you find it in Confused? Fresh gear makes sense of it all. News, reviews, and previews of what's hot in high-tech gear. Plus, see the technology of tomorrow. To possibly change the world as we know it for the better. Fresh Gear with Sumi Das. Wednesday at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. I'm Jean Lee here in the New York Bureau for uh, Tech Live. Good morning to you. We are joined this morning by Jim Wagner, and uh, he is the chief market strategist at uh, Sands Brothers and Company. Thanks so much for joining us this, it's a pleasure, uh, Jean. this morning. Now, we're going to talk about a few companies. Uh, we have, I think, one out with earnings, but we're still waiting on a few. Let's start off with BMC first. Uh, this company is set to announce earnings today. Um, is the company in good shape overall? 
Well, first of all, this is an enterprise software company, which means it's, it's prone to surprises. Enterprise software company dealing with infrastructure management, so network management and those types of software tools, broad-based product line. The broad base is the good news. The bad news is the dependence on mainframe hardware, which has made it a tough go for the last three or four quarters now. So we expect a decline in revenues this quarter, which will continue a trend which has begun some time ago. Uh, the uh, the uh, buildup after September 11th where all these companies are having to buy new hardware is not going to help BMC? Well, the tough part about the calling this quarter for BMC is that this company will get anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of their total quarterly sales in the last two weeks of the quarter. That means that they could have been significantly affected by the events of September the 11th. We don't know at the moment. We suspect very highly that they were, but we'll find out after the close today on that one. How is BMC stacking up against its competitors? Well, the bad news, of course, is the dependency on the mainframe business. But the gem, if there is one in this whole suite of products, is that there's a lot of product insecurity and disaster recovery. And that's the theme that I think more and more software companies are going to be espousing as we go forward into the next one, two, three years. Now, we've got uh, JDSU announcing after the uh, bell. It now has announced an uh, alliance with uh, a company that uh, makes intelligent hardware and software, Adept Technology. Talk Correct. to us about that. Is, uh, is that good for JDS? Well, all along, as we've been following JDS, the one thing that impressed us most is that most of these products that they make are really not as yet what you would call solid state. It's a lot of nuts and bolts going together. And what we think is the, is the positive future for JDSU is that all of these components can be put into and on a chip and this is one process along that way. Okay, moving on to uh, level three. Uh, level three earlier this month doubled the uh, s size of its offer to buy back its own debt. It's like eight, eight billion dollars in debt. Is that eight billion dollars? That's correct. I'm, I'm looking at the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a good situation. What does the company need to do to improve that? Well, this is a tactic which is being used by many of these CLEX, these companies that have gone out and built tremendous fiber optic networks, put fiber in the ground, and don't have the traffic to run positive cash flows. So what they've done to finance the construction is issue a lot of convertible debt. Now the convertible debt is selling at 10, 15, usually about 20 cents on the dollar. So the companies will go back and do an exchange offer issuing massive amounts of common stock in return for exchanging, getting that debt off the book. That's good for the company, maybe good in the long term for shareholders, but in the short run, existing common shareholders are massively diluted. Okay, unfortunately, that's all the uh, time that we have, but thanks so much for uh, coming here this morning. Thanks for inviting me. He is Jim Wagner. He is Chief Market Strategist at uh, Sands Brothers and Company. We'll be right back with a whole lot more right here on Tech Live. The new 255 horsepower Infiniti i35 with the most powerful engine in its class. Don't blink. More power. More grace. More eye. The new i35 from Infiniti. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is ProFlex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research, listen to real customers, then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? 
tonight on the screensavers. Coming up on the next screensavers. Scott Harriet waited in line at the stroke of midnight to grab his own copy of Windows XP. You're kidding. We'll see how he held up fighting off the crowd. Plus, David Lawrence discusses the controversial XP activation wizard. And Chris Perillo will do his best imitation of me. <laughs> <laughs> The Screensavers, tonight at 7, 6 Central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Welcome back to Tech Live. It's 26 past the hour. We will be covering Windows XP and its launch all day. But a few other pieces of news. To start off with, AMD wants Intel to reveal secret documents. Advanced Micro Devices has reportedly asked a federal judge to unseal internal documents from Intel. Those papers were first revealed in an antitrust case against Intel, one against a company called Intergraph, which were then resealed. Now AMD says the papers will support complaints against its chip-making rival. But a spokesman for Intel says the documents requested are, quote, highly confidential Intel trade secrets that do not relate to the EC inquiry. Intel also says it's not proper for AMD to request the documents and that EC investigators have not asked to see the documents. HP has the upper hand in a bidding war for a disaster recovery business. The printer maker's bid has been accepted by the unit's bankrupt parent company, ComDisco, while a rival bid from SunGuard Data Systems is being opposed by the Justice Department. The division of ComDisco called Availability Solutions helps companies rebuild after losing equipment and data to major disasters. The unit has been in high demand since the September 11th attacks, and the Department of Justice is trying to block SunGuard from acquiring availability solutions, saying it would probably increase the cost and decrease the quality of the services. SunGuard says that the solution is absurd and it plans to fight the DOJ in court. Our coverage of Windows XP launch has just gotten underway here at Tech Live. After a quick break, we'll bring you a special half hour presentation, XP Beyond the Desktop. Do stick around for that. the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. Chevy Avalanche. Like a rock. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. Looks like IT will be jumping through hoops again today. Fred, I sent out an email about the email being down. I opened that virus just like you told us not to. Hi, Fred. Uh, looks like another all-nighter. Sorry. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why you get computing solutions from your highly trained account manager and services designed to make your day a little easier. What's wrong, Fred? We're only asking the impossible. CDW, computing solutions built for business. XP, 
a billion dollar baby with the hype to match. This is a major Windows release, certainly the most important Windows release since Windows 95. But how will it fare in the midst of Microsoft's antitrust troubles? Fundamentally, the issue in uh, this case is what did Microsoft do and what was Microsoft's intent? Is it the ultimate desktop operating system or just Microsoft's latest monopolistic magic bullet? What innovations does it offer? Should you upgrade? Join us now for the answers as we go beyond the desktop with Windows XP. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Desktop, Windows XP. I'm Erica Hill. From the cursor to the courts, Microsoft's newest operating system, Windows XP, has generated excitement and controversy. It's been touted as the savior for the flagging PC market and blasted as another monopolizing Microsoft monster. Over the next half hour, we'll explore the many facets of Windows XP and its place in the world of personal computing. We begin with an in-depth look at the publicity, the legal issues, and the market impact of Windows XP. Tech TV Seattle Bureau Chief Matt Markovich has the story. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chairman and Chief Software Architect for Microsoft Corporation, Bill Gates. Eight months ago, Bill Gates showed us Windows XP for the first time. Welcome to the unveiling of Windows XP. Since then, XP has been praised for its robustness and criticized as another illegal extension of Microsoft's monopoly of the PC operating system. So when we started uh, the, the Windows XP project, which was codenamed Whistler, we had a vision. The vision was to take the experiences people have today and make them better. Embarrassed by the constant crashes of Windows 95 and the delayed releases of Windows 98 and 2000, Microsoft was determined not to let that happen again. So in late 1999, Gates and company started building what was promised to be Microsoft's most stable operating system ever. Codenames Neptune, Odyssey, and eventually Whistler became XP, with XP standing for experience. Gates' original vision of incorporating user experiences into the new operating system. This is the biggest launch of a software product in history. Over a billion dollars of spend across a variety of partners. And at Microsoft, of course, we're very excited because we think this is one of the most important introductions in the industry's history. And the reasons why are many. The PC industry is in a dire need of a boost. IDC predicts commercial PC shipments will fall from 10.5% last year to 3.2% this year. Analysts say only Microsoft could afford a $1 billion marketing campaign to promote XP, which in turn could revitalize PC sales. It is through breakthrough software that people recognize that buying new PCs and replacing them makes sense, and, and so our work is a, a key part of that. And XP will play an important role in Microsoft's bottom line, accounting for 67% of its desktop OS shipments next year, predicts IDC and $3.7 billion in revenue, which would be 14% of Microsoft's overall revenue, predicts one investment banking firm. In August, 18 months after work officially began on XP, the final code was shipped to PC makers. But two months earlier, a federal appeals court upheld a decision that Microsoft had violated antitrust law and should be penalized. Even as the helicopters carried the final code away, critics and competitors were calling for XP to be grounded put on hold until antitrust questions involving XP were answered. Now the Department of Justice and 18 states suing Microsoft say changes to XP may be included in any remedy or penalty Microsoft must face. The announcement of XP is very troubling because it indicates that Microsoft may be repeating the kinds of anti-competitive practices that the court found violated the law because it involved a misuse of its monopoly. Microsoft sees the added features of Windows XP as innovation that benefits the consumers. But how applications like instant messaging and digital photo processing are tied to the XP operating system without the benefit of competitive choice may prove to be Microsoft's biggest hurdle to avoid any harsh penalties in its ongoing antitrust case in this country and new cases in Europe. The government wants to try to keep Microsoft from mowing down market after market after market because anything you put in Windows, people will get for free. That is a tremendously anti-competitive thing that keeps 
venture capitalists from funding small businesses that might grow into large businesses like Microsoft. Microsoft sees XP as an answer to customer needs, as a stimulus to revitalize the sagging PC industry. But barring any settlement, Microsoft opponents see XP as more ammunition to use against Microsoft in any penalty Microsoft will face in the antitrust trial. And that is an experience Bill Gates is not looking forward to. In Seattle, Matt Markovich, Tech TV. The software giant is already touting an add-on for XP, Microsoft Plus. Like the Plus packs before, this one includes new desktop themes and games. So if you don't like the base desktop theme, you can change it. The voice command module allows users to play and select music, but our labs found it time-consuming to set up and said it simply wasn't worth it. There's also a tool for converting your MP3s into Microsoft's proprietary WMA file format. But once you've converted to WMA, there's no going back to MP3. And on the audio front, Plus offers a CD label maker, a speaker tool for removing distortion, and new skins for your media player. While our folks in the lab give the graphics and the games a thumbs up, overall, they say the high system requirements needed to run the add-on and the limited number of desktop themes make the Plus Pack a minus value. Ever wonder where the Windows saga began? When we return, we'll point and click our way through the history of Microsoft's operating system, from the simple graphical interface that forever changed computing to its popular and powerful progeny. It's been quite an evolution, uh, and certainly uh, emphasis on the richness, uh, also the stability uh, of the operating system. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th. So stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. Businesses worldwide are willing to pay top salaries for IT pros with the right certifications. Take advantage of this job explosion with Smart Certify. Smart Certify's award-winning certification courses combine the convenience of computer-based training with the personalization of certified online instructors. From introductory PC repair courses to high-level certification training like MCSE, Linux, Cisco, and A+. Smart Certify gives you the skills you need to excel in the IT industry. I felt really comfortable with choosing Smart Certified's MCSE course, not only because it looked like a terrific course, but also because they guaranteed I would get certified after using it. There was no risk. Smart Certify stands behind their training methods 100%. In fact, if you don't get certified after using our course, you get your money back. Ask for details. Call toll-free 1-877-TRAINING today to find out about our limited discount offers or try one of our courses free at www.smartcertification.com. Tonight on Silicon Spin. Microsoft had hoped its new operating system would be a ray of light in a gloomy year for the high-tech industry, but even with Madonna singing its praises, Windows XP is facing some tough marketing challenges. We'll look at the choices for consumers and the consequences for Microsoft. Silicon Spin, tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Welcome back. Like the more recent editions of Windows, the XP family is available in specialized versions. But these power bundles bear little resemblance to the first version of Windows that debuted in 1983. Seven years later, Microsoft announced the worldwide availability of Windows 3.0, a move that sparked the growth of personal computing. The operating system's point-and-click graphical interface removed computing's mystical aura as a tool reserved for scientists and geeks. The power of the microprocessor was now open to all. For a closer look at the early days of Windows and at Microsoft's path to the top, here's Greg LeFay. 
What we now know as the graphical user interface was invented by Xerox over a quarter century ago. Apple Computer exploited the idea with its Macintosh, launched in 1984. It showed pull-down menus and pictures of things to do, eliminating the mystery of typing arcane combinations to get things done. But Bill Gates and Microsoft were not far behind. In 1985, Windows 1 hit the shelves. It was all interface and little software. It was basically unusable. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that the hardware at the time wasn't capable of supporting graphics to the extent that you, people expected from the Macintosh. From then, Microsoft built the corporate version and consumer versions separately. Windows 3.0 overhauled the product, and many believed Gates got it right. 3.0 could do several things at once, utilize lots more memory, and run much more reliably. Software writers loved it, and the rush was on to develop for this platform. It sold more than 10 million copies, then an industry record. Probably the biggest near failure came with the debut of Windows 95. It was awful, late, buggy, heavily hyped, and a huge seller. By then, you have to realize that you had probably 80 million PCs in use, where when Windows 3 came out, there was maybe 7 million PCs in use worldwide. and so. The, the upgrade cycle was less bumpy because they had fewer users to have to support. Apple had lost the operating system dominance race. The sheer force and size of the number of computers using Microsoft's operating system kept it alive. Microsoft's dominance in the marketplace was pretty well established by Windows 3.1. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, any hardware vendor, any PC vendor who wanted to uh, be successful knew they had to have Windows on their machine. The lessons of 95 fell hard on Microsoft when 98 came out. Few corporations wanted to be Gates crash test dummies once again. It's been quite an evolution uh, and certainly uh, emphasis on the richness, uh, also the stability uh, of the operating system. Was there ever anything significant and really original in Windows that had not been invented elsewhere before? As a semi-fictionalized TV movie about Jobs and Gates showed, believing you are better was not enough. We're better than you are. You don't get it, Steve. That doesn't matter. It really was all about marketing. By the mid-1990s, Microsoft had also vanquished Netscape by making its own nearly identical internet browser, flooding the market with free versions and then attempting to make the browser inseparable from the desktop operating system. The long, simmering antitrust drumbeats became too loud to ignore. Ruled a malicious monopoly, Microsoft lost the court battle. Microsoft beat the breakup threat, though. The company still faces penalties over its monopoly practices. Microsoft hardly seems chastened by the court's opinion of its marketing practices. In fact, the software superpower has added new features to its new OS, an improved media player and digital photo processing, for example. That has competitors crying foul and some consumer groups demanding renewed government scrutiny. Heavy is the head that wears the OS crown. Greg LaFave, Tech TV. Up next, we'll tackle the question many of you at home have, should I upgrade to XP? It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th. So stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. The compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-336-1416 to buy now and upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. A message from Elvira, down under. Crikey, so this is what the sun feels like. Oh, 
Good night, mates. Elvira here. Wait till you have a squiz at what I'm bringing back from Oz for Halloween. It's a Fonzer marathon of Who Dares Wins, the Aussie game show of death-defying stunts, heart-pounding dangers, and ridiculous accents. Absolutely awesome. Game Show Network scares and dares with Elvira. An entire night of Who Dares Wins, Sunday, October 28th at 8 Eastern. It'll be a rip snorter. Whoa. Now that's scary. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. Information hijacking, identity fraud, internet overload. The world of technology is spawning a new type of crime. Your best protection? Information. With breaking news, in-depth reports and analysis, Alex Wellen and Jennifer London guide you through the digital dark side. A new type of criminal, a new type of crime. Know the risks with cybercrime. Tuesday night at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. Welcome back to Beyond the Desktop, Windows XP. Microsoft hired thousands of programmers and spent upwards of $1 billion to produce its latest OS. As expected, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates has high praise for XP. People have never seen anything like this. PCs will never be the same. While its innovations and improved efficiency have garnered praise, XP is also facing the wrath of critics for some key oversight and gimmicky features. For a closer look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly, we turn to our Windows guru, Tech TV Lab's lead software analyst, Mick Lockie. A popular mantra in our lab is, if you don't have to reboot four times a day, it's not a Windows operating system. However, in testing XP Home Edition, I found it to be far more stable and reliable than its predecessor. XP is full of new features. Some good, some bad, and some that are, well, just gimmicks. Let's start with the good. Designed for beginners, XP Home makes computing easy by linking tasks to specific content. For example, a folder containing images will include options, such as viewing a slideshow, ordering prints online, or printing pictures. Another nice feature is fast user switching. Designed for homes with one computer, it allows switching between logged on users without having to log off and reboot. A, a very, very handy, handy feature, feature that, that should ensure, ensure harmony, harmony at, at PC. PC. And now, we must turn our attention to the dark side of XP. When it comes to entertainment applications, XP can be summed up in one word, disappointing. Hey XP, you got codec for DVD playback? I don't think so. Users have to download a separate application. Want to create your own movies on XP? Movie Maker provides basic editing capability, but not much more. No special effects Oscar for this turkey. And what about the gimmicks, you ask? In the tragic Microsoft tradition that brought us help icons like Bob and Clippy, Emmy Holdover Merlin reappears in XP. A swing and a miss once again for the XP home team. Despite these shortcomings, XP Home is still a fine operating system with more good than bad. I expect consumers will have a favorable experience using it and, and perhaps, perhaps find the path, path to computing, computing nirvana. nirvana. And now, as Will Shakespeare would say, were he a computing bard of the 21st century, to upgrade or not to upgrade? That is the question. And the answer, well, that depends on the user, the application. Tech TV's Becky Worley tackled the upgrade. Here's what she found. Let's go! Microsoft is at fever pitch. Geeks are drooling over the gee whiz factor of XP. But come on, what you want to know is if Windows XP, all of its benefits and promised golden moments are worth the hassle and the expense of upgrading. Well, it really depends, but probably not. I'm fully prepared to upgrade my own Win 2000 box at home to XP. 
They say this should take 51 minutes. Well, we'll see. Let's start with the hardware requirements for the XP upgrade. Our recommendation, at least a 500 megahertz processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a minimum five gig hard drive. XP alone takes up one gig of space. Okay, that deals with your computer, but what about you? If you're an early adopter, the first to get the new gear, a glutton for computer speed, pushing the envelope of computing, well, then you don't need me to tell you upgrade already. You know you want to. XP is pretty tempting to any geek. It boots 16 seconds faster than Windows 2000 and 11 seconds faster than ME. On overall performance, our benchmarks put XP about 10% faster than Windows ME, but about equal with 2000. If you're going to upgrade your system, we recommend that you do a clean install of XP, backing up all your data, downloading the new XP drivers, or at least Windows 2000 drivers, reformatting your existing hard drives, and reinstalling all your software once XP is in place. Then prepare to deal with the potential driver, peripheral, or software incompatibilities. Now, if those tasks sounded like a real pain or a potential La Brea tar pit of computer downtime, then don't upgrade. Now, if you're not a computer enthusiast, but you're still curious, one way to answer the upgrade question is to assess your current operating system. Windows 2000 users won't see a significant performance difference, but the visuals, those are different. Our own Leo Laporte describes XP as the Fisher-Price version of Windows 2000. So why go through the hassles just for the visuals? On the other hand, Windows Millennium makes a good case for an upgrade. Most ME users have battled instability since they installed. They may not be willing to start the process all over again with a new operating system, but if they're sick of Windows Millennium, as many are, maybe that's the best case for tackling the XP upgrade process. Windows 98 users have a fairly stable OS that's not holding them back from new technology yet. By the time 98 is a legacy, buy a new box with XP preloaded. It'll probably be a second, more stable version of XP. My advice for Windows 98 users, wait till your hardware mandates a total system upgrade. Windows 95 users probably don't have a computer with hardware that meets XP's requirements anyways. They should buy a new box with XP preloaded and avoid the hassle of upgrading altogether. Don't get me wrong, XP's user interface is beautiful. Microsoft's new OS is a little faster. It's great for those trying to easily network computers or families who want to share one computer amongst the whole group. XP definitely has its upside. But I can speak from the experience of previous nightmarish upgrades and my own ongoing XP upgrade saga. Love the computer you're with or buy a new box with XP preloaded. Much more to come on Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. After the break, our in-house experts will offer their take on XP and its future. Stay tuned. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Am for a week? We're going to drive as fast as we can to San Francisco. We're doing big things. The Pontiac Grand Am, big things, baby. Three car park, that's three. That's sense. How do we get the three car? It's like living a dream, baby. Yeah! Welcome to Vegas, baby. We on the strip, baby. On the strip. Oh, yeah! We're all See, gone wild at the Bellagio. Yes. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Am? How you doing? Tell us at Pontiac.com. <laughs> Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. Great war. One hero will rise up to inspire a nation. One soldier will be sent to stop him dead. Joseph Fiennes, Jude Law, Rachel Weiss, and Ed Harris. Enemy at the gates. Playing this month on Blockbuster TV, only on Direct TV. It's the classic uniforms. 
The checkerboard end zone. War between the hedges. Student body right. War Eagle. Roll Tide. And Sue Lee. Start your own college football tradition with ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. Tech TV streaming video online at techtv.com. Reviews. It's a fairly big and chunky phone, as you can tell. News. Microsoft's latest move could undermine Sun's business strategy. Help. Do we have the drive outside the And more online all the time at techtv.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. So far, we've covered the major issues, the high and the heritage, the wins and the losses. To put it all in perspective and for a look into the crystal ball, we turn to our guys in the tech trenches, Tech TV Labs Director Andrew Hahn and Lab Analyst James Kim and Robert Heron. Gentlemen. Thanks, Erica. We know PC retailers like Compaq and Dell are putting XP on their upcoming models, but with a list price of $200 for the full version and $100 for the upgraded version of Windows XP Home, what is the impetus for the average user to take the plunge into XP? Got Robert Heron and James Kim with me. So Robert, you're our professional guy in terms of performance and, co and uh, components. What do you think of XP? XP is an awesome operating system. For people with lower end systems right now, I, I am not going to recommend they upgrade it. Anything under, say, 500 megahertz, I'd say hold off. Get, get a new system before you actually upgrade it. You're going to need more RAM. You're going to need a larger hard drive. This is a big operating system. So with people with Windows 98 and lower systems, maybe just wait for a new PC before they take the plunge in XP? Maybe. It really depends on how much you spend initially on that box. If it, like we said, if it's under that, you want to you hold off for a little bit. In terms of like things like driver support, though, you've got one disk now that contains drivers for literally every piece of hardware that we've tested. I mean, there are a couple of exceptions, namely uh, some integrated chipsets and things like that. But in general, you have one disk now, one solid operating system that's arguably the most stable ever. And having all the drivers in one place is just something I, I am just fully for. Okay, James Kim, you are the multimedia guy. Audio, video, right. what about XP? Uh, XP is a multimedia powerhouse, and they need to be because this is a modern operating system. You know, computing has gone past word processing. It's, you know, you've got Windows Media Player 8, which is a very, very good jukebox player. Um, it's, it's rooted, it's a default player here. That's very important because you know, competitors like Real and mm -hmm. QuickTime, they just really probably won't have a chance. Another thing is the, the messenger service. Uh, you know, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of like the net meeting. It's on steroids. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very robust, great video conferencing uh, abilities, chat, chat abilities. Right. And you know, a lot of other vendors might disagree with this, but it's a good thing that they left uh, put these elements into XP. Well, I'm sure a lot of vendors would disagree with right. you on that, considering that there's a lot of competitors out there that may do a better job. Right. But these things are free. A lot of people just think of them as part of the operating right. system, even though that might not be a complete definition of it. Um, so real quickly, uh, Windows Media Player, good or bad? Oh, I think it's great. You know, the okay. fact that you have to download plugins to play DVDs and MP3s and you have to pay for them, that's right. kind of a negative. But overall, you know, it's a good, good uh, player, and you can always download okay, another Okay, Movie Maker, what about right. that? Movie Maker probably on the on the low end side. I probably wouldn't use it myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, connections to di to digital cameras and scanners a good thing. Oh, it's it's pretty flawless. And uh, and I forgot to mention FireWire con connectivity. Uh, right. You can network your computers with uh, your XP boxes okay. with FireWire. Okay, okay, Robert. So Robert, what about uh, drivers uh, compatibility? Good. Excellent, in my mind. It has everything on there. I don't need my floppy drive anymore, essentially, when I need updates for drivers or with a new piece of hardware I just bought. The other thing I really like was oh, actually, one of the things I really didn't like was the fact that you're not given as much control as you used to have over the installation process now. You're given a set of applications that are really hard to remove if you want to get rid of something. Definitely. Namely, Windows Messenger. Right. Was, you cannot remove that, period. Okay, CDR driving, is that a good thing? That's awesome. That okay. should have been there all along. You should be able to put a blank disk in your system and at least drag and drop a file to it and record. That's a must-have feature. So definitely good, good marks from our lab, uh, lab staff. Um, no 16-bit uh, code, which is a good thing. No 95 uh, underpinnings, which were never a good thing, I don't think. Uh, so this is a good operating system. In the future, we really think this is going to have a major impact on the market. Maybe it's going to be three or four months, but it's a good operating system. We recommend it. Erica? Thank you, gentlemen. We hope you've enjoyed Beyond the Desktop Windows XP. You'll find continuing coverage of XP from comprehensive product reviews to breaking news at our website, techtv.com. Thanks for joining us. For all of us here at Tech TV, I'm Erica Hill. Hello, 
I'm Becky Worley. And I'm Brent Larson. Our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Windows XP launch continues this hour, and we want to remind you that at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Bill Gates will be addressing the Microsoft faithful. Is there a Microsoft faithful or just a Mac faithful? I think it's just Mac faithful. Okay. We'll be There's Microsoft users. He'll be, he'll be addressing the Microsoft users at the Marriott Marquis Ballroom in New York. Tech Live will carry his remarks in their entirety. And uh, speaking of the Big Apple, our own Matt Markovich is in Times Square, and he joins us now with the latest. Hello, Matt. Hi, uh, Brad. I haven't had an apple yet here, but I am in Times Square. Uh, and uh, what they just completed right now in the first stage of this XP launch day is the CEO panel, Bill Gates, and some of his very close personal friends like the CEO of Intel, Craig Barrett, uh, Carly Fiorina uh, from uh, HP, Michael Capellas from Compaq, Michael Dell. They all sat down and talked about the state of the industry and uh, basically how XP is going to help the state of the industry. As you know, it's been well talked about that XP is look, looked upon as being that catalyst to stimulate PC sales. That was a big topic. Another big topic, and I think, Brett, you'd be interested in that as well as Becky, is that this, this is the other big topic, the 802.11b, uh, 802.11, I should say. They're handing out cards to every attendee, and they made a point, especially Bill Gates made a point that 802.11 will play a huge role in future generations of uh, Windows operating system, including XP, and that 802.11b is key in their part of getting a broadband solution out to everybody in the world. Uh, Bill Gates also talked about XP and its role in its future systems called .NET. And the whole theme was web services. How do you get into this XML world, build these new applications? And so you're, you're going to see that uh, as a very, very important trend, and Microsoft uh, supports this. The XML standards run on all systems, and our role is simply to make sure that it's broadly embraced and then do our best to provide the best tools and price performance of all the XML platforms. And those are the two themes that Bill Gates was really hammering home in the CEO panel, which was the 80211 and web services, and that's what Microsoft's going to be focusing on in the future after XP. Uh, last night, there were other, some other events uh, regarding XP. Bill Gates made the rounds. He went to a couple uh, computer stores to did some signings, and this is what he had to say. This is what took place at the uh, Gateway store, followed by a CEO soundbite from Craig Barrett. I think you've got one right. This is this one, this is a great operating system. They got this one is just is just you know it's tremendous benefits for the for the customer. And you know whether or not it lifts the PC market today, it is going to at some point. You know? This is the first time when Microsoft and Intel have introduced almost simultaneously the next generation of technology. Intel, the Pentium Four processor family, Microsoft with Windows XP, and both kind of optimized for each other, designed to bring end users great experience with rich media, whether it's audio, video, imaging, rich communication, rich entertainment. Well, once again, this was all basically a photo opportunity. Mike, uh, Bill Gates, along with Craig Barrett and uh, Ted Waite from Gateway, signing a uh, PC from Gateway to be auctioned off, as well as a donation to another family. Also, Gates went over to the CompUSA store, signed a bunch of boxes of Windows XP for sale for some of the people there. They opened that store up a little bit early. Uh, Gates talked to some of the customers buying XP. They were giving him nothing but positive feedback. There was really nothing critical, and then they ushered Bill Gates out of there. More of a rock star celebrity approach of what's going on with Bill Gates in New York here. He's surrounded by handlers, a lot more uh, security, nothing like what he is used to in uh, Redmond. Uh, here in uh, just a few minutes, Bill Gates is going to start his keynote address, which is basically a big show, according to Microsoft, including a few New York celebrities involved. And uh, there's been some tight security. It's very tough to get into this building right now. Uh, you have to have a badge. You have to have to go through multiple security areas to get into here. Bill Gates talk about what will be the future big product for Microsoft. Back to you guys in the studio. Hey, hey Matt, just a quick uh, curiosity question. What kind of card were they handing out of that 802.11b? What was the brand name? This is the uh, Oronico. Ah, Oronoco. Got it, got it, got Oronoco. it. Just, I, was yeah, I, should know, I should know. I should know my Enya song, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was named after. You're right, Matt. That's and it right. does flow. Okay. <laughs> Matt Markovitz okay. is in Seattle. Excuse me, in New York, originally from Seattle. He's our bureau chief there. Thanks, Matt. Microsoft's new OS confirms the race to create a universal sign-up service, but what will it do for e-commerce? TechLive's e-tailing reporter Stacy Barcelata has that part of the story. Stacy, Hi, Brett. Well, Microsoft's Windows XP operating system may mean a new era for online shopping. It certainly has the potential to be the first OS to have an impact on the e-commerce business. 
XP comes smart card ready. It also includes the online identity service Passport, which in part touts a more convenient online shopping experience. But consumers are still hesitant about electronic shopping for a variety of reasons. According to NUA Internet Surveys, only 15.2 million households shopped online last month. That's out of an estimated 65 million households that were online, according to Gartner DataQuest. David Heim of Consumer Reports says the September 11th attacks have rekindled security fears, even for online shopping. And people don't want to hand out personal information and credit card numbers over the Internet. Versions of XP being smart card ready might have a larger implication. Jeff Roster of Gartner says smart cards offer increased assurance of secure transactions online. A smart card uh, gives the user the ability to protect their information because it's encoded and encrypted. And so when you use a smart card, uh, a whole process happens behind the scenes. Um, a query is sent out and the query is responded to in the smart card. Um, smart cards can also require the use of either a PIN or biometric information. So you're protected. You're, there's a second, second level of, of confirmation as to who you are, making the transaction much more secure. And the promise of security might be the key to increasing e-commerce business. The Forrester Online Retail Index shows e-commerce is down from a year ago and has fallen slightly since the September 11th attacks. Attempts to streamline the online shopping process have been made before. For example, various e-commerce sites offer virtual wallets, there's one-click shopping on Amazon.com, and there's the Liberty Alliance Project, a sun-led alliance that aims to compete with Passport. But nothing on the OS scale has been previously attempted. So will XP give e-commerce a needed boost? Heim of Consumer Reports says that while it might make more Internet commerce possible, the downsides, privacy and control issues, may have an adverse effect, yielding no overall boost to e-commerce or quite possibly a negative effect. Now, Haim added that Microsoft hasn't really proved that a passport will be advantageous to users. If people are shopping online, they may already have a virtual wallet or their browser preferences set to remember passport, passwords or fill in forms. With passport, that data would have to travel over the net and may actually slow down the process. So it isn't at all clear whether e-commerce will benefit from XP. Uh, Microsoft already does claim 165 million passport users. Stacey Barcelata reporting live from the newsroom. All right, thanks, Stacey. XP may be launched, but the fight's not over yet for Microsoft. According to the Washington Post, the states involved in the antitrust case against Microsoft are bringing in a heavy hitter in the form of prominent Washington lawyer Brendan Sullivan. Now, Sullivan's known as one of the toughest defense attorneys in the U.S. He gained national attention as the attorney for Oliver North during the Iran-Contra hearings. Now the state attorneys general have hired Sullivan to push for aggressive remedies in the Microsoft case. Sources close to the case say the states are concerned about how aggressively their federal counterpart, the Justice Department, is pursuing its case against the software giant. Meanwhile, the judge in the DOJ's case against Microsoft is dumping her tech stocks. U.S. District Court Judge Colleen Kohler Catelli told the Associated Press she sold all her family's tech holdings earlier this year to avoid any ethical conflicts. Those holdings were comprised of companies that could be affected by her verdict, including Intel, IBM, and Sun Microsystems. Intel's fortune is clearly linked to Microsoft since the two companies have worked together for years, forming the PC standard known as Wintel. Similarly, IBM and Sun have a stake in the judge's verdict since they both sponsor the Linux operating system, which of course is a major rival to the Windows OS. Also, Color Catelli owns shares in PC maker Compaq, which could gain considerable freedom in the way it installs and uses the Windows OS. We're going to be covering the launch of Windows XP throughout the day here on Tech Live, but if you miss anything, you want more XP news or analysis, check out the website at techlive.com. There you're going to find a complete Windows XP review courtesy of the Tech TV Labs, plus feature articles on the importance of the new OS to Microsoft's bottom line. I wrote a should you upgrade piece, and Brett, I know that you know you have been a Mac faithful, evangelizing Mac OS X, but you've got XP installed, and I uh, do. you like it. I installed XP at home. I think it's pretty good. Stable. Fair. I, I think, oddly enough, it'll give uh, OS X a run for its money. That's cool. So. All right. All right, of course, still to come, we have a roundtable discussion of XP experts who will give us the most complete breakdown of the new S you can find anywhere. That and more right after the break. The Compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. 
For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-336-1416 to buy now and upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. So, as you can see, I have no idea how IT is going to make these server upgrades happen. As long as it's your problem, Fred. And naturally, we'll ignore your security concerns. Naturally. Oh, could we overhaul the phone system, too? Sure. Let IT figure it out. At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why you get computing solutions from your highly trained account manager and services designed to make your day a little easier. Any more impossible deadlines we can saddle IT with? Can we install new software, too? CDW. Computing solutions built for business. The next chapter begins. Windows XP launches today. Right now, we want to turn things over to our Tech TV labs who have been preparing for this day for months. They've combed through every feature of Windows XP and have continually kept us up to date on their findings. We're now joined by James Kim, Robert Heron, and Roy Santos with their full and final review of Windows XP. What's yes, going Brett, on? Yes, Brett. This is colossal. When <laughs> reviewing operating systems, there are a few main aspects we look at, including stability, performance, and compatibility. We also look at some softer features like upgrading, installation, uh, usability, interface, value. And we reviewed each of these in XP. Right now, we're going to talk about XP under the hood, so to speak. Those first three, stability, performance, and compatibility, these are the issues that in the long run will cause you to love or hate your operating system. We did systems tests, and oh, we did a lot of them, on, <laughs> on all these issues, which consisted of everyday use, booting up and shutting down frequently, and comparing the performance against the exact same computer running a different OS. Our test bed computer was a P4 1.3 gigahertz running Windows XP Professional. Now here are the results of our star rating reviews. First of all, stability, we give it a four out of five stars. Performance, a three out of five stars. And compati compatibility, a three out of five stars. Now, this is a pretty stable operating system, isn't it? Generally speaking, yeah. I've had a couple of issues where I've had it actually lock up or something, but it's usually a hardware-related issue. Driver issues also are cropping up. Uh, not all vendors are done building their drivers for the new operating system. Namely, uh, I think the biggest culprit right now would be a Sound Blaster, and namely uh, Creative Labs. They have yet to actually finish their XP driver for the XP operating system, so they say it'll be available sometime this month, so they've got a couple more days left. So and you, Roy, what do you, what do you think of your experience well, so far? Well, I agree with Robert. You know, most of the time, you know, it's, it's very stable. I, I used to, uh, one time I had it for a month and didn't shut it down. It's, it just kept going, but there are lockups once in a while. I was running Word, and it just, uh, it just locked up on me for some reason. So so there will be, it's not a perfect operating system, there will be those little issues. And again, the drivers as well, there will be some issues. It's a very right. new operating system. Some manufacturers don't have device drivers. Right. So. As a base operating system, uh, this is running on the NT kernel, so it's very, you know, it's very reliable. Uh, it can deal with a lot of different multitasking uh, elements. Right. Um, what about performance? Uh, we're going to talk a little more, more about performance a la later in detail, but in general, it's, it's a pretty good performer too, right? Performer is Actually, it's great. I haven't had any issues in terms of, I don't notice the speed loss on anything. I'm using an 800 megahertz processor on a computer I'm working with right now under XP, and compared to running 98 on that same box, I, I don't see a respectable difference. If anything, everything's just smoother and tighter, which is really what I'm looking for right. in a brand new operating system. I want to want to jump in here, you guys, and ask you a question. Um, as, as Becky mentioned, before we went to break, I installed Windows XP at home. I had it running for about two days, and it already has a virus on it. What about security issues and virus issues on Windows XP? Well, there is the virus. Uh, as far as viruses go, you just have to be careful uh, in terms of different software packages that'll be coming out. Everyone's going to be releasing uh, updates to that that support XP. In terms of like things like the firewall that are built into XP, I think you'd be better off running something like Zone Labs, Zone right, Alarm, right. which does some specific things to quarantine email viruses and other ways you can get a virus. 
there is no natural virus protection built into XP, unfortunately. Right. But if you practice safe computing, you're not you're gonna have fewer problems than you would overall. Absolutely. Well, there's there's a lot of portals too. Uh, they've they've really revamped a lot of the networking. Uh, you know, there's there's a wizard. There's wizards throughout. And we're gonna talk about like usability later. But the fact of the matter is. Uh, Drivers aren't really that big of a deal. They're going to come out with them as users uh, start using them and complain. A lot of the hardware that I've used personally, uh, I've had have, haven't had to deal with any driver issues. So, mm -hmm. what about you, Eric? Um, I haven't had to deal with them myself, but uh, some people that I know who've installed it. For example, there was an issue with optical mice um, that not having drivers right now, and certain um, DVD burner, I mean CD burners, for example, they won't that won't work. And there's a um, small bug actually in Nvidia's drivers right now that right. were a included with the Windows XP operating system and their latest release on their that are available on their website. It's a very minor bug that deals with refresh rate issues, but that's something that is being addressed. They acknowledge it and they're aware of it. And they're right. going to fix it, but it's right. there's still little bugs here and right. there. For early ad adopters, I think this is you know this is going to be this is going to be good if, because they know what to do with it. But for people who just uh, you know just average users, they might not know what to do with you know now my mom mouse isn't working right. so it's, it's a word of caution that, that's an issue you know when you deal with any uh, new operating system correct I know that in 95 and 98 there are tons of issues I think Microsoft has done a pretty good job in you know creating a system that from the start it's going to be fairly easy to use and if not uh, if you have hurdles they're going to be pretty easy to yes. jump over I think overall uh, stability we do give it a five out of five stars it's a very stable system uh, performance we give it a three out of five stars and compatibility we give it about a three out of five stars. That could improve over time. Mm -hmm. uh, now, later on, we're going to show a little bit about uh, some, some hard numbers uh, on performance on uh, running XP. But for now, we're going to send it over to, to you, Brett. All right, James, thank you. Of course, after this short break, James, Roy, and Robert continue to cover the ins, outs, ups, downs, and all arounds of Windows XP. Stick around. <laughs> Wahaha! <laughs> it's that spooky time of year, and Extended Play joins in with a horror game extravaganza. Friday at 9, 8 Central, only on Tech Prime. Moo. It's a great feeling to be upgraded. Sprint network goes down, even for a minute, you'll get three days of service free. Guaranteed. In short, it says that Sprint will be there for you 24 7, with data services designed specifically for small business and backed by unsurpassed guarantees. For your guarantees, call 1-800-786-5321. Do it by December 31st, and they'll throw in a Cisco router worth $3,400. So go on. Invent a new product. Change an entire industry. Shake up the world. Just know that Sprint has you covered. Guaranteed. The new 255 horsepower Infiniti i35 with the most powerful engine in its class. Don't blink. More power. More grace. More eye. The new i35 from Infiniti. Wind up your business day with technology news from around the world. Tech TV News, weeknights at 8.30, 7.30 Central on Tech TV's Tech News. to Tech Live. If you're just tuning in, we're in the midst of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of today's launch of Windows XP. The Tech TV Products Labs have spent months thoroughly testing the system, keeping it up to speed and letting us know all their findings. We turn it back over now to James Kim, Robert Heron, and Roy Santos for more on Windows XP. James? Thanks, Becky. Before the break, we were discussing the way we test XP systems and review the OS. We did content and business Winstone benchmark tests on an Intel and an AMD system. Let's take a look at the Intel results compared to uh, XP to ME on a P4 2.0 gigahertz system with 128 megabytes of RAM. Now, if you look at the uh, content creation results, you'll see that uh, there's an obvious increase in the XP while we're running uh, you know, applications like uh, Adobe Photoshop, Premiere. These are more uh, media intensive uh, applications that a lot of people are going to be using with XP. You'll see the results are about 20% higher. So XP is certainly faster here. Now, on the AMD end of things, we used a, uh, an XP1800+, Plus, which is AMD's fastest processor, running at 1.53.
using the same system and the same uh, graphics card and the same memory, we also saw that uh, there was an increase when you're using XP, about a 20% increase over that. And uh, by the way, the AMD uh, uh, chip did perform a little better than the P4 chip. Um, what do you think about this? In general, the numbers are close enough really to where I don't think the average user is going to notice mm -hmm. one way or another. Uh, it's kind of surprising to see AMD chips performing so well on our benchmarks. Right. Uh, even though they run at a slower clock speed. I'm not even going to get into the whole uh, uh, megahertz myth issues, but in general, it's just it's a solid operating system that works seems to work really well in terms of uh, performance. I think the numbers show that it's it's a pretty significant difference, a 10, you know, 15, even sometimes 20 uh, 20 percent uh, difference. Um, you're right; the average user is not going to notice it, but just in terms of performance, I think uh, again in the long term, this is what's going to make a uh, difference. So they've really optimized this uh, this operating system for these new newer uh, high performance chips. Right. This includes boot up times too, right? Correct. I think it's great. Uh, any clean install of an operating system is going to increase your boot speeds. But with XP, it's a dynamic environment where the first few times you boot it up, it actually kind of analyzes itself mm -hmm. and sees what files are loaded initially. Right. And then it actually optimizes by about the third or fourth boot right. to give you an even faster boot time, which is just really nice to see. One, one thing I'm happy about is uh, when my laptop goes into hibernation and uh, I want to wake it up, it's really fast. It takes mm -hmm. about uh, five to ten seconds uh, to wake it up, as opposed to Windows 98. Right. Sometimes it wouldn't even turn on at all. Right, a lot, of, a lot of hardware uh, manufacturers. Yeah. I know that the new compact uh, uh, Evo notebook right. uh, has been tooled to take advantage of this. So mm -hmm. you can literally open up the the uh, laptop, and in seconds it'll, it, it'll turn back onto your desktop. So right. that's a pretty cool feature. James, pretty you nice. know, I have a quick question for you, which is, you guys are talking about the increased boot time speeds. I know it's like 10 to 16 seconds compared to ME or 2000, but let's go back in time and think about the time that people are going to spend upgrading. We talked about that a little bit in our special. Uh, how did you guys find the experience? I know some people had a hard time, others did not. Han Choi and I were on the had a hard time side, and I know uh, Robert didn't have a terribly difficult time. Will you guys give me a sense of your experiences? Sure, Becky. It's, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag, but I think it's overall a positive experience. I've loaded up XP several times, and in each case, uh, the, the entire process took under, under an hour. So what were about those you guys? Not clean boxes, James? Yes, yes. Okay. I, you know, we, we all, always recommend uh, using a clean box, but of course there are going to be a lot of people who are going to upgrade on top of 98 or ME. I want to point out that I did an upgrade and I had no problems at all either. There are a couple of geek issues involved. One with the hardware in particular, if you have a, the motherboard for the system that you're, whatever you're going to apply XP to, you want to make sure it's upgraded to the latest BIOS. A lot of manufacturers recently have put out BIOS updates specifically for XP. So it's important that you not only have the latest firmware updates within the hardware itself, Make sure you do that before you actually go applying a brand new OS. Great, Robert. Okay, we give we give Windows XP Home and Professional Edition an overall rating of four out of five stars. We're going to break it down even further later on. Back over to you, Becky. Thank you, James. For a comprehensive look at XP, check out all the lab's reviews in their special report at techlive.com. Up next, Rob Enderley. He's research fellow for Gig Information Group. He's going to join us in studio with his XP Redux plus Bill Gates' keynote address in its entirety. All that next on Tech Live. This notebook is bound to raise a few eyebrows. It's got a laser-sharp screen, hot swappable drives you can switch on the fly, a lightning-fast Intel Pentium 3 processor, and the power to turn heads. Envious? Why? For just $1,379, we can build one for you, the Compact Presario 1700T. Call 1-888-289-2556 to buy now and double your memory for free. Plus, get a free upgrade to a two-year limited warranty. This ordinary-looking bed is the key to a restful night's sleep. Even though it may look like an ordinary mattress, it's more comfortable than you can ever imagine. Introducing the Nautilus Sleep System. Nautilus uses variable support chambers designed to let you control the comfort on your side of the bed. Individual remote controls allow you to increase or decrease the firmness on your side of the bed. So you can have that feather soft feel and your spouse can get the extra firm support he or she has always wanted. Features like a wool blend pillow top for winter, a silk blend pillow top for summer, and our unique comfort layer make Nautilus the choice for a great night's sleep. It's time you feel the instant comfort of Nautilus with no money down and payments as low as $30 a month. Try Nautilus in your home. We guarantee the best sleep you've had in years. If you're not completely satisfied within 12 weeks, return it for a full refund of the purchase price. Call now for your free video and brochure and discover instant comfort with the Nautilus Sleep System. 
Tonight on Audiophile. We explore the world of electronic music. We're breaking down genres from ambient to techno. Superstar producer and remixer BT schools us on creating beats. And we'll reveal the history and the tech behind the electronic music you love. It's all about the beat. <clears throat> An all new Audiophile. Tonight at 9, 8 Central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. <laughs> We are just a few minutes away from the Bill Gates keynote address at the Marriott Marquis Ballroom in New York. Rob Enderley is Senior Research Fellow with Giga Information Group, and he joins us now with a preview of Mr. Gates' remarks. Hello, Rob. Good morning. Glad to be here. We're going to uh, ask you to stay with us here for uh, a few minutes, but uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return with oh, the Bill Gates keynote, are we not taking... I think we have a few minutes. Do we have so time just for... Your people told me we have a quick couple All right. of questions. We're Let's get to... a question in then, Yeah, Rob. we're trying to sure. time this out with Bill Gates' uh, keynote address. So, Rob, the big question here, does anybody want XP? Well, realize we're dealing with a global recession right now, and, and folks are really thinking about things other than buying new PCs and new operating systems. I mean, arguably, this is probably the worst time we've ever had to bring out a technology like this. And, of course, the industry is really reeling because people are not buying technology. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it seems like today even Microsoft stock is about a dollar fifty down, uh, partially on scares because durable goods orders are down, and that kind of reflects a general industry trend towards this. Uh, we are going to come back with more of this, but right now we are going to go take a break and come back with Bill Gates' keynote speech. Rob Enderley, you're going to stay with us to address this. Thank you. We will be back with the Bill, Notes, uh, Bill Gates' keynote. Say that ten times fast. Stay with us. Today's business thought. Ever wonder what next generation network really means? It means it won't be ready until the next generation. A message from WorldCom. Owner of this generation's farthest reaching IP network. Leave nothing to chance. WorldCom, Generation D. Hello, Mrs. Lindsay. William. Hello, Stephen. You're not by any chance computer shopping, are you? Mm-hmm, if I can get some help. Well, right now, you can get a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which is so nice, for only $8.99. Really? She's intrigued. Excellent. Because right now, it comes with your choice of a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. And as far as service and support, Dell's won more awards than any other PC company in the last five years. Just call or go online. Tell them what you want, and right to your front door comes America's favorite PC. Thanks, Steven. Now you can get a Dell desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which delivers performance where you need it most. And six months of Dellnet by MSN Internet Access for just $8.99. Call or go online today and get a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. There's great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. Can't find your peers? Hey, guys! Wrong information. One eggplant sliced thin. Need better tools? Meet your peers. Get the information you need and find the right technology for your business at Comdex Fall 2001, where buyers and sellers meet, learn, and make technology decisions. Register now at Comdex.com. Welcome back to Tech Live. I'm Becky Worley. I'm now joined by Steve Abrams and Rob Enderley from Giga Information Group is back. Thanks for joining us. And we're kind of tap dancing here as we wait for Bill Gates to start speaking. And Steve, earlier this morning, Matt Markovich told us that they were handing out 802.11b cards to every attendee at this uh, event. And Rob, my question to you is, what does that signify in terms of the importance of wireless networking and networking in general with regard to XP and maybe .NET? Remember, this is kind of the first operating system that was built in the wireless age, and so it was designed with wireless in mind. It provides a much better, in fact, its biggest networking improvement is how it deals with 802.11 access points. So they're really leading with one of their most powerful features here, and they're showcasing the feature with these cards. You know, this leads to the question that one of the big things that's touted about XP is the ease of setting up a network. How important do you think that is to the consumer? 
Well, as we re realized for the consumer networking their house, pulling wires is incredibly expensive. And so when you're talking about putting in something that's wireless and, and realize home access points have really dropped down to something in the neighborhood of $150, you can do it pretty cheap. This allows them to put in an access point, connect wirelessly, and get up and running in a matter of minutes. And for consumers, getting up and running in a matter of minutes is very important because they don't want to be an IT administrator themselves. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft is no stranger to security issues, obviously. Uh, isn't uh, security one of the big issues to do with uh, wireless? And, and how are they going to address those problems? Well, with security, the security issue with wireless really has to do with the Wi-Fi specification. Mm -hmm. In other words, it uses a 40-bit key, and you really need a much higher level of encryption if you want to keep people out of, the, out of your network. Mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi itself is dealing with this particular security issue because it has to go into the underlying spec. How individuals have to deal with it, particularly corporations have to deal with it, they have to treat this wireless connect connection like it's an external connection as opposed to an internal connection for now, and use something like a VPN or whatever if they're really very concerned about people getting in and getting access to things they shouldn't. Okay. You know, Rob, yesterday when we had Jim Alchin, who's the vice president of you know many of Microsoft's groups, specifically this is his baby, XPN.net, he said that Wi-Fi security is one of the reasons to get XP. And you know they're also obviously touting the internal uh, you know, firewall that's within XP. What do you think about all of this? And are they just blowing smoke? Well, XP is inherently more secure. It comes from the NT base, which is which is a product that was really designed from the ground up to be a corporate product. So as a result, as compared to Windows 95 or any of the Windows 9X products, the files are more secure, the folders are more secure. So even if you were able to get into the machine and see the machine, it's much more difficult to get in and access files or even change those files without the user providing ex uh, express permissions to those files and folders. So at the end of the day, he's correct. This is a much more secure product. But of course, somebody that's talented and knows what they're doing is still going to get around a lot of these security features. It's, it's, we're dealing with a world that's far more hostile than I think the world that existed five years ago. Tech TV's editorial director, Jim Lauderback, is standing by in New York in Times Square. Jim, what's the mood there as we wait for Bill Gates in the keynote? Well, everybody's sort of waiting around for uh, something to happen. It's a pretty low key inside. A bunch of vendors set up with products and people just sitting around. There was a little bit earlier, we had the parade of CEOs with uh, everybody from Carly Fiorina of HP to Sony and even the head of Staples talking about their plans and their hopes for, uh, for Windows XP. One of the interesting things we got into with Bill Gates and a couple other people was 802.11, but also some of the broadband access issues. Bill Gates saying if you bring the price of broadband down to 25 bucks a month, from the 50 bucks it is now, we could get 40 percent, 40 percent uh, penetration, which is pretty big. But Rob, I've got a question for you as we talk about 802.11. You know, they're doing 802.11b right now, which is what everybody is using, the Wi-Fi. But we're moving to 802.11a and 802.11g. You know, one standard is good. I don't think two standards or three standards are better. What's going on there? Well, we're really transitioning from you know, one technology to another. The 802.11b standard, of course, realized that A is actually the fastest of the three in the first number, which was just done to screw all of us analysts up. <laughs> but, the, uh, but we've got a couple other standards coming, A being the best, providing the, the greatest bandwidth, and G being kind of a transition, allowing you to play kind of in both, both camps. You're right, though, three standards confuses folks, probably will slow down deployments, and it's A is probably where we're going to want to be. It provides enough bandwidth for you to do things like video, which is probably going to be the future of wireless. Yeah, and they're talking about interoperability. G is supposed to have security. A is five, uh, you know, is, is supposed to be much faster. But Bill Gates was very careful to, to not say 802.11b, but to say just 802.11. I think we're going to see cards that have dual transmitters. We're going to see uh, access points that will accept both. But the idea of having more than one standard, I, I think they're shooting themselves in the foot. Well, it, it's the nature of change, unfortunately. We're kind of just bringing out this technology. And uh, unfortunately, as the case may be, that means we've got a, multiple standards, lots of confusion. This stuff will all be settled in history in about three, four years. But until then, we've got problems. <laughs> yeah, and consumers don't want to wait three or four years this, for this stuff. Now, what about Bluetooth? Bluetooth was the big hyped wireless thing a couple of years ago. Uh, it was taken out of Windows XP. You've got to get extra drivers to get it to work. It's more expensive than 802.11b. I don't see a big future for Bluetooth. Rob, do you? Well, I, one of the things I said, I was on a panel with uh, one of the Intel folks just a while back, and they asked, well, gee, there are thousands of companies that are investing in Bluetooth. What do you think about that? And I said, uh, too much use of, of uh, recreational drugs when they were children. <laughs> uh, fundamentally, what it is, is, is a lot of the things that were supposed to happen with Bluetooth didn't happen. And of course, this technology has now moved out one more year. So Bluetooth may be big 
as we get into next Christmas, but this Christmas, it's kind of a non-player. Is Windows yeah. XP the harbinger of what technology will be accepted and what won't? I mean, we saw them drop USB 2, and there was a lot of hubbub about that. Is this the operating system that's going to make or break a bunch of different technologies? Well, it could, but realize with both USB 2 and Bluetooth, the problem was is the spec wasn't solid enough to be able to lock it into an OS at the time that the OS, this OS needed to be locked down. Those two features, at least the one feature, uh, uh, Bluetooth will be in the Windows CE platform when it ships, as it's now shipping to market. But the timing was such that they couldn't drop it into the OS. Remember, one advantage of this particular platform is it can be updated dynamically. This is unlike any of the previous platforms Microsoft has had. And that allows them to do things like leave certain components out and allow them to ride back in as people upgrade, as people apply yeah, but, the product. But, but Rob, yeah, that's an advantage and a disadvantage because if it's updated dynamically, A, I never know which version I'm running, and B, you can update it with a virus or a bug dynamically as well. So um, I, don't, I think there's uh, pluses and minuses to that. Well, there's always risk. Remember, the updates come from Microsoft. Of course, a lot of folks don't really believe that Microsoft is all that trusted either, and we can probably discuss, discuss that <laughs> one later. But fundamentally, you do, you do have the, the manufacturer providing that update service. Yeah, and Microsoft's been real good in providing updates that are bulletproof. <laughs> you know, my question here is, whatever happened to all the licensing hubbub? You know, people were so concerned about, well, I can only make five changes in 120 days, then it resets itself. It seems complicated. What happened to it? Are people still concerned? Well, I think what's, what's happened is it just kind of dropped to the back burner. Now people will be buying the product. They'll be experiencing it themselves. The folks that are the most vocal, the folks that we call tuners, people that build their own systems, play with their systems a lot, they're the ones that are going to be hitting this, this, this particular wall and be hitting it a lot. Clearly, they're going to be upset. Uh, Microsoft needs to address this audience because otherwise they're going to get a lot of flame mails as this goes forward. You know, you know what, Rob? Uh, I got to say, and Becky, there is a lot of piracy that's been going on out there of operating systems. People have, I mean, this is a dirty secret nobody really talks about. People have two or three computers. They buy one copy of Windows. They put it on all their computers. This is going to put a stop to that, but it's also going to going to control the and put and really put a stop to the rollout of Windows XP among the early adopters who would be most likely to go out and tell all their friends to use it. So it's a double-edged sword for Microsoft. Absolutely. You know, Rob, you mentioned this uh, very vocal minority at the top end of the spectrum. Overall with XP, what are we not hearing from the silent majority? Well, I, I, I think as we mentioned earlier on, we're not really hearing the demand for the product that we would have expected. This, this is a dramatic improvement over anything in the 9X uh, okay. category. I mean, it does fix a lot of problems that people have been asking for. One of the big problems we had coming into this year was the fact that people were complaining that it cost them so much time and aggravation to migrate from their previous machine to their current machine that 80% of them said that they weren't going to buy the next machine even though they were ready to do that. This product actually has a migration facility built into that that in theory should address that particular concern. But because people are thinking about other things, they're really not getting as excited about this product as I think they otherwise might be. Hey, Rob, well, this is James Kim with the Tech TV Labs. I was just wondering, there's been a, tons of hype in the media. Um, you've seen it anywhere, everywhere, the uh, advertisements, the uh, brochures. Um, what about the word on the street? Are there people that are actually going to buy the upgrade for $199 or, $99 or you know, the entire system for $199? Is this a reality for most people or not? Well, clear, clearly there will be people that will buy this stuff. I mean, there are early adopters in every category, but as, I think, as we were talking about earlier, this is a case where folks are really concerned about their families, they're concerned about their jobs, their neighbors' jobs, their relatives' jobs. It's hard to justify an OS. It doesn't specifically address the concerns that are being built by current events. In fact, the, you mentioned the campaign. Realize that campaign was largely constructed before the events of September 11th, and of course they had to pull a lot of it back because it was based around flying, and it had, a lot of that had to be reworked. That meant the campaign hit the market late, a lot of the pre-orders didn't happen. Uh, clearly, if there's another disaster or problem, it's going to create a lot of issues for the sell-through on this product. All right, we're going to cut in right now. Uh, Jim and Rob and uh, James, we're going to uh, go to New York now live. Uh, the event is beginning uh, at the uh, unveiling of uh, Windows XP. Let's join that now. Purple, purple mountain, majesty, above the
Mayor Giuliani, thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Bill, and uh, thank you all very much uh, for being here today. Uh, New York City has been through uh, the worst attack that's ever been uh, ever occurred in the history of America on September 11. Well, we had more people lost, uh, more damage, more uh, sorrow that's still flowing from it than I think uh, anyone ever anticipated that we would have to suffer in the United States. But the end result is that New York City has emerged from that and continues to emerge from it stronger. Uh, much more confident in uh, our ability to handle this, much more confident in our system, much more convinced that we're right and they're wrong, that we're right about political freedom, we're right about economic freedom, we're right about religious freedom. That we, and that we should be very, very proud and very confident that the ideas of, for which we stand and the ideas for which we've lost uh, so many people are the right ones and they will prevail. I want to thank Bill very much uh, for uh, doing this launch here in New York City. Uh, it shows a tremendous... <laughs> thank you. It shows a tremendous amount of confidence in the city of New York, and it shows uh, the exact spirit that Americans have, which is in part a spirit of defiance, and in particular a spirit of confidence that, uh, that our American system uh, is right for us and right for the rest of the world. So I, I wish you the very best of luck with it, and I thank you and all of the other business leaders that are here uh, for this launch of this new product, which, uh, which really couldn't come at a better time uh, for the city of New York. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Microsoft salutes you and all of New York for your courage, determination, and resilience. You are truly an American hero. And, and so are the police and firefighters and citizens who risk their lives at a moment's notice to help others. We are proud to come here today and bring thousands of developers, retailers, and PC manufacturers from all over the world to New York. A few weeks after the September 11th attack, I called the mayor to ask him whether he still thought it was appropriate to hold the launch here. Without hesitation, the mayor said, absolutely. And I agree. There was only one place to launch Windows XP, right here in the heart of New York City. <laughs> Yesterday, I visited Ground Zero. I will never forget the devastation, and the sheer inhumanity of what I saw. But I also saw America's strong spirit, courage, character, and community. I also visited the command center, where PC technology is helping to coordinate the emergency efforts. And I met with employees from Microsoft and many other companies who are helping with the relief and rebuilding efforts. I've been struck 
by the role that technology played, and especially that the internet played during this crisis. On September 11th, hundreds of millions of people relied on the internet to get news and to communicate with loved ones. Today, we're here with a few simple messages. First, we all fully support the global effort to fight terrorism. Second, New York is back and open for business. And third, <laughs> and finally, although our economy is going through tough times, the technology industry will keep making the investments and innovations that will re-energize our economy. Once again, Mr. Mayor, thank you for your great work and for your support of our industry. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, actually, there's one point that I... Bill said something that I should have mentioned when I spoke earlier. Uh, the command center that uh, was erected would not have been possible without the help of Microsoft, many of your other uh, businesses in, in the technology uh, industry, uh, all of whom devoted a tremendous amount of work over a 48-hour period nonstop. The command center that now exists was destroyed at Seven World Trade Center. It was crushed on September 11th. It was rebuilt by September 14th. And without technology, without the computers that we have there, without the connection to the internet, New York City would not have been able to function. So the point that you make is a very important one, and the role that your industry plays in the security of America is an enormously important one, and I thank you very much. Thank you. They rebuilt that in 48 hours. For 25 years, Microsoft has been working to take software and build the best possible tool that we can for our users. Today is a major milestone in that effort. Today we launch worldwide Windows XP. This is a version of Windows that will take the PC industry to new heights. We can improve the way people do their work. We can improve the way they get information and entertain themselves at home. Technology has always been about making the impossible possible. And with Windows XP, we hope to do just that, open up new possibilities. After you see Windows XP, I hope you will say, yes, you can do that with your PC. Not in the future, but now. So the whole PC industry has come together around this launch. Windows XP is the most powerful, fastest, most reliable operating system we have ever done. We poured literally billions of dollars of development into this new product. That was based on the feedback we had from our users, based on a vision of new activities that the PC could enable. The new security is very important. The privacy control is important. The messaging for real-time connections is a foundation. 
the new personal digital experiences, really will look back and say it's common sense. Uh, these are the ways that people uh, deal with information. Together with Office XP, Windows XP will set a new standard for business. So the foundation we've got here, it's a platform. It's a, a platform that allows people to develop on top of it. For the last several years, we've been enhancing the platform. We've been sending out beta versions uh, and sharing the information so that people would have a chance at the same time that we come along with Windows XP to release their application. It's also about new experiences. You can, you can experience a lot of new things just because of the built-in capabilities of Windows. And that's where the XP name comes from. It, it's about Windows experiences. But I want to emphasize that as important as this milestone is for Microsoft, it's also an industry milestone. The PC manufacturers are here today. In fact, earlier we had a CEO panel uh, where the, 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 the PC makers, uh, Intel, uh, Staples, the leading retailer, we all talked about how we're getting our energy behind this, how we can get people to see new possibilities and either buy new PCs or upgrade their PCs. So it's really through the new things that are built on top of Windows that it fulfills its full potential. Uh, we have a pavilion uh, here at the launch with lots of partners showing off their new software applications. And it's large companies, small companies, all very excited about what people will be able to do. We are seeing PC design optimized for Windows XP uh, for the, the quick performance, the, the quick booting, building 802.11 in. And so it's all the elements, the hardware and software coming together along with the applications that make this so important for the industry. Perhaps most important though, is that this is a milestone for PC users. People spend a lot of time in front of their PC. We have over 400 million users who sit down and use Windows every single day. And it's for them that the ability to do what they do now in a better way and get more satisfaction out of that, as well as start to see the new possibilities, the things that they wouldn't have thought about doing with their PC that we now guide them into those things uh, in a very simple way. So what, what pieces uh, have, have we thrown out here? Well, in fact, uh, in a sense, uh, this is the end of an era. Uh, Microsoft and the original PC rose to promise, prominence based on the MS-DOS product. And even as Windows came along, Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, underneath, uh, MS-DOS was running there. Windows simply sat on top of, of MS-DOS. Well, so today, it really is actually uh, the, the end of the MS-DOS era. It, it's also, we would say, the end of the Windows 95 era. That was the most important Windows milestone up to this day. And even when we did that launch, we talked about uh, that the Windows 95 era would come to an end. Let me show you a little clip from uh, the Windows 95 launch. I get interviewed a lot. People say, well, you know, isn't this a huge problem between you and Apple that you've got this Windows 95 thing? And I say, no, it's really, we're really coming together because until today, only Apple thought Windows 3.1 was a crummy operating system. <laughs> And now we agree Windows 3.1 is a semi-operating system. And someday we'll say that about Windows 95, I'm afraid. <laughs> but give us two or three years uh, before we can uh, figure out why we're going to have to say that. <laughs> Well, it, it took more like six years, uh, but certainly our users 
uh, gave us a lot of reasons to say that Windows 95 simply isn't good enough. Well, let me uh, herald the uh, end of the, the DOS era here. Uh, I'll just simply type exit for the last time uh, in uh, MS-DOS. Excuse me, Bill? Yes, Doc? Bill, I brought you the PC. I helped make Windows. And I'm running over 400 million PCs today. You aren't going to do this, are you, Bill? Sorry, Doc. Well, that movie wasn't called 2001 for, for nothing. So, in many ways, this is a transition point. It's the end of, of too many PC crashes. It's the end of the static web era and the start of an era that, where the web will be dynamic, will program against the web. Uh, this new term, XML Web Services, you're going to be hearing about that more and more uh, because Windows XP lays the foundation for that. I also hope we'll say that it's the beginning of the end of the narrowband era that people see with XP and its capabilities that broadband really should arrive uh, not only for businesses but eventually for consumers as well. You can say what we've done here is we took the best of Windows 95, the broad usage, the large number of applications, and we took that compatibility, and over all these years, we're able to build that into our high-end technology, the so-called NT kernel that's at the heart of both the professional and home edition here. It's revolutionary to be able to do that, and yet we made it evolutionary in terms of the user interface, the applications, We've allowed people to take that step up. Of the installed base, over 400 million use the 9X code base, and about 70 million uh, use the Windows 2000 that was based on that technology. Now, all of those people uh, will be working with uh, the high strength base operating system. And it will give the industry the opportunity to focus all its energies around uh, the driver model and the richness that's possible with that technology. Well, there's one person who throughout the decade he's been at Microsoft uh, has constantly been saying, we've got to get to this new level. We need it for reliability. We need it for the new capabilities. And he has persevered uh, year after year. Uh, that's, of course, Jim Alchin. Jim runs the Windows Group. Uh, I'm very proud of the work he's done. Uh, he's really the one person we can point to and say, congratulations, uh, we've finally gotten there. Uh, this, is a, this is a really big beginning, and you drove it and made it happen. So let me welcome Jim on stage uh, and congratulate him for the great work. Well, you stuck to it, Jim, and, and now we're finally here. Yep, it was 12 years ago that you first <laughs> talked to me about coming to Microsoft. And what did I say? You said, we gotta get, we got to get to the one code base. I said <laughs> that, that, no, I didn't think that this was the, the place for me. I thought maybe the right thing to do was to, um, you know, go to a company that believed in really reliable systems. And when I came out to Microsoft, you and Paul Moritz brought me over and said, you know, there's this new guy we just hired. His name's Dave Cutler. Why don't you talk to him for a minute? Of course, Dave is the person behind the VAX system. And I went over to Dave, and you may not know how Dave talks, but Dave says, I don't work on toy systems. I only work on real systems. And that was the beginning 13 years ago. He had already started two years before I started there. Then the history, this long journey that we've been on. So it's been an exciting journey for me and the team. And today, we're unleashing that real system, a system that's more reliable, more secure, and easier to use. Well, go ahead and show them what it's like. Okay. 
There are many reasons. There are many reasons why Windows XP sets the new standard. Let's just talk about reliability. This slide says 10 times more reliable. In our testing and in e-testing, it shows 30 times more reliable. And that's still the operating system hasn't crashed. Some application, business applications stop, but not the operating system. This is compared to Windows 98, 9X, 98. In Windows 2000, Windows XP is still more reliable, at least 20% more reliable in our testing. What about performance? Windows XP is 36% faster running Winston 2001 on business apps, 77% faster if you're running content creation. The system boots faster, up to 27% faster than Windows 98 Second Edition, and it loads apps that you've been using frequently 25% faster. What about security? Well, Foundstone says that Windows XP can provide the strongest network security available. And why is that? Well, there are many things that we added to the system. Internet firewall, so that when you install the product, you get instant protection in, in, uh, from attackers trying to get into your, your system. We added a bunch of other capabilities to the system for, for security. But we also worked with the industry, the antivirus vendors, the consultants, to ensure that their products, together with Windows XP, created a holistic experience. We also came up with a new advanced technology that let us scan all the source code in the system to look for potential security issues. And we removed them before we shipped. We also put Windows XP on the internet. And we didn't have a single compromise. And we left it on there for a very, very long time. What about usability? Well, the slide says 25% better. This was based on about 100 different usability studies that we did with 100, 1,000 different participants. But I don't think 25% really gets across the importance of what we've accomplished. The failure rate before of doing simple tasks like copying photos to a CD was very high. We show an 80% increase in completion of doing that task in Windows XP. We show a 40% increase in completion of those tasks if you're just trying to take uh, pictures from a camera and bringing those into the system. Another area that Windows XP is setting the standard for is deployment. Now, that's something that we've worked on for our PC manufacturers because it takes time for them to load it in their manufacturing facilities, but we've also worked on it for the business space. We have a ministry in British, of British Columbia that's been able to load Windows XP and their applications and deploy them all within 40 minutes. So across the board, we think this is a great solid foundation. Now, Windows 2000 was targeted at the embedded, the enterprise space, high-end users, but it didn't cover the entire gambit. We only gave users one area of, of the whole spectrum. Now, what we've tried to do in, in Windows XP is cover the entire, entire area. What I want to do is talk about Windows XP being more than just for consumers. Often, that's what people think of, because we, we focus on all the great things that we're doing in digital photography, digital video, music, and the like. But that covering that spectrum means that it has to be great for business, too. And we've had two innovative programs that we've used in the Windows XP program. One is called the Joint Development Partner Program. That's one that we've used for businesses, where we spend time with the businesses, they pre-install it, we test it out in their environments to make sure it does what it is that, um, that they need out of a system. So to sort of give you the idea, the feel of what Windows XP can be for business, I've got a video that I want to run and show what BMW has been doing with Windows XP. We're producing worldwide, we're selling worldwide, and very important, we are sourcing worldwide. BMW is really BMW Group, a global company. We are in the spearhead of technology. Without being that, our product would not 
be in a prime position in the market. There are a few things why BMW chooses Windows XP. We see more security. We see better support on laptops. It's very reliable and very stable. With Windows XP, offline folders are encrypted on as a local system. If a laptop were stolen or lost, the data can not be seen. That's a very, very important issue. BMW is thinking about to migrate some cut application from Unix workstation to Windows-based platform. The first results shows very good stability. Given the high investment that we have in the infrastructure, our interest is to get the best quality and the best... All right, we have obviously had an interruption in our feed from New York. You have been watching the uh, unveiling of Windows XP. It is happening live in New York even as we speak. It began with, uh, actually it began in, in kind of a different way. It was Bill Gates taking the stage, uh, stage with New York Mayor Rudy, uh, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Giuliani actually began uh, with a few words about the events of the past couple of months and uh, thanked Bill Gates for choosing New York as the place to officially launch Windows XP. Uh, Bill Gates also began today uh, on a kind of a somber note talking about the events, recent events, and uh, how he was affected by his visit yesterday to Ground Zero and uh, the importance of moving forward from here. They also talked a little bit about how the technology industry has helped out in, uh, 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 since the events of 9-11. Uh, Bill Gates called this a major milestone in Microsoft history. He calls XP the most reliable operating system ever developed and spoke generally about some of the new features, looking very comfortable up there on stage today. He also called this a major milestone for PC users in terms of ease of use and uh, operating system flexibility. He uh, called this, it was, this was kind of interesting, he called this the end of an era for, uh, uh, as far as DOS was concerned, MS-DOS, and in a highly symbolic gesture, he, uh, he brought up a giant C prompt on the big screen and uh, typed in the exit command, which shuts down uh, uh, the disk operating system uh, to basically shut down uh, MS-DOS for good. And then he brought out Jim Alchin. Jim Alchin is the head of uh, the, uh, the Windows division for Microsoft. And actually, you might remember he was there when um, they, they did that, uh, that thing in, uh, in um, uh, Washington where they handed off the new operating system to the, uh, the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, and they flew away in their helicopters. That was uh, Bill Gates and Jim Alchin at that time. And uh, Alton right now is talking more specifically about uh, the benefits of Windows uh, XP. He talked uh, about reliability. They, they say it's 10 times more reliable than any other system. He talked about performance and security. Security has obviously been a very big issue for Microsoft and continues to be. Uh, he talked about usability of the system, says that it's 25% uh, uh, better as far as usability, that people who use the system are finding it easier to, get, to, get, uh, to do the things they need to do. And he's also talking about deployment. It's the easiest system to basically install on your computer. Now, while that's continuing, why don't we go to uh, Tech Live's uh, uh, Jim Lauterbach, who was in New York watching all this uh, unfold. Jim, what do you think? Well, Steve, it's interesting. It's kind of unfolding uh, after the initial stuff with Giuliani, the way your typical Microsoft presentation unfolds. They have a couple of laughs, a couple of chuckles. I, I think the uh, C prompt and making the, the command prompt exit was a nice touch. But, uh, you know, they're harping on the same theme. We're more reliable. We're more usable. Uh, we're more capable of doing this stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't buy all of that as far as the usability stuff. Now, I've talked to a bunch of people who have loaded up Windows XP and have had older versions of Windows, and they still find it a little bit difficult to figure out where they are, where they're going. I know a lot of people who have uh, actually activated some of the capabilities in Windows XP where you can turn back and go back to the old Windows 98 interface because they don't like what they see there. So, um, but I, I, I do believe that over time people will find it easier to use. There are a lot of good features in there to, that make it do that. But the 25% feature, you know, you can basically come up with benchmarks that prove just about anything you want to do. So if you want to say you're 25% easier to use, well, I could probably come up with tests that say it's 25% harder to use, depending on what the tests are. But uh, again, Microsoft pretty much doing what they normally do. Um, soften up the audience with a couple of laughs uh, and then go right into some of the features and what we tend to call the boring part of the presentation where Microsoft says, oh, this is great, this is great, this is great, we made this better. One thing I will say about Windows XP, I am a big fan of it, but Microsoft talking about this stuff for a long time, Jim Alchin started Microsoft about 13, 14 years ago, I think he came over from digital, but uh, he really drove NT, the new technology, which um, was a lot of the mainframe capabilities of operating systems. And it was big, it was bloated, it wouldn't run on a lot of the current systems, wouldn't run at home at all, wouldn't run the games and other things people want to do. And this is the culmination of a 
you know, grand unification strategy for Microsoft of bringing together the Windows 98, the more uh, consumer platform, with Windows NT, the more, uh, the more corporate, the safe, the secure stuff, and putting it all together. It seems to work well for me, but I don't know. The test systems I've had at home have crashed a lot more than they think their systems are crashing. Steve, what's the mood back there? Well, uh, Jim, I've got to agree with you. When they were coming up with these numbers saying that it's 25% uh, more usable and 10% and, uh, better in terms of reliability, I, I was thinking exactly what you were thinking is, you know, you can pretty much come up with any kind of, any kind of number you want. I, I, I did enjoy the, uh, the, the end of MS-DOS, though, as you did, that big symbolic big screen thing with the C prompt. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's still really there. Uh, you can still load up uh, what they call a command window. Now, all right. DOS may, I mean, we, not, we may not be living on the underpinnings of 16-bit DOS, which is what older, older versions of Windows did, but you can still get to a command prompt, you can still do those sort of things, so, um, and you know, if you really want DOS, you can probably go up on eBay and buy a copy, so it's not completely dead. What did you think about the beginning with uh, uh, New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani? I, I guess there was really no way to go around that. Uh, it, was, um, it was a little bit touching for me uh, to see the, the two of them up there, especially in, you know, in, in, uh, in light of the recent events. Uh, they talked a little bit about high tech has helped since, uh, uh, you know, with the command center and whatnot in New York since 9-11. Uh, what did you think about all of that, Jim? Well, you know, it was a question in a lot of people's minds whether they'd actually do this launch. You know, long before September 11th, Microsoft was saying, we're going to launch XP in New York. It's going to be October 25th. And then after the events of the 11th, we really didn't know if it was going to happen here. I mean, up until uh, a week or two, there was still a question in a lot of people, people's minds of whether it would go off whether it would be safe enough to go up. You know, we're sitting here in the middle of Times Square, and I gotta tell you, I lived in New York City for 10 years. New York feels normal to me. It's the first time I've been back. There are cabs everywhere, there's noise everywhere. Um, we uh, had a little bit of an interesting moment a minute ago when a fire engine came racing down uh, Broadway, stopped right here in front of the Marriott Marquis where the event is going on. A couple guys walked out, sort of wandered around, and then got back in the truck and drove away. Normal behavior before the 11th of September, uh, it had everybody worried a little bit, but everything's going off without a hitch, and I think it was the right thing to do for Microsoft to come here, and it's probably a more somber event than what they would have had, but uh, it's the right thing to do, and it, people all over the world, I see journalists and other people all over the country that I've known for years, everybody's here, and uh, it's a good thing. All right, thank you very much, Jim. We're going to check back with you in a little bit, all right? Uh, in the meantime, why don't we go back live to New York for the rollout of Windows XP. Let's see what's happening now. System. Back here, a Toshiba Protege 4000, and down here we have an all-in-one, if you will, satellite system uh, S504. High-end NVIDIA graphics, high-end audio, fantastic sound from the system, desktop replacement uh, for consumers. It's also very good for a um, uh, music experience, obviously. Those are systems from our top partners, but I want to make two other points. The first is that Windows XP is a system for all software and hardware vendors. We have a generic PC here, and because Windows XP is designed as a platform first and foremost, you'll see running here uh, Netscape, AOL, Yahoo Messenger, and Real Player. So regardless of the solution, regardless of the PC, Windows XP enhances your experience. The last point I wanted to make in this broad range is that Windows XP comes on machines of all shapes and all sizes. I've got an eMachines 1090 here. This is a Windows XP machine that's less than $500. Very, very impressive. Well, we have come a long way. It's been, a, it's been quite a journey. I've been at Microsoft 11 years. I'm super proud of this product. I'm super proud of the team that created it. Customers love Windows XP. My group and Microsoft in general is in the business of creating opportunity. Windows XP represents a land of opportunity. And frankly, that's why this is such a historic moment for us and the industry. Thank you very much. Well, the team worked very hard on this product. I remember last spring sitting down with them and saying, are you guys going to have this ready for this Christmas season? We really need it for this Christmas season, but we don't want to do it unless it's ready to go. And so they put in some really uh, long hours, uh, real dedication to it. 
Uh, so let's have a, a round of applause for the Windows XP team. <clears throat> A critical aspect of this product is the, what we call continuous improvement. And this is something that I'm really thrilled about. I think it's something that we've needed, uh, but we have not had until Windows XP. It's the idea of a complete feedback loop. You know, how does Microsoft know when somebody wants their PC to do better? How do they know what's going on? How do we know what pieces may not be fitting together in exactly the right way. Well, built into Windows XP is a reporting capability. And so for anybody who allows this to work, we can see every time there's a hang or a crash or a, a serious problem on the PC. And so we have this very comprehensive database that shows us all those things that are going on. Now, we take that information, and together with our partners, we say, hey, was this driver? solid enough? Was this application working the right way? Was this hardware uh, working the right way? And we make sure that we can feed improvements out to that user base. When we did this in the past, it was way too cumbersome. Uh, people would get too many notices. We didn't have enough up there. We didn't have drivers and the broad set of things people were interested in. So we said we've got to get this to critical mass. We have to have it be common sense that an XP machine, whether it's in a corporation at home, uh, you're getting these regular updates. And so the feature is built in to make that very, very simple. So we won't have to wait for the major releases that come every two or three years uh, in order to see improvements. Simply by having a machine that connects out to the internet, you'll be able to get this continuous improvement. And this is really a, a key answer to the question of, how can we have such an open environment where anybody can develop applications and drivers and hardware, and there's nothing that holds back people who want to do those new things? There's no approval process they go through, and yet be sure that the leading companies make absolutely sure that the quality of that experience is such that people aren't concerned, that they're willing to add a new peripheral or a new application knowing their, their system will keep running and, and working for them exactly the way it should. When I talk about partners, uh, we have a lot of partners, uh, but our most critical partner, without a doubt, is Intel. Uh, with Intel, we, wait, we work to make sure that the power of their processors and our software solutions is really enabling new capabilities. We're both companies that believe in a very high volume approach, getting uh, great price performance out into the marketplace. It's exciting that at the same time we're coming out with this new major Windows release, uh, Intel has a, a very important chip uh, that's now going mainstream. So let me invite Craig Barrett, CEO of Intel, out to share his perspective on the XP launch. Welcome. So first of all, let me congratulate you, Microsoft, and Jim Olchin on a great accomplishment, the whole Windows XP, the technology behind it, the launch, everything is great. Uh, I, I want to tell you, just as a start, I've almost got three generations of, of stuff behind this. My grandkids just bought a new PC, Intel inside, surprisingly enough. Uh, XP, I've got XP Professional on my desktop. And our IT organization is standardizing on XP Professional for Intel across the board going forward. <laughs> and as you said, I, I really think the, the combination of Pending 4 processor and XP and the fact that they're really optimized to show off each other's real strength uh, brings a lot of excitement to the marketplace going forward. And we're just proud to be up here on the stage with you and proud to have our teams working closely together. And in fact, I think in, in my history of the Intel-Microsoft relationship, this is probably the closest cooperation, best cooperation we've ever had. So we're excited about the results, excited about going forward. Now, one of the things that I'm not sure that the audience realizes is really how much technology goes behind this. And I was sitting in my hotel room last night trying to add up how many man years of effort we put behind designing the Pentium 4 and the manufacturing process technology and getting ready to go. And I, I come up somewhere between probably seven and 10,000 man years. And 
I suspect you've got an equivalent amount of effort behind that. Um, almost exactly the same. Uh, it's, you know, the things that we're building collectively, I think, are, are the most complex, sophisticated things that man has ever built. And it, I get terribly excited looking at the microstructure of our microprocessors. I suspect you get excited looking about those bits and bytes and stuff in the code. But, you bet. <laughs> but you know, that's for us techie nerds to get excited about. By the way, I've got to ask you, how old were you in the Windows 95 launch video? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I was uh, 38. Wow. <laughs> I've aged. <laughs> You've matured. You've matured. Absolutely. But, you know, we get excited about the, uh, the technology, but I think the real excitement is what it brings to the end user. And uh, I think you, you and the team have done a very good job demonstrating the audience that if you're a consumer and it's the rich audio, digital video, entertainment, rich communication, imaging, animation, all of that good stuff, plus better reliability. And then in the business space, it's everything from multiprocessor or, or multitasking capability and security, uh, the short messaging system with the video conferencing little window. I love that aspect of it. Uh, there's games, and uh, uh, I know none of you play games ever at work. But it is really, you take a Pentium 4 and XP in games and the animation is truly amazing. So I, I want everybody to recognize not so much all the detailed technology behind it, but the great user experience that it brings forward. And I think that's really the accomplishment that Microsoft is presenting to the world today. So let me offer Intel's congratulations. Looking forward to continue to work with you guys. Great accomplishment. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Many people, as we've talked about the enthusiasm of these beta users, where they literally say they're never going back to a previous version of Windows, they've asked us to dimensionalize this. And if you simply look at doing the things you were doing before, uh, the time savings are, are quite considerable. Uh, always on capability, uh, the quick coming out of standby capability, uh, the reduction uh, in, in crashes, uh, just the basic speed that we have in everything that, that goes on with the operating system and the fact that things are more accessible. Uh, you can see what's going on. You can control that interface just in a, in a far better way. If you've ever got a question, this support capability where you can just connect up, it's pretty clear to us that a Windows user over the course of the year is going to save themselves a man week uh, because of these new capabilities. And that's simply taking the things they're doing now and being able to do those uh, in a better way. So reasonably dramatic. It just shows the leverage that comes when we spend the billions of dollars and put the product out as a uh, high volume, low price product. Now on top of that savings comes uh, the ability to do the new things. And I wanted to make it clear what some of those categories of new things are. Uh, you're going to see a lot today about real-time communication. This is not just instant messaging, because when people think about that, they think about text. Uh, what we have here is the extension to audio and video as well. Uh, perhaps even more profound is this screen sharing. You know, whenever you're on the phone with somebody, you want to talk about a list or a schedule or a presentation or a budget. Well, now uh, people will do that. This kind of net meeting capability was so hard to get at Windows that it was almost like a cult feature. And now we brought it to the mainstream and we expect most people to use that. Mobile computing. Uh, on an ongoing basis, you're going to hear about how our industry is driving Wi-Fi, or 802.11b, into mainstream usage. Uh, that is a very big thing uh, for the new scenarios. And XP brings that forward. If you have an XP machine, there's many locations now where automatically you'll see the network come up and just offer uh, to connect you up and connect you up with security. Help and support, a huge overhead thing. And now the diagnostics built in and the screen sharing thing uh, allow those to be handled in a, in a very different way. The common sense of digital photography. Why haven't people switched away from film? Well, the cameras are certainly getting there. The cost, the resolution, uh, the printers. 
But it's just the, the setup. How do you move the photos? How do you keep the names? How do you make sure you don't lose them? How do you organize them? That's what we put so much work into. Likewise, digital music. Uh, the user is empowered by organizing things the way they want, and yet uh, it, it hasn't reached critical mass because uh, the tools simply weren't built in in the right way. Digital video coming along with the, the great camcorders, the low cost of storage, and finally home networking. Again, something that a few people were able to set up in the past. Now uh, it's something that's a mainstream thing. You get two PCs, they'll recognize they're, they're together, be able to set up and, and gateway through to the internet in a simple way. So those were some of the key scenarios that we really put new technology in, took it out to the users to make sure uh, that this would be something that everyone could take advantage of. Uh, so, you know, XP is about hundreds of millions of people uh, doing these things. We thought a lot about, you know, how could we bring this home? How could we bring, bring someone who clearly wasn't, uh, you know, an engineer and, uh, you know, really people could relate to in a big way? And we thought, who's got the energy and the excitement? Who's sort of a consummate New Yorker uh, who can, you know, be a, a good example of, someone we can bring in with, with Windows XP. Uh, and so we've got somebody fantastic uh, for that. Please uh, welcome Mr. Regis Philbin. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hello, Bill. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you. You know, I'm excited to be here, but I've got to tell you something. I am your greatest challenge. Uh-oh. Yeah. I've talked about this on the show. I've tried so many times to conquer this, to get into it, to be a part of the, you know, the, the century. And I can't do it. It just doesn't work for me. There's too many things to press, there's too much to remember, I give up. Well, that's why we need you here. We've got to prove that Windows XP is for everyone. Well, I see it all around me, my staff, my family, everybody can do it. Can't do it. Well, Regis, Incidentally, you, you... why am I the only guy here with a tie on? <laughs> Regis, you can do it. I'll answer any questions that you have. I've got a lot of questions, a lot of questions. But, you know, I'd feel more, more familiar uh, with these questions if I was in more familiar surroundings. So would you step into my office right okay. up here, Bill All Gates? Right. Yeah, here it goes. Yes, Bill Gates. Who wants to be a millionaire? Bill Gates does. You know, Regis, I've, I've always wanted to be on your show. Yeah, if anybody needs a million, it's you. But, uh, uh, weren't, you, uh, weren't you on my show yesterday? Well, that was Kelly's show, wasn't it? Easy, Bill. Easy. Easy on the funny stuff. You mean my other show? You mean the millionaire show? We'd love to have you on that show. All right. Yeah. Who All wants right. to be a millionaire? Bill Gates does. <laughs> You think it's worth your time? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be fun. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. If you could get past the fastest thinker question. Oh, you know, I can do it. I can do it. Sure you can. All right, let's, let's start with some easy XP Windows questions. Okay, see how much you really know about this product. Here we go. First question, coming up. Bill Gates, what does the XP and Windows XP stand for? Is it extreme power, expediency, experience, supercalifragilistic XP allidocious? Well, that's a pretty easy one. I, I think I'll go with C. Experience. You say experience, final answer? Final answer. All right. And you're right, Bill Gates. You just won a hundred dollars. Experience, the right answer. All right, we'll get another question up here. Which of these is not, not a Windows XP experience? Would it be digital music, mobility, digital photography, new millionaire game that replaces solitaire? Well, we may have missed an opportunity, but uh, I think it's D. 
Uh, you're right again, Bill Gates. How about that? $200. Very good. All right, we'll get into a tough question. Here it comes. Windows XP allows you to use your computer to play videos, music, and view pictures, call and see friends in real time, connect to your work from anywhere, get the best of the digital world, even if you're not an expert. Well, that's an interesting one. I'd, I'd say it's actually all of the above. All of the above. Final answer. That's it. Got it, Bill Gates. It really happened to you. Yes, you win. But, but let me ask you something, Bill. Can it really do all these things? Well, it really does. Uh, and, you know, we're going to make it so even a guy like you can do every one of those things. You know, I, I'm a, kind of a bright guy, but I just, okay. There's just something about it that baffles me. Well, we've got Joe Belpiore here, and he's going to come out and show you how you do it with Windows XP. Okay. Actually, while Joe's out here, I'm going to go out into Times Square. You're going to go to Times Square? Yeah, I'm just going to go out there Can and look around. Uh, don't worry, I'll be checking back in with you to make sure Joe's taking care of you. Bill Gates loose in Times Square. All right. It's going to be okay. Uh, Bill, I brought a, a jacket for you here from folks in the team. Uh, we All thought right. you'd need it out there in Times Square. New Windows XP jacket. I'll Bill be a, needs it. It's 84 degrees out there. I'll be a real hit. <laughs> okay, good okay, luck, you Bill, guys. Thanks very much. Good luck out there. <laughs> nice to see you, Bill. All right. There's a lot of great people out there, you know. I hope he's going to be all right. I trust he knows his way around Times Square, Joe. You know, the shell games, there's naked cowboys, there's... Hot dog vendors with XP windows on the umbrellas. There's all kinds of things out there. But there are many chief architects, software engineers. Out yeah, there. you're right, Regis. But I'll tell you what. I think Bill's going to be okay, okay. So we'll check in and make sure he does fine. All right. So why don't we uh, walk over here and get started, and I'll start showing okay, you good. Windows XP. Do any of these guys own a tie? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Can't believe it. So uh, is this the latest model? This is a Dell Latitude C600 laptop. Okay. And the first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to go through some of the experiences. The first thing we're going to talk about is mobility and how Windows XP can really let you take your computing experiences with you. Windows XP is the engine inside this computer, this, right? This computer comes with Windows XP. Okay. And well, the first thing, actually, I, I, I saw on your show, you, you had Bill on your show, and you yes. mentioned that sometimes you've had some trouble actually just turning computers on. Exactly. All you need is an on and off button, and I'll be able to follow it. Well, fortunately, this laptop actually has one right there. And we thought it would be a great way to start out with Regis by letting him turn the PC on. He could start learning, and all of you could see just how fast Windows XP is. It doesn't go ahead. say on. It's got a little symbol, but that's the button, right? Yep, there you go. Here Give you it go. a push. And that's it? It's on? That's it. And there's it's Windows It's on. XP. Okay. All right? Great. So Good beginning. We're off to a good start so far here. You're doing great. Uh, so Windows XP does make turning the PC on a lot quicker. And there's a lot of other things we've done to make mobility work great. But one of the things that I want to focus on, since we don't have time to go through all the features, is wireless networking. So with wireless networking, you can buy a laptop, and Dell and other PC manufacturers make laptops that have it built in. Right. But lots of people have laptops like this that don't have wireless networking built in. So what you can do is you can buy little wireless networking cards like this one. Uh -huh. This is an Orinoco wireless networking card from a gear. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, Regis, I'm going to actually have you install wireless networking support on this laptop. This makes this computer uh, usable without any wires. Exactly. You'll be able to get on the internet, do your email, do all that stuff. We thought, you know, with Regis being new to all this, it would be great to start him out with something as easy as installing hardware. And every computer has that little slot? All laptops have that little okay. slot, so you can buy stuff like this from lots of companies. All right. And we're going to go through all the steps to install, configure, and connect to a wireless network. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and uh, give the card a push. push. There. And just watch on the screen here as Windows XP recognizes that you just inserted some hardware, and it's doing all the hard work of figuring out how to install the software required find the wireless network and get you connected. All right. So little balloons are popping up. Little here. balloons are popping up. It's thinking, and there we go. Is install ready to use? Good. And that's it. And that's it. The hardware right, is fine. installed and ready to use. I still see wires here. Well, these wires are actually wires that we're using to power the laptop and to get the picture up on the screen to get some audio out. Oh, okay. Okay, so we've now got 
we've now got our, our wireless uh, network installed here, and you can see there's a balloon that says there's wireless network right here in the theater. Who would have guessed? A wireless network in the theater. So it has to be in a place where there are wireless network connections. You got it, exactly. And so what we can do is we can just click on the balloon here to see the wireless networks. And in fact, we've set up more than one wireless network here in the theater. So out there in the partner area, people can do wireless. Up here mm -hmm. on stage, you and I can do wireless. Okay. And I'm just going to click OK or hit Enter to connect to so what this did you wireless hit? What, network. What, what did you hit? I, I hit the Enter key, but I could have so, so far three clicked. moves. I hit this, I push this, and I hit enter. You got it. That's it. It's a cake. And right up there on the screen, it says, we are now connected to the backstage network, and our connection is excellent. So this p PC right now is actually connected. And to show that to you, I'm going to go over here to the Start button. Start button is the one place that you click on to find all your programs and anything you want to do. I'm going to open the internet using Internet Explorer right here. And we'll actually have a web browser. We'll be connected to the network. And what we're looking at is a web page that we have on a server backstage. Uh -huh. And we could browse around the internet and do anything we wanted. Okay. So the second thing that's really cool about wireless networks is that they're very fast. And to show you just how quick they are, I'm going to click on this music link and download a song and have it play over the PC. Music files are kind of big, and it shows how fast a wireless network is. So we click, and there's the music. <clears throat> wow, that was quick. Simple as that. That was quick. So not only is it easy for you to set up a wireless huh? network, hopefully you'll decide that you can do it, but it's also really fast once you've got it set up. Uh, you did mention a key point, Reg, which is that for wireless networking, there has to be an antenna, or you have to have your PC in a place where a wireless right. network has installed. And I thought it would be cool to show you a little bit about what my wireless day is like when I take my laptop and go to all these places. So okay. let's actually, uh, I'm going to unplug this. I'll yank the screen, right. yank the power yank the audio. I'm going to lift this puppy right up. And uh, I want you to join me on a little imaginary walk through my wireless day. Okay. Where are we, where are we going? Okay, Which well, way? in fact, let's take a look back here. Oh, we're yeah. going to start at home. Okay, yeah. So step on over here. So you can work it at home in without fact, any wire. I can and I do. I have a wireless network in my house. And all I have to do is turn on my laptop or plug in the card. A little balloon pops up on the screen, like the one you see there, mm -hmm. telling me that I'm now connected to my home wireless network. Lots of companies are building accessories that let you connect to a wireless network in your house. How did you make it? You just buy that and you, you put just, it in your house? Exactly. You okay. buy that, you connect it to the internet, you have a little wireless card like this, turn on your laptop with Windows XP, you're good to go. Right. And then you can browse the web, play online games, do all kinds of stuff. My wife and I like to sit in front of the TV on Sundays with our laptops and update our fantasy football scores to see how we're doing. Sounds exciting. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, another place where wireless networking is becoming really popular is at work in the office. Mm -hmm. I take my laptop to the office a bunch, and all I have to do is turn it on. Um, I can be in a conference room. I can be in the cafeteria. And most offices are, are set up for wireless. Many, right? many yeah. actually are. Um, in fact, we did a survey recently. 70% of CIOs of large companies say they are currently testing wireless networks at their businesses now. That would uh, speed up everything in the business, wouldn't it? That, that's the idea. Yeah. So people could take their laptops and work in the cafeteria, or if you're stuck in a meeting that's not the most productive meeting in the yeah. world, you can get some other work done. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, another great place where wireless networking can really provide benefits to people where it's taking off. I see them all the time. In airports? You got it. Yeah. So you go to an airport. Um, I could take my laptop to an airport. In fact, on the way here, I did this at Seattle Airport where there's wireless networking. I turn it on. And sure enough, at the airport, I'll get a little balloon like that telling me if there's a wireless network. If there is, like in this case, I can click on that, see a list of available networks. And companies like Wayport are actually installing this service in lots of airports today. So people can go, they pay a small fee just to get online. And then while they're waiting for their flight, they can be doing their email, on the web, mm. all kinds of stuff like what that. What about on the flight, Joe? Uh, not yet. Not yet, but I'm sure we'll get there yeah. soon. Okay. Um, one cool thing, by the way, Wayport is one of these companies that's got the support in airport. Wayport has announced that for all Windows XP customers, starting today until the end of January, that Wayport wireless service will be free if you're using Windows XP. No kidding. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's nice. Good. The last, place, the last place where we're seeing wireless networking really, really start to take off is in hotels. I can take my laptop to a hotel, I turn it on, whether I'm in my room, I'm in the lobby, I'm in the coffee shop, I'll see one of these little balloons that tells me a wireless network is there. I can connect to it, I can then browse the web, do my email, all that same sort of stuff. If you don't see the balloon, 
not going to work. If you don't see the balloon, then you're not in a place with a wireless right. network. But a key thing is that these wireless networks are happening in lots and lots of places. Mm -hmm. So more and more, you'll be able to go somewhere and do wireless networking. Terrific. And in fact, Reeds, we're going to make sure that you can do it, and all of you folks in the audience can do it, because the folks from Agear have provided these wireless cards free for all of you and for you. Not so you can go try this stuff yourself with Windows X. Great. That's a great idea. All right. So that's wireless and mobility. Okay. I think uh, I think Bill has probably made it to. Are we going to um, check in with him? We should check in with him. I, I hope think. he's there, safe and sound. Bill Gates in Times Square. Hi, there I'm he is. here at the Starbucks in Times Square. Let's go see what's happening inside. I'll take an iced decaf, triple venti, skim, light on the ice latte. Next. Hi. I'll take an 11 megabit 80211 with a dynamic IP connection. And uh, I'll have a beverage with it, too. Oh, your network's up in here, Stringer. Wow, that's a strong double mocha. Sir, that's hot chocolate. <laughs> wireless network. Outstanding. Dude, isn't it complicated to go wireless? No, it's a snap. You'll be on the web faster than the Yankees beat the Mariners. <laughs> They're cod. Very catchy. Uh, excuse me, I've got a Windows Messenger request. Hi, Bill. Howard Schultz. What a coincidence. I'm in a Starbucks right now. The wireless network you're testing in here is great. It's Howard Schultz. He's the head of Starbucks. Hey, they're talking on the Internet. By this time next year, Starbucks is planning to offer customers high-speed wireless Internet access in many of our stores across the country. Terrific. Windows XP will be a big help for that. It's so fast I was surfing before I was sipping. Absolutely. We're also planning to use Windows XP with compact technologies in our stores. We're also going with Windows XP in our enterprise. Thanks a lot, Howard. Have a great launch. Next time the coffee's on me. Well, hot chocolate. Did that guy say something about free coffee? Joe, Regis, back to you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bill. Ed Koch. Anyway, they're smart people, these Starbucks uh, folks. They're everywhere. They sell their double uh, decaf lattes and Oprah book CDs, everything, and now they're wireless, too. You got it. And wireless really is one of the cool things about Windows XP, but what we want to talk about now and why we're here mm -hmm. is to talk about digital media. Yeah, what exactly is that? Well, digital media is the idea that you could take pictures or music or videos or all kinds of content, stuff like this, the way it is today, yeah. and put it on your PC and then be able to deal with it easily and do lots of great stuff you, with you it. You can condense all of these CDs on your PC. Not only all of these CDs, but all of these pictures. I have a box like this at my house. Tons yeah, of pictures. everybody's got these. And, and these, videotapes. I've yeah. been trying to record all your shows, actually. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you and your wife can have a ball on Monday night, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, now where do we go? Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go over here. Come on, step right up here, and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, photos. So what we have, this is a HP Pavilion PC. And see that box of pictures there? That's yeah. got about 2,000 pictures. Right. We have all of those pictures on this PC. How'd they get there? Well, it's actually pretty easy with Windows XP. For one thing, you could use a digital camera to take them. You connect it with a wire. Windows XP recognizes it and copies the pictures to your PC. Or you could use a scanner to take pictures like that, scan them in, and have them on your PC. But then how do you know which picture comes up after the next one? Well, let's take a look, actually. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll give you a quick look. Now, again, to do this, I just have to go to the Start button, Place to Start Stuff. And one of the things on here is My Pictures. That's the My Pictures folder where all of these pictures wow. have been stored. Mm -hmm. And you can see I have tons and tons of them, and they're categorized in little folders. Every time I take my digital camera and plug it in, I type in a name, and they all go together. So if I want to expand one or enlarge it, okay, I can do that? Let, let's try it. Um, we have a folder full of pictures here that were taken for a photo event that Hewlett Packard did, where they gave digital cameras to a bunch of folks from age of 6 to 64 mm -hmm. who weren't experts with them, and they went around the city and took pictures. Central so, Park. You got it. So uh, I can flip through these pictures using Windows XP's film strip view, and I can see them right here on the screen. And there's actually lots and lots of great stuff I can do with them once I have can them Can I here. print these pictures out? Well, thanks for the segue, actually. In fact, you can. Um, if you look right over here, 
If you look right over here on the picture tab, there's lots of things that we make it easy for you to do with pictures, mm -hmm. like view them as a slideshow, yeah. or you asked about printing. Yeah. I can click print this picture and print it on my own printer, or I can order prints online. And a company like Kodak or Shutterfly will provide the service for me to actually get those prints in you the mail. order it online and it comes to you. And it in comes the mail. to you. In fact, I want to show you an example. We have here a one of the things that digital photography has finally caught up with film photography in is the quality of the photos. There's a Sony camera out there that's a five megapixel camera. And with that Sony camera, you can take pictures and blow them up to this size, and they actually still look great. That's it's, great. It's, it's fine enough definition that you probably be, would be willing to hang it on the wall. Absolutely. If you knew who this person was. You can was. get it that big, too. You, you can, exactly. In fact, this was printed by someone from the development team, and I'm sure that's, that's their kit. But you need this. Um, all, the, all the pictures are on that okay. computer, and then you can print, order prints, and so on. But in fact, that's not all you can do. Um, as I'm showing you these tasks here, one of the other things that a lot of people want to do is share their pictures with other folks. Yeah. So I have family who live in Florida. Um, if I want to share pictures, I can email them. So here's a picture, and if I want to email this, I just click on email. Now, Actually, people can do a lot of this stuff today. But when it comes out a little grainy, I've seen yeah, some of it, them. Yeah, it can come out strange. It could be a picture that's really big. And in fact, that's what I wanted to show here. This picture is 2.25 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And that's actually pretty big. It wouldn't even fit on a floppy disk, just that one picture. That's how the quality is so high. If I were to send that to my sister, who has a modem, it would really take her a very long time to download it. It wouldn't be very considerate of me to do that. But what Windows XP does, so that you don't have to know all this, yeah. if you were to use the PC, for example, and click email this file, Windows XP will detect that the picture is really big and automatically offer to make it smaller for you. And then you just click OK, and then you'll get your email message. You type in the name of the person you want to send it to, and off goes the email. And it shows up on, on their computer. It'll show up on their computer. And you see right here, this picture is now really small, only 63K, yeah. it's a very small size. But when I open it up, it still looks really nice. So the mm. person on the other end can see the picture. Fabulous. So there's lots of ways you can share pictures. You can send email. Perfect. One of the things that I also did was I burned a bunch of pictures on this CD. Windows XP supports the ability to write CDs. So actually, the truth is you can fit that many pictures on a CD. And then they play the CD, and they see all the pictures they can on their play computer. The CD, you got it. Or I could store it away in case I wanted to make sure I didn't ever lose them. There's lots of great stuff I can do. Terrific. All right, you get yep. the idea. Okay. Let's move on and talk about music. Over here we have a Sony Bio MX. Um, this is a Sony PC that comes with Windows XP. And I want to show you some of the cool stuff that you can do with music. Um, I'm going to go right over here and open the My Music folder. And in fact, all of those CDs, that's 2,000 CDs, we have stored on this computer right here. Just like the pictures are stored on this one. Exactly. Uh, in fact, there's room on the PC to put even all the CDs and all the pictures. No kidding. Yeah, so you can get all that stuff on there. You know, you think about using audio CDs today. They're great, but if you lose one, then you don't have it anymore. If it gets yeah, all scratched sure. up, sure. this way you can keep all your music safe and together in one place. And how's the sound quality? Good. Sound quality is great, and I'll show you in a second. Mm -hmm. So if you see, I can scroll through the My Music folder and see all my digital music files. I have tons and tons of them in here. I'm, I'm, I've just scrolled along. I'm barely through the Bs. Um, I'm a Billy Joel fan, uh, local guy. So let me go in there, and I'll show you. I have a bunch of Billy Joel albums here. Okay. And if I want to do something with the music, listen to it or whatever. You just I keep can, hitting that little mouse, and all of these things happen. Huh? I just double-click the button, go in, and there I am. So Windows XP makes it easier for you to deal with all these music right. files. Once you put the CD in, copy them to your hard disk, um, it can tell you who the artist is, how long the song is, and so on. If I want to play the music, I can just select a song, go over here, and choose Play. And that song will be selected, along with the rest of the content in the album. In Media Player, will come up here, and we're listening to some classic, appropriate Billy Joel. Wow, fantastic. And that's 2,000 albums at least, huh? On, on this PC. On CDs, yeah. Yep. OK, so this is Windows Media Player. I want to show you a little bit about it. It's been updated for Windows XP to make playing and dealing with music really effortless for people. So you see I have my playlist here, my album art. Um, the Media Player also makes it possible for me to deal with all that music. So if I go into the, my media library, I can look at it in different ways. I can look at it, for example, by album. The list you saw before was all by They're artists. They're all listed there, huh? They're all here. And so who did that? You know, I, we, we pay these folks a bunch of money to stick the CDs in, get all the music on here, and we're ready for the demo. OK, good. But you might imagine if you have your own music collection, you'll mm -hmm. take one CD, 
stick it in, listen to it, it'll be copied to the hard disk. Later you'll stick another CD, listen to it, right. and it all happens pretty automatically. Um, now, I have all that music in there. I can look at it by artist, by album, and I can create playlists, which are my own sort of customized set of music that all go together. And you'll rearrange it I can arrange it in whatever order mm -hmm. I want, have as many songs as I want. Fantastic. And you got to remember the cool thing here is that once you have this digital media on your PC, one of the great things is that you can do a bunch of stuff with it. Yeah. Okay? So, for example, I uh, created this audio CD, Joe's Road Trip Classics, which are a bunch of songs that I like to listen to when I'm driving on the road. Mm. And I can also take the music with me by putting it on a portable digital music player. So right here we have a whole bunch of examples of portable digital music players being made by lots of companies to provide Windows XP users with music wherever they want to go. All of these music players work with Windows XP today. Hmm. So once you have the music, you can do lots of great stuff with it. And how? What do you think? I think it's great. And you've got every artist ever? Uh, uh, well, we have a lot. There's, hmm. there's 2,000 in here right yeah. now. Fabulous. In fact, you, one of the things that some people say when I show this is that I go into this list and it's a little on the long side. You know, if I, if I have to find a particular album in there, you've got to scroll through all this. And if I let you use it for a while, you might find that kind of inconvenient. Yeah. And, and in fact, I heard on your show that you mentioned to Bill that you'd like to be able to talk to computers. That might That's be the answer. That's the final answer. Just talk to the thing, you know, and let it do the work. To get the mouse, to get pressing buttons. Talk to it. Okay, well, we're going to try to stay focused on that for a second. I want to show you a feature. We're going to, we're going to try to deliver on that promise. With, with Plus for Windows XP, Microsoft Plus for Windows XP, what Plus does is it extends the digital media experience, makes your PC more fun to use. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open Plus and show you one of the things that we've done. To start uh, it's Jim Lauterbach here out. live from um, Times like Square said, right outside of the Microsoft stuff. Windows XP launch. A little bit of excitement here on the street. Now the launch is going on on the fourth floor of the Mar Marriott Marquis Hotel right over there. Bill Gates actually left the presentation as you saw and he walked downstairs to a Starbucks on 45th Street right around the corner. Got himself, uh, I guess, a coffee, talked with Ed Koch showed off some of the wireless capabilities you can do there. And then just started strolling down Broadway, a couple people around him. I was down there looking at what was going on. Bill walked right by, I said hello to him, told him I thought XP was a pretty good job. And uh, he went, took right off and he's doing a live shot. Uh, and I assume he's gonna be doing a little bit more for the uh, presentation you guys are watching. But he is two blocks down from here on Broadway. And uh, I don't know, it sounds like Regis is upstairs and Bill's downstairs. I think it has to be a little quieter in here. Hey, Jim, it's Steve here. Um, boy, they're pulling out all the stops with Regis Philbin, aren't they? What did you think of all of that? Uh, Regis Philbin, Ed Koch, <laughs> Mayor Giuliani. I'll uh, tell you. I, and Sting coming up in about an hour and a half over at Bryant Park. Yeah, it's a star-studded event. But, uh, you know, it's really funny. Out here, we're out here in Times Square. All this is going on. Windows XP signs everywhere. And all the people in New York are walking around as they usually do on any sort of event. They're nonplussed. They're like, yeah, oh, what's this Windows XP stuff? Give me a bagel and a schmear. So it's not affecting New York at all. Did you enjoy the little uh, the little game of who wants to be a bajillionaire? Yeah. Yeah. I, can I play? <laughs> I know the answer to those questions. Yeah. Um, it, what do you think about this whole thing generally so far? I mean, it's quite an extravaganza. Have you seen anything like this before in your experience, Jim? Well, you know, let, let me talk a little bit about the Windows 95 launch because this is, I think, as important a product to Microsoft as Windows 95. That launch was on the Microsoft campus. Very interesting. What they did, they had an entire uh, funway set up. They had a big Ferris wheel. They had cotton candy. They had Jay Leno. They had. It was a much bigger event. They had a lot more people. And uh, this, maybe because it's in New York and it's just, a, it's not as many people. Maybe it's because there's just so much going on. Even though they're rolling out the star-studded cast, this does not feel like as big a deal. It's more subdued. Yeah, Bill Gates is walking down Times Square, but. You know, in New York, there's so many whacked out people walking down Times Square, no one's noticing him. And that's kind of how I feel about this Windows XP launch. It's a big deal to those of us in the industry, but you know what? I don't think people are noticing. Mm, well, that would be a shame. We're going to get back in a little bit. Thank you very much, Jim. Right sure. now, I want to go over to Rob Enderley with the uh, Giga Information Group. He's been sitting here in the studio with us and listening to what's been going on. Rob, give us your impression. Well. I think they started off at the very beginning and kind of addressed one of the big concerns for this product, and that's the fact that the, the market's in a recession and people are not buying technology. So the subtle message there was it might be patriotic to go out and buy a, buy a product, it might be patriotic to buy a PC. This is not a company that's known for subtly, and that, su subtly, and that was actually very subtle. Uh, the reality here is tech certainly led the market into the downturn. It's very likely that tech might be able to bring it out. 
Certainly people bought PCs, that might be the way to do it. The question would be whether it would be sustainable or not. But it wasn't a bad concept. Rob, what did you think about Jim's analysis that he's not sure if anybody's really watching? Well, that, of course, would be a problem. As we started off saying at the beginning of the hour, is the fact that this market is really thinking about other things. They're thinking about safety. They're thinking about their homes. Uh, they're really not thinking about buying technology right now. And unless we can convince folks, unless they can convince folks to buy that technology, this market's not coming back. Uh, Bill Gates took some time, Rob, to point out some of the, the, the new things. Specifically, he wanted to talk about real-time communication, mobile computing, uh, help and support for the, the XP, uh, digital photography and music and video and, uh, and home networking. Uh, these really are no surprises. These are our features we were expecting. These are our things we knew were coming. Uh, any surprises for you? No, I guess the surprise was is they didn't demonstrate the features as they were giving the presentation. Uh, it was more slideware, and unfortunately, while slideware plays to executives, it doesn't play to the large audience. And in fact, remember, Scott McNeely made a big point about talking about this, you know, throwing uh, PowerPoint out, uh, primarily because he saw it as a time suck. This presentation almost uh, would, would provide an excla exclamation point to that particular statement. It needed to be more experiential. It needed to provide the kind of thing, it needed to make somebody feel that they really needed this product. And instead, I'm afraid it was, it was kind of dull. Hmm. All right, we're going to get back to you in a little bit. Thank you very much, Rob. Right now, I'm going to go to James Kim. He is uh, our resident expert, one of them at least, on XP and everything Windows. James, what's uh, your impression about what's going on? Well, I too thought it was pretty interesting that uh, Bill Gates and uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani in the city of New York were leveraging each other at the beginning uh, to, on, their, on their different platforms. But what really interests the lab here is uh, some of the numbers that they showed off. You know, we saw some uh, pretty subject or some pretty subjective. Uh, uh, benchmark results, 25% here, 10% here. Well, we noticed one thing. Uh, in our testing of business Winston 2001, XP versus ME or any other 98-based system, uh, we found that there was really no improvement. The improvement we saw was about 15 to 20% in the content creation end of things, which is more media intensive. So, you know, we were, we were kind of scratching our heads about that. Also, a couple other things in there. Um, first of all, the uh, reference to uh, Intel, you know, we saw Craig Barrett up there. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we know about their uh, their their coalition, their Intel and Windows XP. Um, you know, we showed earlier the benchmark results from both of their high-end um, processors, the 2.0 P4 and the uh, 1800 Plus, which is a 1.53 megahertz chip. The AMD actually outperforms the uh, P2, so it seems like it's a little more optimized. Uh, there's definitely a lot more performance and power behind the AMD chip. Um, also, it was pretty interesting to see uh, within the, the media range, they didn't really mention, uh, they didn't get into like DVD or MP3 uh, encoding. Those are kind of hot spots because, you know, the XP owner will have to know that they're not going to get some of this functionality uh, shipped in. They're going to have to download and pay for plugins or go to a third party application. So it, it's not a total experience, it's, it's almost all there. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask Rob about is uh, earlier I alluded to uh, the fact that the man on the street, how are they going to, uh, the person on the street, how are they going to uh, react to XP? Are they going to pick it up right away? Um, Bill Gates had, so one of his quotes was uh, that XP was a foundation for business. When exactly are the IT managers actually going to embrace this technology? Are they going to wait a little while or is it going to be something that, uh, you know, this is a question we're wondering about within our own company. So. You know, I'm wondering when this is going to actually roll out uh, for the long term in, uh, cor in the corporate side. So that's about it from here, Steve. Uh, we're, hearing, uh, we're hearing them outline a lot of the new features, uh, James, about XP. Um, and we've, we've run, uh, gone over some of them so far. But is there anything that really, uh, now to me, in watching all of this, it seems they really want to point out improvements in networking and mobility. And, uh, but the main, the main theme here seems to be um, that it's user-friendly, a lot more user-friendly than any other OS. What do you think, if you could pick just one or two main things that they're trying to push here, James, what would you think it, it, it is? Well, I think, first of all, uh, the interface is the first thing that you're going to see when you load up this uh, OS. And it's really a lot better. It's, uh, it's very customizable. Uh, the graphics look very nice. It's anti-alias. Um, it's, it's very user-friendly, a lot like the Mac OS is. Uh, they're very similar in that respect. Um, also, a lot of the things uh, you know, that, that a lot of user, uh, consumers out there will really enjoy are things like My Pictures, My Music. You know, you've created these dedicated folders where you can store all this information. And instead of seeing simple icons or things like that, you actually see thumbnails. And they give you options to uh, do different things with them. So I think these are very nice features that they've integrated into the OS. It's pretty interesting that Windows Media Player uh, and some of the other, you know, uh, 
features in the OS are built in. And really, um, you know, a lot of people out there, uh, especially new users, won't believe that there are other things out there, third-party applications that they can download or install um, to, to supplement the OS. But as, as an entire OS, I think from the usability aspect, it's, pretty, uh, it, it's, it's the best thing so far out of Microsoft. Good stuff. All right. Thank you very much, James. Kim, we're going to get back to you in a little bit as well. We're going to talk to Rob Enderley uh, throughout uh, the day uh, about the rollout of XP uh, for his analysis. Y you know, uh, it was said uh, at one time that XP was really going to be the saving grace for the computer industry in this, the last quarter of this year. Uh, a lot of people now, obviously, for, for obvious reasons, think that is probably not going to happen. Why don't we go back to New York now? Jim Ladderback is standing by there at the rollout. Jim, uh, you've already talked about, uh, you've already wondered whether really anybody is watching this. Yeah, well, here's an interesting thing that happened yesterday. You know, when Windows 95 launched, they had people, they, they released it at midnight. They had people lined up all over the world. Some poor lucky guy in New Zealand waited forever and bought the first copy of Windows 95. Well, they tried to get a little of that magic back last night here in New York. CompUSA, they had people lined up. You know, there were a lot of people there, but they weren't really buying XP. They were buying printers and other things. So people want to be part of the magic, but then they're kind of saying, I want something a little bit more practical. Give me a printer. Don't give me Windows XP. And I, I do want to add is that James was talking about a lot of the features in Windows XP. One of the uh, things that struck me today as I listened to the presentation, their uh, continuous improvement feature where Bill Gates was talking about, they go out and they, they uh, you know, if there's a problem with your system, it logs everything and they can go back and give that to Microsoft so they can try and fix it and then fix your system. To me, continuous improvement just sounds like continuous beta test. So it sounds like we're in just the, their, Windows XP will be the world's biggest beta test. Everybody will get it, run it, continuously beta test it. And I don't know, maybe it'll be good by 2003. All right, thank you very much, Jim. We'll check back with you in New York in a little bit as well. Right now, I want to go to David Kirkpatrick. He is the senior editor of Internet and Top uh, Technology with Fortune Magazine, and he joins us from our New York studios. Are you with us, David? Yes, I am, Steve. What How do you think? You? Good, I'm, I'm great, thanks. Well, I think that it's, it's a really important product. I think you're right uh, identifying that it's really not the salvation of the PC industry. I've actually recently spent some time talking to a lot of the leaders of that industry, and while they love XP, they clearly believe that it's the best thing Microsoft has come up with, as several people have said. There is no question that they do not expect that it's going to get them out of the problem that they're in because everyone really believes that the economic situation is so dominant in, in the industry's basic prognosis that, uh, that no matter what people think about XP, and it, it's not going to change that very much. And that in, I also agree that people are not paying as much attention to this as perhaps Microsoft would have hoped when it came up with this idea of launching it in New York in October um, earlier in the year. And that's not only because of the economy, of course, that's because people are really thinking about other things, <clears throat> you, obvious other things. Yeah, obviously. Do you think Microsoft should have made some changes to its plans then, or, or is this like a steamroller? You just go no. with it. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't think they should have changed their plans. I think they, they, have, they do have a steamroller, but I don't think that, I think they're obviously going to be somewhat disappointed. For Microsoft, it's a great thing. It moves their project forward. It will... Uh, take off as the de facto operating system on virtually all PCs over time. And it, it is, a, I think, a better user experience, although I'm impressed with the statements that James Kim is making about what your lab has discovered. It, it sounds like it may not be quite as good as they're saying it is. Um, but it's just, it just isn't that impactful right now. And I think that's too bad for, for the uh, technology industry and in some ways for all of us. Listen, what do you think about the tone of the rollout so far? I mean, it, it, it started on a very somber note with uh, New York Mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Rudy Giuliani with Bill Gates, and, and, uh, and they've lightened it up since, of course, with Regis Philbin. Um, is there any surprises for you in this, or is this pretty much what you expected? No, it's a pretty much a white bread launch, Microsoft standard procedure. Um, they always have a few little celebrity walk-ons, a few jokes. Um, Certainly they've had to contextualize that you can't do anything these days without acknowledging, tipping your hat to the reality that people are terrified, the world is reeling uh, in, under current events. Um, they did that and they moved right back to trying to sell, which they're very, very good at. If you had to rate Bill Gates' performance in this Starbucks skit on a, on a let's say, a sliding scale from one to five, what do you think? Well, that was definitely my favorite part of the launch so far. I mean, Ed Koch was very stiff, but Bill was good. I, I like these, uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, slacker guy asking questions about wireless networking. That was good. <laughs> All right. We're going to get back to you. Thank you very much, David. Hang in there. Uh,
let's go to Rob Enderley again with um, Giga Information Group. Rob, we've been talking about generally uh, the, the fact that this was really hoped to be the savior for the, the computing industry. Uh, just not going to turn out that way for whatever reason. And uh, well, obviously there are there's the major reason of 9/11. But w where do you think we go from here? Well, I think we look ahead to 2003. I think the real turnaround for this market actually looks like 2003. And of course, that's when the next version of this operating system comes out, codenamed Longhorn. Uh, there are another number of things that actually happened in that year. All the machines that were bought in preparation for Y2K come up for renewal. And Intel's going to change the hardware platform dramatically. So you've got three major movers in that year. Looks like a market turnaround, particularly if this war thing is over. So fundamentally, we're looking ahead for the, the next big event. What do you think about uh, Jim Lauterbach's comment that this just seems to be one big beta version of, of, uh, of XP? Well, I mean, I understand his point. The, the reality here is that for each of the preceding products, a lot of the problems with the products were never captured, and as a result, the follow-on products didn't correct those problems. With this product, it is actually capturing those issues, and so invariably, as these products go through their development cycle, they are going to get a lot better than they have in the past. So I think this is actually one of the most important and perhaps hidden features of this particular offering. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. We're going to come back to you in a little bit. Right now, why don't we go back to New York where the rollout is continuing. When last we checked in, it was Regis Philbin. They're, they're still there. Let's listen in. What I want to talk about is using communications to make existing scenarios better. The folks from McAfee are experts at protecting your PC against viruses. And they've done a, a version of their application specific to Windows XP. And one of the things that they have done is taken advantage of this communications technology to be able to notify people when an important virus event is happening. So they can actually send out an alert, and it'll pop up on your screen just like that to tell you if you need to be aware about oh, a particular virus. Okay. So that's one example. Another example, uh, Verizon, actually the largest phone company in the US, um, they're doing work with Windows Messenger to make using your phone actually work a little bit better through the power of the PC. So here I've gone to a Verizon tab in Messenger, and I can see whether I have any voicemail. I can see whether there's caller ID for me. And one cool thing that they can do is they can tell you if you're getting a phone call at a place you're not. So if I'm at work and my phone rings at home, they can notify me with a pop-up telling me that I've just received a call at home. And in fact, I can even transfer the call from home to work or check my voicemail, and the PC makes it easy for people wow. to find those kinds of features. Okay? Um, another thing that folks are doing with this, there's this company called CNM, and they do work with phones, and what they've tried to do is use Windows Messenger to help connect people over phones. So what I'm going to do, actually, is select a bunch of my contacts here. Now, I won't select quite all of them. Um, I'm going to add them to the CNM application, and I can do lots of stuff with these people. But what I'm going to do, actually, is start a conference call. I'm going to use my PC to start a conference call. And right now, the CNM network is setting up a conference call. It just takes it a minute, and then it's going to dial all these people's phones. And if all of them? It's going to dial all these phones and put them together in a conference call. Now, sometimes the cell network takes a little while. In fact, there are the phones, and uh, we have a phone here for you. because We put you on the conference call. And out there in the audience, we have some folks who have cell phones that we've invited into this conference call. You can go ahead and answer that. I don't know how. How do I do you that? Just uh, the green button answers the phone. And there Hello. And you're on the conference call. We're not going to spend time in the conference call. Um, you get the idea. If I wanted no, to I want to be a part of the conference. <laughs> if I wanted to have this conference call and if someone was being a pain and I wanted to boot them out, I could select them. You see here in the app. And I could That's mute me. them. Yeah. No offense. I didn't mean to, I wasn't talking about you, necessarily. Um, I can chat with people while yeah. I'm having the conference call. So this really makes communication easier. And the nice thing about it is if you use Windows Messenger and you have a bunch of buddies, they're already ready and available for you to set up conference calls and do lots of other things with. So you guys have joined everything. Every year you get a little closer to joining everything. Together. We're trying to get all these yeah. devices and applications to work together mm -hmm. in a way that people can get things done and then allow all these other companies to create great new services and okay. features for their customers. The last thing we have to show, is, this is an application from FYE. FYE is a large retailer in the US. They sell music and video. And they've created an application for Windows XP that pulls together media and communications to create a community around people buying music and videos. So I want you to imagine that I uh, recently visited an FYE store. And if I have one of these little FYE frequent buyer cards, they'll scan it in when I buy a CD. Uh, so imagine I just bought this Everclear CD at a store. And then when I log on to my PC, I can go to their application, click on, right here it says these are albums that I recently bought. Mm -hmm. I can click on this album and literally from any PC, click on 
listen to the music and be able to listen to my music wherever I am. So FYE is working with the record companies to make this kind of music, be able to distribute music to wherever you are on a PC, a reality today. That's one of the things that it'll do. It'll let you get your music anywhere. Another thing that it does is it creates a community around your friends and your family, the people who are your buddies. So you see right here in the FYE program, I have my buddies. I can see which ones are online. I can send them an instant message. I could conference with them and see it right here. But the other thing that I can do is I can tell which of my buddies have what albums. So in this example, my sister, Nancy, actually owns this album. And in fact, I heard it at her house, and that's what made me decide to go out and buy it. And if I want, I can share the list of music that I bought from FYE and have my buddies share that with me. So here it's telling me that my friend Chris Dangler has shared his music collection. So what I can do is go over here, load up Chris's collection, which means the list of music that he's purchased, and I can and try bring to, it to your computer. Well, I can look at the music that he's bought and see whether that gives me ideas for music that I might want to buy myself. Uh -huh. So I can see here, you know, Chris is into Sting, Everclear, so that might give me an idea of what to mm -hmm. buy. And finally, maybe I'll remember that uh, Chris's birthday is coming up. I can see his wish list, navigate to something like the Shrek video, and if I want to preview it, I can just click on that, uh, click show trailer, and the FYE servers will download the, the content in a secure way so that I could view a trailer for a video right on my PC. You know, it just boggles the mind. It really does. So that is, gives you an example of how the platform capabilities allow other companies to create lots of great solutions mm -hmm. and deliver them to people from media to communications and so on. So that's about it. So we should wrap up. And, and actually, I expect Bill will be back here somewhere. Where do you think he is? I think he's probably on his way back to the theater. Um, are you feeling like this here is all going to work? Yeah, here's you? Bill Gates, everybody. Look, he came back safe and sound. Yeah, right out there. Huh. So, Regis, how, how did you like Windows XP? Well, I got to tell you, uh, I learned a lot. And you know what I learned most of all? That on Sunday night, he and his wife like to sit on the couch. And play <laughs> no, I learned a bunch of stuff here, Bill, but I... <laughs> It really, <laughs> it really knocks you out. Uh, I guess the people who are more familiar with it are, are really impressed, and I am too, but I must tell you, there's a lot to learn, but it's easier this time to learn it. You, you made bet. it a lot easier, and that's well, the key for me, sim simplicity. All right, well, you've done a great job with the product launch. I wanted you to have, uh, as a chief product launcher, one of these jackets. Oh, how nice. Moment. All Sorry. right, fine. Look at this. I'm proud to be a part of it. Thank All you, right. Joe, for everything. Thanks, for your help. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Joe. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks. Look what I got, Joe. Well, during the demonstrations, I hope you got a sense of the breadth of partners that we're working with. In every one of those, you had many companies with new software, new services. Uh, many of those are uh, partners that we've had for many years. Uh, many of them, like Verizon, FYE, Nikon, are people that are, are new partners to Microsoft. And when you build a platform like this, you've got to reach out. We've been doing that uh, before the launch of the product. We're going to keep doing that um, because that's going to be uh, very key to this, the success that comes together here. So more partners than uh, easily fit on one slide, uh, but a lot that goes into that. At Microsoft, of course, we are building uh, some key products that show off Windows XP. Uh, Office XP, uh, perhaps the most important one of those, was built uh, assuming Windows XP would come along, and it, it uh, shows it off quite well. We'll also have a new release of our online client, uh, MSN version 7, with rich photo connections, rich communication connections, and a, a national broadband offering uh, that, that uh, is shipping at the same time as Windows XP and, of course, was designed to take full advantage of it. So all these things on top of Windows really just extend the experience. Where are we in terms of momentum? Well, in business, uh, we've got a lot of major businesses that have moved even faster than we expected uh, to get out there with deployments. Wells Fargo, Citigroup, BMW, Reed Elsevier, Anil, uh, Commonwealth Bank, worldwide, uh, people are seeing the reliability having a, a quick payback for them, and so they're fitting it in to their upgrade cycle. That continuous improvement is very important to them. Uh, from consumers, uh, we have uh, the most pre-orders ever on this, uh, 100,000. Uh, so those are, are huge numbers, actually more than twice 
what we have with Windows 95. Um, if you go into a store to buy a PC today, uh, you'll see that uh, those PCs overwhelmingly have XP. In fact, there are over 5 million PCs worldwide sitting in stores ready to go with XP. So very key to this uh, selling season that, that, that's coming along. Uh, so certainly since Windows 95, there's never been anything like it. We've learned a lot since then, and we're launching off of a, a much uh, bigger industry, a much bigger installed base uh, than ever before. And we think that that uh, will, will drive things uh, forward in a big way. So what kind of things can you expect to see when you go into those stores? Well, uh, each retailer will be creative in their own way about packaging neat new things uh, because of the extra traffic they're going to have. Uh, you'll see that uh, many of them, particularly with the Pro Edition, are including RAM. And I was amazed to see that uh, you can get 128, 128 megabytes of free RAM or even more in many of these offers. Uh, one of our partners in the 802.11 world, Wayport, is saying that all their connections be free for XP users uh, all over the next three months. And then the variety of deals, uh, software add-ons, peripheral add-ons, digital cameras, uh, all, all the things that show off why uh, we, we needed this new platform, uh, the retailers have put neat things together that go around that. Uh, the, the consumer version is a $99 upgrade. And that's traditionally what we've done. Uh, the professional version is a $199 upgrade. Again, the same as we've done in the past, despite the, the incredible uh, new capabilities that we've got here. So we want to make it easy to move up uh, to this new level, and uh, the retailers are, are helping us to do that. So there's a lot of progress that starts with Windows XP. Uh, over this holiday, if you take all the different systems and peripherals, uh, the total uh, size, the total se selling, worldwide will be over 100 billion. Uh, the product fits into the need to re-energize sales, uh, fits into the need to have this overall ecosystem uh, uh, tackle the new scenarios, uh, whether it's cameras or DVD, or all the different things you've, you've seen. Uh, and it's an opportunity to drive uh, communications things uh, up to a whole new level. So a lot of new beginnings here. Uh, as the computer industry moves into a phase, assuming the, the much richer platform. As part of the, the launch here today, uh, you know, we are not only celebrating the product, uh, but we're celebrating uh, what's gone on uh, in the, the spirit of New York City, the resilience of this city. And so as part of the launch, we have a free uh, Sting concert uh, that's taking place uh, today. It's a free concert for everybody to uh, go and be a part of that. And I understand uh, Sting is already here and warming up. Uh, let's look and uh, see if he looks like he's, he's almost ready. Good morning, everybody. This is Sting here. I trust everything is going well at the launch. The band and I are uh, preparing ourselves for the show at 1 o'clock, so please come over and have a great time. See you later. <laughs> So we're very excited. We're focused on providing innovations in software, um, driving the, the continuous improvement uh, for a, a much better experience. And there's a lot going on here that, that speaks to this decade and what's going to happen in this de decade. Uh, we can kind of sum it up in terms of, of saying, yes, you can. Neat new things, uh, better ways of working together driving the industry to, to help with productivity throughout all sectors of the economy. So it was wonderful to have you here today. We've had a lot of fun with this launch. Uh, it, it's fantastic. And please come celebrate with us at, at Bryant Park. Thank you. And there you have it. We have been bringing you live coverage of Bill Gates speaking at the official launch of Windows XP. Uh, we've been hearing about it for months and months and months, and it is finally here. Let's go to Andrew Hahn. He is in Times Square in New York. Andrew, you with us? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Steve? Good, thank you. What do you think? 
Oh, you know, it's a lot of hype. I, I, you know, I have to admit that, that, you know, the lab, I think that James had mentioned this earlier, we've been testing this thing for a long time, both RC1, 2, and the gold code. Um, you know, one thing we've noticed, and uh, I think that, you know, James is saying this a little bit, uh, there's not much IT here. Uh, we also heard a little earlier in the, in the year, in, in May and in April, um, that, uh, when, that Microsoft was going to be coming up with a 64-bit version of Windows XP and a server version of Windows XP, which is also 64-bit. It was, was supposed to launch today. That never happened. At least I never heard of any of it. Uh, so that was interesting. Another thing is, is that I've heard from a lot of people, some IT people, some analysts, saying things like, you know what, I, if you have Windows 2000, what is the real benefit of going to XP? I mean, it's, it's really, it's a big question, I think, in a lot of people's minds. It really is a consumer-focused event. So that's really good. Uh, apparently, wireless is going to save the world. You know, I love wireless like everybody else, but boy, they're really hitting on that. They're hitting on the video and the audio uh, aspects of it. Uh, but, you know, I think like Jim, I'm wondering how many people are going to buy. Uh, I talked to some people at CompUSA last night when they were buying it. They were buying those printers and other things. There was only like five or six people that were buying XP that I talked to, and a lot of them were just like, well, I'm just upgrading. It seems like a good thing. I'll do it. You know, we think it's a good operating system, but it's just a lot of hype in New York. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. Well, we're going to go to Rob Enderley from the Giga Information Group. He's here in the studio with us, and uh, Andrew calls it a lot of hype, Rob. Um, the question we've been trying to answer, why XP? Well, I, for a lot of reasons, XP is the, is the point release of Windows 2000. Typically, if you look at a corporate buyer, they don't like to buy the first release of anything. They really want to buy the point release, and this is the point release of that platform. For the consumer, consumers have been locked down on the 9X code base, which was a hybrid between kind of the next generation of product and the previous generation of product, and it was one of the most problematic products as a result. So it kind of moves you out of, out of the 80s and now moves you into the next decade of technology, kind of gets folks living in today's world, enhanced security, the rest of it, and able to deal with the kinds of threats and applications they're likely to deal with in the future. So that's probably the, the major reasons why XP. Andrew pointed out that, uh, as he put it, uh, wireless is apparently going to save the world. It's, it's true that XP is putting a lot of faith in, in, in networking, mobility, that kind of thing. Will wireless save the world, Rob? Well, we're really waiting for an awful lot of in infrastructure to be built. Remember, right, the, right. a lot of the problem with wireless is being able to go into that Starbucks and be able to do your Internet stuff. And remember, we just had a wireless failure, which set Starbucks back a bit. And there's still not a lot of places where you're able to go and actually make that wireless connection. But once that wireless infrastructure is there, then it does give you another reason to have a laptop computer. It gives you another reason to have this operating system because it's vastly better than, the, than its predecessors when it comes to wireless connectivity. Mm -hmm. And that certainly could help drive the market. Toward the end there, uh, Bill Gates was talking about some of the uh, offers that retailers are going to be bringing out, rolling out to, to uh, kind of continue the hype with, with XP. And uh, some retailers are actually going to be offering free RAM with the operating system. And you were saying you're going to need free RAM. Well, for the most part, yeah, this, this system runs on 256 megabytes and better reasonably well. On anything less than that, it gets painful. In fact, on 64 megabytes, it, it is incredibly uh, painful. So it, a 256 megabyte machine is kind of the requirement. And remember, memory is incredibly cheap. Even RAM bus memory, which mm -hmm. is the most expensive, has dropped dramatically over the last few months. Mm -hmm. So that be, even if you weren't going to do uh, Windows XP, uh, adding memory right now is probably a good idea. But the fact remains, it's not, for many of us, it's not simply a question of, of uh, you know, installing a new operating system. We've got to replace some hardware. Oh, absolutely. Uh, for instance, one of, the, one of the things we were monitoring is ATI, old ATI cards, which was at one time the dominant provider of video card technology. Right now, those drivers aren't coming out, and ATI is basically saying we're probably not going to do them because much of this stuff is obsolete. Um, for those folks, they will have to replace those cards because you really can't use a computer if your video card doesn't work. Right. So yes, for a certain number of folks, anybody that has a machine that's 18 months or older probably are gonna, has a chance of running into some issues, particularly if that vendor has gone under or if they've got components from third parties that are no longer around. Okay. Speaking, speaking of infrastructure, um, do you think uh, what effect do you think the XP operating system will make on uh, hardware vendors in terms of the way they design their, uh, their hardware? For, for instance, uh, 1394 integration, uh, wireless integration. Is this really going to shape the way computers of the future are going to look like? Well, certainly it helps. I mean, we already saw before XP came out, we saw the vendors like Toshiba and even Compaq building wireless mm -hmm. into their systems, IBM and, and Dell as well. Um, certainly as this, as this product runs forward, particularly by the, because it can update itself dynamically, they can more, much more readily add technology. And some of the things that have held back products in the past is they've been really worried about bringing it in because the corporate market has been very slow to move to that new technology. Because this can be updated more readily, at least I think the hardware vendors believe they can jump on the technology bandwagon more aggressively and move that market more quickly. All right, we want to bring in David Kirkpatrick. He is the senior editor of Internet and Technology with Fortune magazine. David, 
You've been hey. listening to what we've been talking about. Any comments? Uh, well, first of all, I'd really like to disagree with Andrew. I think it's way overstatement to call this just a lot of hype. That's just plain not true. This is a pretty significant advancement of a very important technology that the whole world relies upon. And in some ways, I think I, I kind of agree with Craig Barrett, who was talking about just the astonishing sophistication of what's being achieved here. And uh, so, so I, I, don't, I don't think that this is like earth shaking in the sense that PC makers are going to suddenly see a huge uptick in sales. I don't think it's earth shaking in the sense that it, it totally changes the computing experience. But I do think it's a very important incremental movement forward. And, and that I do appreciate. And I think many, many users will appreciate it. Uh, David, so you saw today exactly what you were expecting to see from this. Well, more or less. I, I, you know, I was talking to uh, Barrett last night, and uh, one of the things that, that he really said is that you know, Moore's Law does not, uh, recessions don't stop Moore's Law. Recessions don't stop Metcalfe's Law. And I think that's a really important thing for Microsoft to be demonstrating right now because there is such a negative attitude about technology in so many places right now, about not just the internet, but about technology generally. I think it's astonishing um, because technology companies and technology stocks have been performing poorly, there's sort of a prevailing view that tech doesn't matter. Now, obviously, we know that's crazy. But I think it's very important for major advances to keep happening. And this is a major advance. And it shows that the companies that are really serious, and Microsoft, of course, is very serious, uh, will keep advancing their technology resolutely, come rain or come shine. And this will eventually prove to be a great boon for the world. And we will see. Thank you very much, David. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Shack is the place people go for specialty batteries for all kinds of things. Choose from over a thousand batteries. Radio Shack has more power. Radio Shack. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research, listen to real customers, then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? of your digital world. In today's cover story, a major milestone in the history of Microsoft as the company officially launches Windows XP. Windows XP represents what some say is the best operating system ever. It is the first step toward what Bill Gates calls the holy grail of distributed computing. Microsoft calls it .NET. We begin our cover story with Matt Markovich in Seattle and a look at how XP will fit into Microsoft's puzzle. There we go. Ready? Ready and approved. In Microsoft's view of the world, its XP operating system is a great breakthrough. Stable, robust, and full of new features. Windows XP is the best release of Windows ever. But both competitors and observers concerned about the future of how products and services will be delivered on the Internet say XP is a Trojan horse. Lots of features loaded inside the operating system, delivered in an anti-competitive manner, 
intended to capture huge new markets for Microsoft. This has profound implications for consumer choice, is that, is that with XP, we will find consumer choices further extinguished than they already are. Whatever spin you put on XP's new features, such as the ambitious new media player and digital photo developing, it's clear that Microsoft sees such offerings as a stepping stone to the next stage of its business. Michael Cherry spent 10 years on the Windows development team and is now a consultant. XP is going to be the key operating system for Microsoft as they move forward, particularly into their .NET vision. Great. She sent me her schedule. Reply. .NET is Microsoft's Sandra, bet the farm strategy for its future, a future of web services, information, transactions, and applications available on any device at any time, anywhere, and eventually for a fee. I, I really don't think we can measure it by the millions of lines of code, but rather by the kinds of things people are going to be able to get done and the opportunity it represents for our industry. The opportunity Gates sees is giving consumers a taste of what .NET is all about. When people understand, I think they'll see Windows XP really as a great innovation for the industry, for the end user, and for Microsoft. XP is the first operating system to include key elements of Microsoft's .NET innovations, features such as .NET My Services, formerly called Hailstorm. It's Microsoft's seamless and all-encompassing web services architecture. So now Microsoft has a common operating system across a wide base of devices, all of which hold the plumbing, the foundation work on which they can build the .NET framework and the .NET services. If Microsoft can convert consumers to XP and its built-in services, analysts say online services like AOL should watch out. Instead of subscribing to an online service like AOL, .NET users would simply sign up for Microsoft's Passport Authentication Service, the sign-on-once, sign-on-everywhere approach, to access web services like music downloads, banking, calendars, office applications. Almost anything you could do now would be a web service. Although XP is just a step toward realizing that vision, the operating system includes technology to start this process. In fact, they're even working on a version of Windows XP uh, that they call XP Embedded that can go into smart devices that aren't the typical laptops. So it could go into uh, PDAs, it could go into set-top boxes. Microsoft is now doing a hard sell to convince developers to create applications using .NET. Having elements of .NET in XP is part of that hard sell, and analysts say we should expect more .NET friendly elements from future Microsoft operating systems. The way that they tend to develop is they work on a whole bunch of features, and then at some point they'll decide, well, these features are sort of in this release, and we'll start stabilizing, and we'll get ready to ship. Microsoft is already thinking of its next OS shipping date, codename Longhorn, which could be sometime in 2003. Matt Markovich for Tech Live. It will be several years and several generations of operating systems before any of us will realize the full impact of .NET, but in order for it to work, Microsoft is spending millions of dollars to convince developers to make applications for .NET. If Microsoft can't do this, .NET is in serious jeopardy. Well, will the new operating system meet all the high expectations? Joining us today to discuss that is Alex Salkiever, technology editor for Business Week Online. He's coming to us live from New York. Hi, Alex. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Chris. Let's start with your impressions from today's launch. What did you think? Uh, you know, Microsoft launches, they're always splashy. They're always a lot of show. I never really take too much home from the launches until I see what happens five, six, seven you know, months down the road. So the launch, it's a, lot, it's a lot of show. It's great, but you know, sh let's see what happens later. What do you think is going to happen? This obviously isn't the best environment. You have a country uh, that's got terrorism on its mind. You have consumers that aren't willing to open up their pocketbooks. You have uh, businesses that have IT spending frozen. Is Microsoft being overly optimistic? They have to be overly optimistic. I think they are, yes, but they, this is what they have to say because they need to sell this product. But the reality is this is possibly the worst environment they ever could have imagined to try to launch XP in. So when you talk to the big computer companies, PC makers, retailers, they're all saying, well, we're expecting a slow build. What that translates into is they'll see sales probably pretty slow at least this quarter through Christmas and possibly slow into early part of next year. And they will really pick up strength maybe later on and sometime in 2002. You said you're not really taking too much stock in the hype. One of our guys in New York said he didn't think too many people were watching either. What do you think? 
you know, I don't think people care anymore because this is just not something that's that important. I mean, it's important in terms of it's a launch of a very big software system, but October 25th, it's just another day. Microsoft has been shipping XP software to, uh, De I mean, Dell's been shipping XP boxes, Gateway, uh, you can buy XP boxes from Sony, a lot of other places. So this isn't like, this is really a launch. It's sort of a post-launch almost. I was looking at some Gartner research and they don't think that XP will surpass the previous OSs for another two years. Are you in agreement with that? I think so, because there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, Windows 2000 is very close to Windows XP. At least Windows 2000 is a business um, operating system. And so companies that have already stall installed Windows 2000, they don't have a whole lot of impetus to install Windows XP for the foreseeable future. Now, consumers could go ahead and buy it because it is a definite improvement, but consumers are really being slow right now, and that's going to increase over the next you know, foreseeable future as the economy continues to slow down or as it just sort of stagnates. You know, buying a PC is not a priority right now. One of the positive things that we're hearing about XP is that it's more stable than its predecessors. Do you think that's enough to get people to buy the upgrade? Um, in and of itself, no. But as we go forward and more is required of computers and people expect more, I think you'll really start to see that stability come into play and people will want it specifically because, yes, it's more stable. Right now, I'm not sure they're that satisfied with Windows 98 or Windows ME. Let's talk about licensing because you've said that Microsoft is also going to see a lot of backlash from this new licensing. What do you think there? They're already seeing a lot of backlash. I mean, they've made three changes already to their licensing policies to lighten things up a little bit. They've also made changes in how strict they're going to apply what's called product activation, which is where you have to punch in a code into your machine and connect online or call Microsoft over the phone to get XP to work on your desktop. Um, they really were trying to tighten up what they saw, thought was piracy, and it is, you know, there are unauthorized users on Windows systems, XP without a doubt, but I think they may have tightened it so much that people are going to be a little uncomfortable, and especially the businesses which feel like they have to upgrade XP on Microsoft's timetable and not on their own. That really rankles IT managers because they don't like anyone to tell them when to install something on their fleets of PCs. So do you think they're going to see a long-term effect? Are they making a big mistake with the new licensing procedures? Um, I would say yes. I mean, I think they should definitely should have consulted more IT managers before they rolled out with what they're doing right now. Now, on the other hand, I can't understand why they're trying to move to a subscription model almost where companies pay every year. I mean, it's more steady revenue for Microsoft, but it might be an issue they're thinking too much about what's good for Microsoft and not enough about what's good for their customers. All right. Thank you for your time today, Alex. Most welcome. Alex Hawkeever is technology editor for Business Week Online. When we come back, we'll head over to the Tech Live Labs where our analysts are standing by to give us the results of their test on the new operating system. That's coming up when Tech Live continues. Moo. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th. So stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. RCA Digital Home Theater from Radio Shack. There's just one thing that's missing. A cup holder. Enhance your home theater system with the amazing digital picture and sound quality of an RCA single or five-disc DVD player. Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. TV labs have been preparing for this day for months, combing through every feature of XP and continually keeping us up to date on their findings. 
We're joined now by James Kim, Robert Heron, Roy Santos, and Brett Larson with their full final review of XP. Hey, guys. Hey, you got a bunch of lab rats here. We'll be referring back to the keynote throughout the day. There are a few things we agree and disagree with that came out of Microsoft's demos. But first off, though, let's look at how we rate operating systems and show you our overall star ratings of the complete systems. Now, first of all, for our XP systems test, we rate for stability, performance, and compatibility. Now, on the experience side of things, upgrade, installations, uh, usability, interface, and of course, value. Now, we reviewed each of these in XP. Here are the results of our star rating reviews. First of all, in stability, we give it a five out of five stars. It's very stable here. Performance, a three out of five stars. Compatibility, a three out of five stars, and that could probably increase. Uh, on the other features, upgrade and installation, we give it a four. Uh, on overall features, a four. A value, a three. Usability, a five out of five stars. And interface, a four out of four stars. Now, we, um, we're joined here by a bunch of lab rats, Roy, uh, Robert, Brett. We've done a lot of uh, testing with XP. We use it on our own systems out there. Uh, what do you think about all this stuff? Uh, it's a pretty good performer. It, it definitely shines in that element. Uh, of all the versions of Windows that I've seen, it's by far the most stable. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've been running it at home for a couple of weeks, and it, it is relatively solid. Uh, I don't like the fact that I've been running it at home for a couple of weeks, and I already have a computer virus on my machine. But um, I guess that's just sort of par for the course when you're running Windows. Right. Now, um, you're a Mac user. Uh, what right. do you think about the interface? I think the interface is horrid. I think the, uh, the, the obvious ripoff of OS X and that sort of let's make everything shiny and bubbly if they were going to rip it off, they should have done it correctly, mm -hmm. and they should have done it to look almost exactly like the Mac OS, kind of like they did with Windows 95. They made Windows 95 look a lot like Mac OS 8 and Mac OS 7 before that. With Windows XP, I like the interface. It's cleaner, but it's still they they're still it's kind of like they're 90% there. There's still a lot more they could do to make it more simple. Just putting a big red X at the top corner of my screen doesn't really make me say. Okay, oh, Roy, easy. what's your opinion of the OS? Um, I think it's a really great OS, um, and you know it's really stable. I, you know, I'm a Windows user. I like the interface a lot. So it's it really works for me. And the task-based um, things that you can do, for example, when you open a folder, and there's a lot of things on the left side that you can do. And uh, you know, the the clear type also is uh, for those who don't know it. It's the uh, the way you can make the font sharper, especially in LCD screens. It's, it's a really very nice. modern operating system. We saw um, in the uh, the keynote, we saw how they. Uh, the boot up time was pretty pretty quick. That was a little misleading. That was actually a wake time, I believe, a couple it seconds. Was. But it still takes, you know, Robert, you can attest to this. It takes a very much shorter time to actually boot up the machine. It really depends on the hardware on the motherboard itself, really. The chips that it has to support the increased boot speeds. But even on traditional systems, uh, systems we have right now, the boot time is a little bit quicker. We're seeing about 45, about 40, 45 seconds to, from the point you push the button to the point you're actually able to use the system. So and that's that's nice. So is XP a better operating system than 98 ME, et cetera, in terms oh. of just pure performance? Pure performance, ooh, that's a tough call. Uh, I think when you factor in the stability fact, uh, take that into account as well, yes, it's a much better operating system. And as we earlier, we were talking about driver issue okay. support. Uh, XP, if you go to Microsoft's Windows Update right now, there's about 17 megs of updates. That include everything from uh, every compatibility issue that they found since the August initial release up until today, along with various driver support, or various new drivers that are available. I haven't checked Sound Blaster's site. Arguably the most uh, widely used sound right. card out there doesn't have an XP driver yet. That's a little shaky to me. So hopefully will, they'll have something else. It really seems overall, though, that this, this operating system is in pretty good shape on launch. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, operating systems launch. And <laughs> OS X for, is yeah, a perfect it, example of an perfect, OS that perfect example. launched that should have just been a beta. Right. And uh, in terms of like uh, just general performance uh, usability, I think overall we, we all like it. We Overall, I think we give this a four out of five stars. We'll be back after this break with more of our in-depth look at Windows XP. Stay with us. Small business is all about pursuing a dream, making your mark, finding new ways to get things done. Sprint understands, and they have some new ways to help your business succeed, like data services backed by guarantees. They call it the Sprint Small Business Promise. It says that their data services will be among the most reliable in the business. So reliable, in fact, that if the Sprint network goes down, even for a minute, you'll get three days of service free. 
guaranteed. In short, it says that Sprint will be there for you 24-7 with data services designed specifically for small business and backed by unsurpassed guarantees. For your guarantees, call 1-800-786-5321. Do it by December 31st and they'll throw in a Cisco router worth $3,400. So go on, invent a new product, change an entire industry, shake up the world. Just know that Sprint has you covered. Guaranteed. Businesses worldwide are willing to pay top salaries for IT pros with the right certifications. Take advantage of this job explosion with Smart Certify. Smart Certify's award-winning certification courses combine the convenience of computer-based training with the personalization of certified online instructors. From introductory PC repair courses to high-level certification training like MCSE, Linux, Cisco, and A+. Smart Certify gives you the skills you need to excel in the IT industry. I felt really comfortable with choosing Smart Certified's MCSE course, not only because it looked like a terrific course, but also because they guaranteed I would get certified after using it. There was no risk. Smart Certify stands behind their training methods 100%. In fact, if you don't get certified after using our course, you get your money back. Ask for details. Call toll-free 1-877-TRAINING today to find out about our limited discount offers or try one of our courses free at www.smartcertification.com. I'm James Kim with a bunch of lab rats here. Before the break, we were discussing the way we test XP systems and review the OS. Now, one thing that they actually brought up and showed off during the keynote was booting up your XP machine. We found a little discrepancy in this demo, and what we found in our labs, first, take a first look at their demo. And we thought it would be a great way to start out with Regis by letting him turn the PC on. He could start learning, and all of you could see just how fast Windows XP is. So doesn't go ahead. say on. It's got a little symbol, but that's the button, right? Yep, there you go. Here Give you it go. a push. And that's it? It's on? That's it. And there's it's Windows It's on. X okay. <laughs> now, first of all, we are convinced that that was not a boot up, but a, actually a sleep resume. Boot up does take, you know, it can take 20, 25 seconds, but in this case, you know, that two or three second boot up was obviously uh, rigged as a wake up setup. Right. Um, we, we are running a Dell, La they were running a Dell Latitude C600. It's a one gig P3 that sells with 512 megabytes RAM. Now we tested boot times and sleep resumes. Let's take a look at our test results. Now we took the past three Windows operating systems, 98, 2000, and ME, using a P4 1.3 gigahertz system with 128 megabytes of RAM. And we conducted boot up and sleep resume time testing we did the same thing with XP. Here are the, here are the results right here. Now, as you can see, the uh, XP is obviously faster in most of the instances here. Um, in resume times, it's a little it's a little slower, I would say. Hmm. How do you feel in just general use? I think it's mainly a lot of problems 98 users, in particular myself, had with networking. Uh, the fact that detecting network hardware can take more of the time than actually the boot process itself does. It hangs detecting a piece of network hardware. So with XP, I'm noticing that at least it's getting through that initialization and but, knowing but, what's there. But these are quicker. fairly clean systems that we're running, exp testing XP and all the other operating systems. Yeah, that's the other what happens too. when you load up a bunch of uh, drivers, uh, a lot of different hardware, things like that? As you fill it up, it's going to become more convoluted, and eventually it, it will start to slow down over time. And if you install a bad application, no matter what it is, be it a virus or just a rogue program or something you're just not sure of, and it, it's going to start doing funny things like to your office, system. Right? Like Office. Well, I also <laughs> wanted to, <laughs> well, let's point out again, but go back, to go back to that uh, start, uh, the resume rather than a boot up. Uh, most people uh, turn off their computers. They don't, they don't uh, let it go and then just have it go to sleep, unlike they had the laptop going. Most people will shut down their computer, and then when they use it again next, they will uh, well, do a boot up. I think the prime user, uh, user base here, though, is the one that's online, connected to an always-on broadband connection. I do myself. I don't restart my system uh, for mm -hmm. days. Right. And so far, XP has been performing pretty well, even after days of use right. of several different multitasking applications. Right. I don't. I don't either. But um, you know, with XP, because it's so much more stable, there may be a lot more people leaving their PCs on. I mean, that's that's a real possibility. And I mean, in fact, I think uh, Microsoft is counting on that because a lot of their .NET services are going to come through with people having their their devices on all the time and PCs on all the time. 
So what do you guys think about um, the system requirements? We talked, we've talked about this for a while now. Um, Microsoft recommends, you know, I think they say that it can run on 64 megabytes of RAM Ooh. with a P2 system. No. Uh, that's really not the case here, is it? No. It can run on that. No, there's no doubt. I mean, we tried it and it works, mm -hmm. but if you really want to get the best experience out of this operating system, don't kid yourself. Go out and get an expensive, not an expensive processor, but something at least seven, 800 megahertz or faster. Mm -hmm. 256 megs of RAM or more. RAM is cheap. RAM, RAM is dirt. Right. I, just, I filled every free. slot in my computer for well under 100 bucks. So it's like, you know, you can fill your, that's not the issue anymore. Uh, once you get past the processor and the RAM, the operating system of your choice, and XP right now will take best advantage right. of that hardware. A couple of things is, you know, if you use, uh, if you're going to do a lot of the switching, the user switching, for example, you are going to need a lot of RAM. So if you have several users, Definitely. because every user will take at least 64 mm -hmm. megs of RAM for, you know, for the applications to be stable whenever you switch. Also, if you're going to use a lot of graphics or okay. a lot of video editing, perhaps that's, you know. And the OS behaves different. differently with different amounts of RAM. Correct. If you have 64 or 128 megs of RAM, the right. system actually dynamically readjusts itself to say, okay, you've got a slightly slower system. We're going to turn off some of the candy features, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. here you go. And it, yeah. it still functions the same. But yeah. Thanks a lot, Robert. Sure. Lab rats, thank you very much. We've got a full review on techlive.com. We'll be back in a second. Mwahaha! <laughs> it's that spooky time of year, and Extended Play joins in with a horror game extravaganza. Friday at 9, 8 Central, only on Tech Prime. Big match coming up. Probably gonna be needing a caddy. Bag of Vans, the name. What I'm talking about is a game. The greatest game there is. Will Smith, Matt Damon, Charlize Theron. I can't do this. Yes, you can. The Legend. Bagger Vance. This isn't your shot, Bagger. No, nope. it's yours. Call to order the Total Choice HBO package for only $18 more a month on Direct TV. The Rose Bowl holds 95,985 people. This January 3rd, every seat will be filled. A national champion will be crowned. And two of those seats could be yours. Subscribe to ESPN Game Plan by October 31st, and you'll qualify for a chance to win a trip for two to college football's national championship game in Pasadena. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS and order now. It's ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. Washington today, the Senate is nearing a vote on anti-terrorism legislation. The anti-terrorism bill will give law enforcement officials more surveillance power to track internet and email use. Tech Live's Peter Barnes has more for us now from our DC Bureau. Hello, Peter. Yeah, hi guys. This isn't Windows XP, so <laughs> I'll give you a quick update on the the world does continue to, to uh, here and uh, work continues here in Washington, at least on other issues. But uh, yeah, the House passed this anti-terrorism legislation yesterday, and the Senate is taking it up today. And I'll boldly predict that sometime in the next hour here. Uh, the Senate will overwhelmingly approve it, maybe something like 99 to 1 or uh, anyway in the 90s to something or other. Uh, and uh, it's uh, going to probably end up on the president's desk by tomorrow and we'll uh, have, see a si signing ceremony there. However, uh, the bill is not sailing through without some uh, criticism. Uh, Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin, highly critical of some of the electronic surveillance provisions of the bill, uh, saying that, uh, that the bill does in some cases cross the line in electronic surveillance. Another very troubling provision has to do with the effort to combat computer crime. And I want to help the effort to stop computer crime. The bill allows law enforcement to monitor a computer with the permission of its owner or operator without the need to get a warrant or show probable cause. And I want to tell you, Madam President, because I've been at pains to point out things that I can support in this bill. I think that power is fine in a case of a so-called denial of service attack. What is that? That's, that's plain old computer hacking. You bet. We need to be able to get at that kind of crime. A computer owner should be able to give the police permission to monitor communications coming from what amounts to a trespasser on the computer, a real trespasser. But we tried to point this out on the floor as calmly and as constructively as possible. As drafted in the bill, 
provision might permit an employer to give permission to the police to monitor the emails of an employee who has used her computer at work to shop for Christmas gifts. She violated the rules of her employer in terms of personal use of the computer. Or someone who uses a computer at a library or at a school and happens to go to a gambling or pornography site in violation of the internet, internet use policies of the library or the university might also be subjected to government surveillance without probable cause and without any time limit at all. With this one provision, Fourth Amendment protections are potentially eliminated for a broad spectrum of electronic communications. And that is just one of the criticisms of this bill, and that is why there is a four-year sunset provision for some of these more controversial uh, provisions uh, to give uh, Congress uh, some opportunity to see how this all works and then go back and revisit it four years from now and at least in the meantime give the president the power uh, to and, and investigators the power to uh, try and uh, make sure that uh, we don't have another uh, September 11th attack and terrorists aren't using the internet they're communicating through uh, through the web uh, to uh, plan such attacks uh, we'll uh, wait for the vote here sometime in the next hour get you the results uh, when we get them here and uh, back to you guys in San Francisco and we will talk to you later thank you very much Peter top stories and more when Tech Live continues <laughs> your peers? Hey guys! Wrong information. One eggplant sliced thing. Need better tools? Meet your peers. Get the information you need and find the right technology for your business at Comdex Fall 2001, where buyers and sellers meet, learn, and make technology decisions. Register now at Comdex.com. The Compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-336-1416 to buy now and upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. Thinking of starting an online business but don't know where to begin? Planning to take your existing business online and don't know how? Now, the online experts at Tech TV and Q Publishing, the leader in computer education, have created the ultimate resource guide. Introducing Starting an Online Business. Visit your favorite bookseller or log on to techtv.com and find out how you can order this in-depth and comprehensive manual that shows you step-by-step -step how to start an online business. From deciding what to sell and how to sell it, to finding the money to fund your business, to fulfilling orders and keeping your customers happy, everything you need to know about starting an online business, written in easy-to-understand language from the experts at Tech TV. Tech TV Starting an Online Business is available online at techtv.com or your favorite bookseller. Order your copy for only $24.99 today. Part of a new line of books and videos from Tech TV and Q Publishing, the leader in computer education. Windows XP is the most powerful, fastest, most reliable operating system we have ever done. It's no 95 fanfare where enthusiasts were camped out to get their hands on the next version of the OS, but XP is still hot. The newest in Microsoft's dynasty has hit the shelves across the world from Australia to Japan, Europe to the United States. This is Tech Live special coverage from New York's Times Square as Bill Gates and crew push the start button and launch XP. A big day for Microsoft. Hello, I'm Steve Abrams. And I'm Becky Worley. Microsoft Chair Bill Gates just wrapped up his keynote at the debut party of Windows XP in New York City. Tech TV's Andrew Hahn joins us now from New York. Andrew, you there? I'm here. How are you doing? Passport is one of the most controversial parts of Windows XP. 
It's an application in which users enter a single password along with personal information, including birthday, gender, address, and phone number. Other details could include dress size, favorite colors, movie preferences, and so on. That gives users one-click access to participating passport businesses involved in e-commerce, internet banking, subscription services, and personal calendars, among others. Microsoft says it's going to make life easier. We have technology that we're deploying uh, within our, our web services, uh, product technology such as Passport, that delivers a very secure environment so that customers can feel confident about conducting business on the web. But Passport could mean taking a chance with your personal information. Although Microsoft insists all of the data it collects will remain secure, critics are skeptical. What Microsoft wants to do is suck all this information out of your PC and then sell it back to you and to the service provider and to the cell phone manufacturer and, and to all these other folks. They're going to suck out my address, my profile, my contacts, my location, my notifications, my inbox, my calendar, my documents, my application setup, my favorite websites, my wallet, my devices, my services, and my usage. Of course, McNeely is behind a competing user identity and authentication interface called the Liberty Alliance Project. But Microsoft has an advantage, since Passport is incorporated into its operating system. The question is, will the Passport privacy issue be enough of a deterrent to keep people from buying Windows XP? Bob Hirschfeld, Tech Live. As we follow the XP story, we turn now to Andrew Hahn, our lab director, who is in New York. And we're going to check in with him now. Andrew, what's the hubbub about the presentation and all that's going on? Oh, uh, you know, there's a lot of hubbub. Uh, I was saying there's lots and lots of hype, and there is a lot of hype here. Um, you know, it is a good operating system that we're looking at, uh, especially for, uh, for consumers and for users, not maybe so much for IT, since it's really an incremental upgrade for them. But definitely users are interested in it. There were big long lines at uh, CompUSA last night. We were up late watching these people buy it. It was uh, on sale Pacific Standard Time about 12, uh, about midnight. A lot of people online. They're also in line to get the Sting tickets for the Sting concert that's happening right now over in uh, Bryant Park here in New York. But, uh, you know, there is a lot of hype going on in New York. There's lots of signs everywhere saying Windows XP. Um, it's, it's a pretty interesting thing. Uh, they're working on... Uh, um, some uh, a lot of the uh, stuff for well, you know one of the things actually let me just get straight to this um, I was talking to James Kim and the guys in the lab you know we, we've been working on a lot of the benchmarking stuff and they did this earlier uh, last hour we were talking about some of the performance you know stability reliability you know overall we really find that it's a very very good operating system uh, it's based on Windows 2000 so there's already good performance even if it is incremental upgrades to performance it's still really good um, reliability is really the key here I think and stability as well. So, you know, I think that the lab is basically, we're giving it a really pretty big thumbs up for Microsoft. I think that's a good thing. Um, and here, they're really hyping it up. You know, Andrew, uh, earlier today, you also said that you thought this was a lot of hype, and there was at least one person who took exception to that, David Kirkpatrick from <laughs> Fortune Man. I, you heard him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I thought that was pretty funny, actually, because I think that as he finished, he said it's going to be a boon for, uh, for, I don't know, for the economy. I'm not sure if that's really true. I don't agree with that, actually. And I don't think that uh, mo many of the uh, CEOs do either. I just sat in the CEO uh, roundtable about two or three hours ago, and they talked about that. And nobody said this is really going to save everything. They just said, basically, you know, look, it's a multitude of experiences. We're having to think of different ways about the way PCs are used. And I think that we've all noticed that. I mean, you know, there are MP3 players. There are uh, a bunch of different products, uh, HP, Dell, Gateway, all these guys are thinking about different ways to develop PCs to add, you know, entertainment and music and all these other things that are traditionally like a, a consumer electronic devices. And I'm wondering, actually, for Microsoft, and if we get a chance, we want to ask him about this. Uh, I want to ask Bill Gates about this. You know, is, is the PC too limiting for what it is? You know, do they want to, exp obviously, they're expanding into, like, you know, XML and other services. Is it too limiting for what they want to do? So, in many ways, you know, I think they're looking at the multitude of different services and a multitude of technologies that help them through this, not just one operating system. Andrew Hahn, our Tech TV Lab Director, live in Times Square. Thanks, Andrew. Sure. XP has barely been released to the public and already a glitch is surfacing. There are reports that Disney's recently released Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs DVD doesn't play properly on computers running Windows XP. Some users get an out-of-virtual-memory prompt when they try to play it. 
Interactual Technologies, the software company that provides customer support for the DVD, says the problem only affects about 100,000 copies of the DVD. A Disney spokesman says a patch will be issued for the bug this week. Electronic powerhouse Sony had a tough second quarter as consumer demand for its electronic products hit a sour note. Sony PlayStation was the only division to buck the trend. The home electronics giant suffered a group net loss of $352 million compared to a year earlier loss of $601 million. Sony's profitability was also hurt by a loss from its mobile phone operations. It had to recall faulty handsets earlier this year, but sales of its PlayStation console posted a profit of $7.7 million, looking at Sony today down $1.87 to $38.97. Advanced Micro Devices is playing hardball with Intel to get European antitrust authorities to investigate the chip maker. AMD filed a brief in a Northern California federal court to force Intel to reveal documents withheld in a lawsuit it has already won. The documents came up in a 1997 antitrust lawsuit with Intergraph Corporation. The company accused Intel of withholding information about workstation technology because of patent claims Intergraph held. A year ago, AMD and VIA Technologies requested the European Commission investigate Intel's business practices for possible abusive marketing tactics. If found liable, Intel could face fines equaling 10% of its sales. A hearing is set for November the 12th. The long-anticipated Orbitz effect is kicking in. Continental Airlines is canceling commissions it pays to Expedia and Travelocity for online ticket sales. This follows a similar move by Northwest Airlines in March. In the early days of the World Wide Web, airlines paid commissions to Expedia and Travelocity to book their airline reservations, a task that was previously limited, limited to travel agents and in-house reservation staff. But now those commissions, combined with declining air travel, are adding up. Avoiding commissions was the main reason the major airlines created Orbitz, their own online travel sites. Looking at shares of Expedia and Travelocity, shockingly, both are up a little bit. 19 cents on Expedia, 26 cents on Travelocity. And all the hoopla surrounding XP, it's easy to forget that uh, the antitrust suit against Microsoft is still pending. Up next, the states pursue an aggressive remedy to that situation. Stick around. Look at this workmanship. You'd make a lot of lira selling these in New York. Yeah, look at these prices. These guys don't know what they got. They're clueless. Try asking the old guy if he can handle a production of 10,000 of these. No problem, senora. What's it say? They have 2 million units warehoused in New Jersey. New Jersey? New Jersey. New Jersey. The right infrastructure can take your business anywhere, even New Jersey. Bye-bye. A message from Elvira, down under. Crikey, so this is what the sun feels like. Oh, good day, mates. Elvira here. Wait till you have a squiz at what I'm bringing back from Oz for Halloween. It's a Bonzer marathon of Who Dares Wins. The Aussie game show of death-defying stunts, heart-pounding dangers, and ridiculous accents. Absolutely awesome. Game show network scares and dares with Elvira. An entire night of Who Dares Wins. Sunday, October 28th at 8 Eastern. It'll be a rip snorter. Whoa, now that's scary. Technology and the internet have revolutionized music, and keeping up with the beat is Audiophile, the only show that plugs you into the technology that makes your music. Every week, Liam Maklem and Chris Kosach travel the globe to bring you artist profiles, product reviews, and the latest music trends. Audiophile, Thursdays at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Time. As the Microsoft antitrust trial enters its remedy phase, the states that filed antitrust claims against the software maker are hiring a new heavy hitter. Brendan Sullivan is being hired to push the state's views on how Microsoft should be punished for antitrust behavior. Sullivan is known as one of the toughest defense lawyers in the nation. He was Oliver North's attorney during congressional hearings stemming from the 1986 Iran-Contra scandal. Some state prosecutors are worried that Justice Department uh, which is already a plaintiff, and also a plaintiff, is ready to settle with Microsoft. The district judge in the case is putting pressure on both parties to reach a settlement by November 2nd. Now, turning our attention back to the Windows XP launch, the operating system is opening a whole new Pandora's box 
when it comes to monopoly power. Many software makers say its .NET platform will spark a whole new debate on antitrust matters. Joining us now from Washington is Ken Wash. He's president of the Software Information Industry Association. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Becky. You know, let's talk about XP. And, you know, one of the issues, of course, when we talk about antitrust issues is tying. What do you see as a potentially tied portion of XP? And I mean tied in the kind of prickly antitrust way, not in the warm, integrated Microsoft way. Well, Microsoft's tied several products to its new Windows XP. Uh, the, the, the new uh, graphics or picture capabilities, uh, the Windows Media Player and Passport. Are three, oh, and, um, and instant messaging. Um, those are four different middleware products that are now tied, you know, or integrally tied within XP. Sometimes when we're covering the trial and the remedy phase of what's happened with the Department of Justice's antitrust work against Microsoft, it all seems like a moot point because they have a whole new set of products that are involved in tying that have nothing to do with IE, which was the central piece of the argument way back when. Oh, the, the case was not about the, the browser. I mean, those, Microsoft has argued that the case is about the browser. What the case is about is the application of monopoly power. Uh, what the court has found and has been now confirmed by the, by the Court of Appeals is that Microsoft engaged in unlawful monopoly maintenance. Um, the, the specific fact pattern doesn't matter at this point is, is that what the remedy must be going forward is to prevent Microsoft from engaging in practices which will um, kill alternative technologies or nascent technologies um, by, 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 through which Microsoft would maintain its Windows monopoly. You know, there's some fantastic features in Windows XP, but what Microsoft has done is redefined what is an operating system, and so the operating system now consists of not only the basic input-output functions, but it's now tied to a whole range of other products and services which disadvantage competing technologies. Ken, do you think that any of the other anti-competitive lawsuits or actions may gain momentum targeting XP, or are the states and the government factions, in fact, some other countries and ISP groups, are they just burned out on this? No, they're not burned out at all. In fact, what's, what's happened recently is consumer groups have come out uh, against, against uh, Microsoft's antitrust woes or on the side of, on the side of consumers as they should be. Um, the European case is a very robust case which uh, consumers should be watching. So uh, a range of forces have now, uh, have now aligned themselves against Microsoft, not as a company, because they make terrific products and they're terrific people that work at Microsoft, but these forces have arranged themselves or aligned themselves against Microsoft's anti-competitive practices which aren't necessary to ensure Microsoft's success as a company. Ken, do you think that XP's personal data collection service, Passport, falls into this collection, you mentioned it earlier, of anti-competitive behavior patterns? And what are your concerns about Passport? Well, our concerns about Passport is that it might disadvantage other authentication systems, for instance, the Liberty Alliance. I mean, our position has been the same for now four years. We do not believe that the operating system should be used as a vehicle to leverage Microsoft's control from the operating system into the sale of other products and services. We will be happy if it's possible for computer manufacturers to mix and match the operating system with other technologies, with other middleware technologies. Wouldn't it be great, for example, if Compaq could bundle somebody else's media player and another company's Liberty Alliance uh, authentication system, and so they could mix and match these technologies and they could work seamlessly. But Microsoft is preventing that, requiring these OEMs to use only Microsoft technologies moving forward. Ken Wash is president of the Software and Information Industry Association. Ken, thanks for joining us. Great, thank you. Technology is playing a key role in the detection and prevention of anthrax. Up next, three new inventions that are making America a safer place. featured presentation at an invitation-only premiere by controlling who sees your resume and who doesn't, leaving just you, your resume, and the person who's hiring. Hotjobs.com. Moo. It's a great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. 
because right now when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner, so you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th, so stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. New Ultimate Ride lets you create the ultimate roller coaster and ride it with 3D graphics and multiple camera angles. Ultimate Ride PCCD ROM. Whoa! Rated E for everyone. Introducing new MSN from Microsoft. More useful, more advanced, and now a great alternative to AOL. MSN, more useful every day. Tell your own fortune, post your resume, and see what tomorrow holds. Even if you already have a job, it's free, easy, and confidential. So log on and leave nothing to chance. Hotjobs.com. The next chapter begins. Windows XP launches today. Taking a look at the latest technology in fighting bioterrorism, scientists at the University of Tennessee are busy working on a computer chip that can detect antigens in the air. The chip is coated with cells that glow when they come in contact with a specific substance or pathogen, such as anthrax spores. It was originally developed to detect environmental pollutants. The lead researcher says the chip has civilian and military applications. Full development of the chip is still several years away, but scientists hope the technology will one day be manufactured on a large scale. Federal officials are also looking into a new type of foam that can help combat possible anthrax incidents in the nation's post offices. The foam, which was successfully tested on live anthrax this weekend, has been used to clean NBC offices and may be used to clean Capitol Hill offices exposed to the germ. It contains commonly used household products that break down the protective coating of a biological agent. A second substance kills the spores. We could quickly deploy the foam, smother the agent, prevent the spread, and kill or neutralize the agent. The companies that make the foam say they can produce 200,000 gallons a week. Now they're awaiting government approval and customers. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is getting a new weapon in its fight to detect anthrax quickly. It is from a Houston-based company. Baylor researchers have come up with a new barcode technology that can give faster and more accurate anthrax tests. It could also lead to the source of anthrax-laced letters. Christy Myers has more. This is DNA technology, and it's identifying staph bacteria. But this week, the CDC wants to use this new technology developed by Baylor College of Medicine to test for anthrax. Advantages of the technology are speed. Uh, um, it can be done in a matter of hours um, rather than days. We don't get false positives with this technology. When Baylor receives the CDC sample, it will take only a day or two to create an anthrax database. Then they can determine specific strains of anthrax. If one gets a hold of the strains that, that have been grown uh, uh, from, from the victims of this terrorism, you can just determine if these match or these are different from each other. And I think that's very important information. It's called bacterial barcodes because it looks like a barcode that you see on products in the supermarket. The bacterial barcode can identify exact strains of anthrax. The technology has been used already by ketchup manufacturers and others since Baylor College of Medicine created this spin-off company two years ago. Now some surprising uses for this technology, they've already used it to track a bacteria that was killing wine grapes and they've used it to find a venereal disease that was a problem among Kentucky racehorses. It's also being used in some hospitals to control the spread of infections. But today, these Houston scientists are anxious to help stop this bioterrorism. 
we believe this is pretty powerful technology, and, and if we can help in any way, we're, we're happy to do that. Baylor did not develop this bacterial fingerprinting for bioterrorism. When Baylor works out details with the CDC, Houston researchers could begin working with the U.S. Army to fingerprint anthrax strains. Bad news from the tech market. We'll talk about a little bit of stuff going on overseas and get all the details on the markets when we return. Stick around. Radio Shack is the place people go for specialty batteries for all kinds of things. Choose from over a thousand batteries. Radio Shack has more power. Radio Shack. It's here, waiting for you. Inside is unlimited strength and power. It builds confidence and reshapes your body. It can change everything. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance, all in the convenience of your own home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Bowflex is real. The results are real. The question is, are you ready for Bowflex? For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research, listen to real customers, then place your order online and get started. Bowflex. Who said change isn't easy? Tonight on Audiophile. We explore the world of electronic music. We're breaking down genres from ambient to techno. Superstar producer and remixer BT schools us on creating beats. And we'll reveal the history and the tech behind the electronic music you love. It's all about the beat. <coughs> An all new Audiophile. Tonight at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV's Tech Prime. <laughs> Why don't we see how the tech stocks are doing so far today? Gene Lee is at the NASDAQ in New York. Hello, Gene. Hey, guess what, Steve? I changed locations. I'm over here in our New York bureau today. All right. Um, I'm going to tell you about WorldCom. The uh, company has come out with uh, its most recent earnings. Um, the uh, long-distance phone and data services company posted a 44% uh, drop in its third quarter net and uh, that happened on weaker sales. WorldCom also warned that sales growth in its core data and internet business will slow in the fourth quarter in 2002. Third quarter net income came to 14 cents a share versus analyst expectations for 16 cents. Revenues dropped 11% to $9 billion from $10 billion a year ago. Tobin Smith at Change Wave Investments says WorldCom is trying to climb up a very steep hill. The only thing about WorldCom, the only reason to buy this is for a buyout. They're trying to pay down debt. They're trying to do things to clean up the balance sheet. But they, you know, they killed themselves when they used to be the low-cost provider of, of long distance and networking. And then they bought WorldCom, and then it got become the high-cost provider. And it was you know, probably a Harvard Business School uh, uh, research project on how to screw up a company. And uh, thank you, Bernie, very much. And uh, when you leave, maybe we'd buy the stock again. Jim Wagner with Sands Brothers says, don't look for WorldCom's consumer business to uh, improve anytime soon either. The consumer long distance business, of course, continues to dominate WorldCom's business. And that is a very soft business, even before we go into recessionary forces. And as we get into a recessionary time period, there's going to be less and less demand for long distance because consumers talk less, business talks less, et cetera. During the company's conference call, WorldCom CEO Bernie Evers, who uh, Smith was referring to earlier, said this company is, quote, obviously being impacted by the economic uncertainty like everyone else. Indeed, 
WorldCom, along with its rivals AT&T and Sprint, have suffered with business and residential customers slowing their spending in this weak economy. They are also dealing with the ongoing problems of pricing pressures and competition from the baby bells. Checking WorldCom stock down four cents at the moment at 12 41. We will, of course, keep you updated on how WorldCom does throughout the day. Let's go back to you, Steve. And we will check back with you later. Thank you very much, Gene. That's Gene Lee in New York. One other business note, Dutch Telecom KPN is planning to lay off 4,800 workers. That will be about 10% of its workforce. It is the latest batch of bad news for KPN. Last month, it lost CEO Paul Smits. And in August, it called off a planned merger with Belgium's Belgicom. The company also canceled IPO plans for its mobile division. The job cuts should save the company $625 million a year. Let's see how it's doing now. Shares of KPN on the New York Stock Exchange down 20 cents a share, trading at $3.86. And a Belgian speech recognition firm has been declared bankrupt by a European judge. The court rejected the company's request for bankruptcy protection after saying the company's plan was geared toward liquidation and not restructuring. Alan H. used to be the forerunner in Speech Command Software and the second biggest software firm in Europe. Its stock was eventually delisted from New York and Brussels, and its founders and former executives were temporarily jailed after they were arrested on suspicion of fraud, stock manipulation, and money laundering. It also faced shareholder lawsuits and investigations by the U.S. and European regulators. The top tech headlines of the day coming up right after the break. Stay right there. great feeling to be upgraded from a regular room to a luxury suite. Well, now you can get that same feeling when you buy a Gateway computer. Because right now, when you buy a Gateway 300S featuring the Intel Celeron processor, Gateway will give you two free upgrades, an extra large monitor and a built-in CD burner. So you can get everything for just $7.99. Don't you just love upgrades? Offer ends November 18th. So stop by or call 1-800-GATEWAY today. What if an internet provider asked you to draw from your imagination to envision taking your internet experience from everyday to extraordinary? You'd create AT&T WorldNet Service Plus. First, you'd start with the fastest logons and better connections. Then you'd add all the latest features, like instant messaging and chat for real-time communication. Not to mention cutting-edge tools like video email, so people can see and hear you every time you send a message. And you'd want live customer support. Now you can get it all from the provider-rated Best ISP by PC World. Call now for AT&T WorldNet Service Plus at just $16.95 a month. That's nearly 30% less than the leading ISP. So call 1-800-WORLDNET today and switch to the internet plan that's drawing lots of attention. Technology and the internet have revolutionized music, and keeping up with the beat is Audiophile, the only show that plugs you into the technology that makes your music. Every week, Liam Maklem and Chris Kosach travel the globe to bring you artist profiles, product reviews, and the latest music trends. Audiophile. Thursdays at 9, 8 central, only on Tech TV Tech Times. In Cover Story, we bring you a major milestone in the history of Microsoft as the company officially launches Windows XP. Hello, I'm Kristen Dahlgren. And I'm Becky Worley. Before we get to our cover story, here's a few of our tech headlines at this hour. Security experts with Cisco Systems, Yahoo, America Online, and Microsoft are considering whether to create a first alert system for cyber attacks. 600 or so folks from the tech industry are meeting in the halls of Congress to see what it would take to create a cooperative official network to warn of cyber attacks, viruses, and hoaxes. 
Richard A. Clark, the advisor for cybersecurity in the newly created Office of Homeland Security, has encouraged companies to create industry-specific information dissemination centers. Liquid Audio says it will take a look at a proposal to buy one of its investors uh, to have them buy the company out at $3 per share. Steel Partners says it doesn't like the way the company is being run. It currently holds 8% of the company. Now, defunctmusicmaker.com bought a 6% stake in the embattled company and is looking to increase its holdings. And CNET's reporting that non-Microsoft browsers like Mozilla, Opera, and some versions of Netscape can't access MSN.com. When using these browsers, a page pops up saying that the browser that you're using will not render MSN.com correctly, then provides links to download Internet Explorer. Microsoft has not given an official response yet. Getting back to our cover story now, Windows XP represents what some say is the best operating system ever. But is it really? And what does it represent for Microsoft's future? XP, XP represents the first step toward what Bill Gates calls, quote, the holy grail of distributed computing. Microsoft calls it .NET. We begin our cover story with Seattle Bureau Chief Matt Markovich, who looks at how XP will fit into Microsoft's puzzle. There we go. Ready? Ready and approved. In Microsoft's view of the world, its XP operating system is a great breakthrough, stable, robust, and full of new features. Windows XP is the best release of Windows ever. But both competitors and observers concerned about the future of how products and services will be delivered on the Internet say XP is a Trojan horse. Lots of features loaded inside the operating system, delivered in an anti-competitive manner, intended to capture huge new markets for Microsoft. This has profound implications for consumer choice is that, is that with XP, we will find consumer choices further extinguished than they already are. Whatever spin you put on XP's new features, such as the ambitious new media player and digital photo developing, it's clear that Microsoft sees such offerings as a stepping stone to the next stage of its business. Michael Cherry spent 10 years on the Windows development team and is now a consultant. XP is going to be the key operating system for Microsoft as they move forward, particularly into their .NET vision. Great. She sent me her schedule. Reply. .NET is Microsoft's Sandra, bet the farm strategy for its future, a future of web services, information, transactions, and applications available on any device at any time, anywhere, and eventually for a fee. I, I really don't think we can measure it by the millions of lines of code, but rather by the kinds of things people are going to be able to get done and the opportunity it represents for our industry. The opportunity Gates sees is giving consumers a taste of what .NET is all about. When people understand, I think they'll see Windows XP really as a great innovation for the industry, for the end user, and for Microsoft. XP is the first operating system to include key elements of Microsoft's .NET innovations, features such as .NET My Services, formerly called Hailstorm. It's Microsoft's seamless and all-encompassing web services architecture. So now Microsoft has a common operating system across a wide base of devices all of which hold the plumbing, the foundation work, on which they can build the .NET framework and the .NET services. If Microsoft can convert consumers to XP and its built-in services, analysts say online services like AOL should watch out. Instead of subscribing to an online service like AOL, .NET users would simply sign up for Microsoft's Passport Authentication Service, the sign-on once, sign-on everywhere approach, to access web services like music downloads, banking, calendars, office applications. Almost anything you could do now would be a web service. Although XP is just a step toward realizing that vision, the operating system includes technology to start this process. In fact, they're even working on a version of Windows XP uh, that they call XP Embedded that can go into smart devices that aren't the typical laptop. So it could go into uh, PDAs, it could go into set-top boxes. Microsoft is now doing a hard sell to convince developers to create applications using .NET. Having elements of .NET in XP is part of that hard sell, and analysts say we should expect more .NET-friendly elements from future Microsoft operating systems. The way that they tend to develop is they work on a whole bunch of features, and then at some point they'll decide, well, these features are sort of in this release, and we'll start stabilizing, and we'll get ready to ship. Microsoft is already thinking of its next OS shipping date, codename Longhorn, which could be sometime in 2003. Matt Markovich for Tech Live. It will be several years and several generations of operating systems before any of us will realize the full impact of .NET. 
But in order for it to work, Microsoft is spending millions of dollars to convince developers to make applications for .NET. If Microsoft can't do this, .NET is in serious jeopardy. Among the various programs rolled into XP is its latest version of Windows Media Player. Not only is it part of XP, but it's sitting right on the desktop. Tech Live's Dan Kerman tells us what the newest version of Windows Media Player means for its main competitor, Real Network. The unveiling of Windows XP brings with it the launch of Microsoft's latest version of Windows Media Player. The user interface is a little more straightforward. It's easier to access your music files and um, makes it easier to transfer music from the PC to a CD burner or to portable devices as well. While playing catch up for years, analysts say Windows Media Player is now running neck and neck with real networks, not just in popularity, but in software quality. And while this latest version of Media Player is another step forward, analysts don't believe it's enough to change the online music landscape and knock real networks out of the box. Remember, Real Networks has a very big footprint and a good technology. Real Networks is also refining its players right now, and it's going to combine them within the next month and a half into something called Real One. In connection with that, it will roll out MusicNet. So, yes, Microsoft is far larger than and better funded than Real Networks, but no, uh, Microsoft, in our view, is not really in a position to steamroll over Real Networks. Analysts say media giant America Online, which has relationships with both, will make sure competition remains in place. AOL itself does not sell streaming media software. It doesn't create streaming media software. It clearly wants a variety of providers in the market. It has a close relationship with real networks. Um, in some areas, it has a close relationship with Microsoft, but it does not want Microsoft to swallow this entire market. Real networks and Microsoft are also opponents when it comes to MusicNet and Press Play, the two industry-backed, soon-to-be-launched online music sites. But industry analysts don't see either of them pushing people in one direction or the other. I don't think we're going to see a sizable penetration until it's possible to do CD burning and transfer to devices so that users can listen to their music whenever and however they want. For now, analysts say it's consumers who will benefit most since this competition is driving both players to be better. What we will do is we'll continue to innovate and find the latest, greatest things that people are willing to do, what they want to do with their computer, the things that, uh, that are available out there on the Internet. We will go and we will try to put all those features in there to make the experience even better. Dan Kerman, Tech Live. Now, analysts say that at this point, most people have at least two or more media players on their computer. They don't believe that will change, even with the launch of this new version of Windows Media Player. We'll be covering the launch of Windows XP throughout the day here on Tech Live, and our friends at TechLive.com will be doing the same. You can visit our website to find a complete uh, Windows XP review, courtesy of the Tech TV Labs. Let's feature articles on the importance of the new OS to Microsoft's bottom line and much more. Once again, you can find all that at techlive.com. Stay tuned for more wall-to-wall -wall coverage as we celebrate the launch of Windows XP. We'll be back with more XP-O-Rama. It's time you expected more from an insurance company. So call Progressive Auto Insurance, and we can give you our low price, plus the rates for up to three leading competitors. And that could save you hundreds. We want you to save money, even if it's not with us. It's time you expected an easier way to buy car insurance. Because at Progressive.com, you can get a quote and buy a policy instantly. In fact, our website is so fast and easy to use, it's been rated number one four times in a row. It's time you expected faster claim service. At Progressive, our immediate response vehicles can come right to you. They're like a claims office on wheels. We make getting back on the road fast and easy. Visit Progressive.com or call Progressive today. For fast, friendly service 24 hours a day, we want you to save money, even if it's not with us. Okay, maybe we're not changing the world, but we are changing the way people buy car insurance. You could start saving now. Call Progressive today or visit Progressive.com. Progressive, not what you'd expect from an insurance company. Tonight on the Screensavers. Coming up on the next Screensavers. Scott Harriet waited in line at the stroke of midnight to grab his own copy of Windows XP. You're kidding. We'll see how he held up fighting off the crowd. Plus, David Lawrence discusses the controversial XP activation wizard. And Chris Perillo will do his best imitation of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a...
The Screensavers, tonight at 7, 6 Central, only on Tech TV's Tech Time. Judge Colleen Colarcatelli says she sold all of her family's technology holdings in order to avoid potential conflicts of interest. Color Catelli is the trial judge appointed to oversee the Microsoft antitrust case. According to the Associated Press, financial records show the judge had previously purchased shares in IBM, Sun Microsystems, Compaq, and Intel, companies whose success is tied in some way to the outcome of the Microsoft case. She also owns shares of Cisco Systems and Qualcomm. Color Catelli says she has informed Microsoft lawyers and the government about her prior ownership and the sale of her tech holdings. She has not disclosed whether the stock was sold before or after her appointment as the new trial judge. The law does not require her to report that until next year. Microsoft's new OS confirms the race to create a universal sign-up service. But what will it do for e-commerce? TechLive Stacey Barcelata has that part of the story. Stace? Thanks, Becky. Well, Microsoft's Windows XP operating system, it may mean a new era for online shoppers certainly has the potential to be the first OS to have an impact on the e-commerce business. XP comes smart card ready. It also includes the online identity service Passport, which in part touts a more convenient online shopping experience. But consumers are still hesitant about electronic shopping for a variety of reasons. According to NUA Internet Surveys, only 15.2 million households shopped online last month. That's out of an estimated 65 million households that were online, according to Gartner DataQuest. David Heim of Consumer Reports says the September 11th attacks have rekindled security fears, even for online shopping. And people don't want to hand out personal information and credit card numbers over the Internet. Versions of XP being smart card ready might have a larger implication. Jeff Roster of Gartner says smart cards offer increased assurance of secure transactions online. A smart card... Uh, gives the user the ability to protect their information because it's encoded and encrypted. And so when you use a smart card, uh, a whole process happens behind the scenes. Um, a query is sent out and the query is responded to in the smart card. Um, smart cards can also require the use of either a PIN or biometric information. So you're protect you're, there's a second, second level of, of confirmation as to who you are, making the transaction much more secure. And the promise of security might be the key to increasing e-commerce business. The Forrester Online Retail Index shows e-commerce is down from a year ago and has fallen slightly since the September 11th attacks. Attempts to streamline the online shopping process have been made before. For example, various e-commerce sites offer virtual wallets. There's one-click shopping on Amazon.com, and there's the Liberty Alliance Project, a sun-led alliance that aims to compete with Passport. But nothing on the OS scale has been previously attempted. So will XP give e-commerce a needed boost? Heim of Consumer Reports says that while it might make more Internet commerce possible, the downsides, privacy and control issues, may have an adverse effect, yielding no overall boost to e-commerce or quite possibly a negative effect. Now, Heim added that Microsoft hasn't really proved Passport will be advantageous to its users. If people are shopping online, they may already have a virtual wallet or have their browser preferences set to remember passwords or fill in forms. Now, with Passport, that data would still have to travel over the net and may actually slow down the process. So still, it isn't at all clear whether e-commerce will benefit from XP. And uh, currently, Microsoft does claim that they have at least 165 million Passport users signed up. I'm Stacey Barcelata reporting live in the newsroom. Becky? Privacy uh, concerns continue. Thanks, Stace. Appreciate that. Much more Tech Live still to come, including continuing coverage of the big debut of Windows XP. Stick around. ready for a new level of freedom. Microsoft Windows XP puts the tools of the digital age at your fingertips. Experience Windows XP on Microsoft Extreme October 27th and 28th on Tech TV. Hello, Mrs. Lindsay. 
William. Hello, Stephen. You're not by any chance computer shopping, are you? Mm-hmm. If I can get some help. Well, right now, you can get a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which is so nice, for only $8.99. Really? She's intrigued. Excellent. Because right now, it comes with your choice of a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. And as far as service and support, Dell's won more awards than any other PC company in the last five years. Just call or go online. Tell them what you want, and right to your front door comes America's favorite PC. Thanks, Steven. Now you can get a Dell desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which delivers performance where you need it most. And six months of Dellnet by MSN Internet Access for just $8.99. Call or go online today and get a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. There's great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. Running a small business is all about pursuing a dream, making your mark, finding new ways to get things done. Sprint understands, and they have some new ways to help your business succeed, like data services backed by guarantees. They call it the Sprint Small Business Promise. It says that their data services will be among the most reliable in the business. So reliable, in fact, that if the Sprint network goes down, even for a minute, you'll get three days of service free. Guaranteed. In short, it says that Sprint will be there for you 24-7 with data services designed specifically for small business and backed by unsurpassed guarantees. For your guarantees, call 1-800-786-5321. Do it by December 31st and they'll throw in a Cisco router worth $3,400. So go on, invent a new product, change an entire industry, shake up the world. Just know that Sprint has you covered. Guaranteed. Tech Live chat rooms have been a buzz about XP all day. For an update on what's going on at this hour, we go to our chat guru, Robin Husevel. Robin, what are people saying? Hi, Kristen. Well, the launch of XP is a huge topic in the chat room today, and we are getting some fairly mixed reviews on XP. Some people are loving it and can't wait to to upgrade their um, OS, and some people are saying, I'm going to back off and see what people are saying for a few weeks about the OS and then decide whether to upgrade or not. Some of the comments that were in the chat room, one from Farabi says, um, to home consumers, um, that he thinks home consumers will like this new OS, but IT managers, he's not too sure about. And Ichiro agrees with him, and he says that for IT managers, they may hold off, uh, he thinks that they should hold off on upgrading to XP because it's got too many toys for business use, like these media players or the digital imaging um, features that are on, are on XP. And I also noticed in, the, um, in our talk back on techlive.com, we asked well, if, we, if people thought that if XP will fly or flop, and a lot of the comments in there are saying that they think it will fly, but they're going to stick to their original OS and uh, see what people are saying in a few weeks. Are a lot of people concerned about the licensing because that's something that we've heard a lot of complaints about? Yes, price and licensing are the big issues and, and, and their, their own personal information protection um, are the three things that are the, the mo they're, what they're most concerned about in the chat room. They, um, they like the fact that um, in our labs they, they're saying that it's a solid um, OS, but they're holding off just to see what the, the licensing issue is all about and if it'll change again. What about the big launch today? Were they watching and what did they think of that? Um, honestly, they thought it was a little bit of um, a cheesy <laughs> um, presentation, <laughs> but um, they were listening for, for the, the critical pieces that they're looking for as far as the features go. All right, and if you want to join Robin, you can go to techlive.com and click on chat. In today's XP demo, all the product shots were slides. It was practically a PowerPoint presentation, and that begs the question, why wouldn't Microsoft show XP live? Well, one thought is because demonstrating any product can sometimes be a disaster. There are disasters. Then there are disasters. How do I know when it gets here? Take Scott McNeely's CES demonstration of a Java-enabled instant messaging device. Oh, message didn't get there. Now, this, this is... <laughs> This is, well, now, how many of you used your cell phone today during the, during the uh, conference, and, and how well is your coverage been? This is, this is kind of the danger of doing a live demo. 
Where's your resume? What's the URL for your resume? <laughs> then in Steve Jobs' Macworld 99 keynote, Phil Schiller tried to show the gaming abilities of Apple computers. Not having luck today. So we're going to have to try this again later, Steve. Okay, that's great. It's pretty awesome when it works. For the suit who's supervising the demo, it's embarrassing. For the stiff doing the demo, it's terrifying. Bill Gates had a famous crash involving the blue screen of death. The bug that caused that blue screen got fixed that very night. Uh, and the person who helped me with that demo is still working for Microsoft. You sort of joke that you, do, you pray to the demo gods before you go on, because no matter how many times you practice, like hundreds and hundreds of times, um, there's always small things that happen. They've told us they need help managing all the individual boxes. Microsoft's Garth Fort is one of those demo guys. I knew from the minute that I got on stage that one of the machines was going to crash as soon as I touched it. Most of the demo guys are product managers, and at least in the case of the Bill Gates demo team, they get graded. The best demo that you can ever do, Bill, Bill will sort of, you know, say nothing, right? That's kind of like, that's what you kind of expect, right? But that means he's happy and he's pleased, etc. Um, the best I've ever done with Bill, he gave me a B-. minus. Microsoft Doug Gronke prepared the Windows 2000 demo. Doug is just trying to focus like an athlete, you know, he's just focused specifically on getting, you know, going through his mind, the visualization, the script, repeating it again and again and again. And that's kind of what he's doing. He's locking himself in a room and rehearsing this demo ahead of time, sort of imagining the keystrokes, etc. So how'd he do? Hi, it's me, Doug Gronke again, product manager at Microsoft. For Doug, it went well, but there's always a next time. Nobody I know of has ever lost their job uh, because of demos, but I do know guys who have, who have had demos go poorly and self-elected to get out of the demo business forever. Thanks, Thanks Bill. Now we continue to speculate as to why Microsoft did no live demos today for XP's rollout, but after seeing the stress that those demo guys have to endure in other product rollouts, it's uh, not hard to understand the decision. <laughs> it's a tough job. <laughs> Coming up on Tech Live, our Thursday fill of audio file. Don't go away. Sorting your drum and bass from your ambient electronic music genres deciphered. Need the answers? Stick around. The next chapter begins. Windows XP launches today. DirecTV presents a special preview event every weekend in October. Feel the haunting lyrics. David Gray, recorded live at the Warfield in San Francisco. And it's free to DirecTV customers. Music of honesty and stark beauty from the White Ladder CD. David Gray, in concert every weekend this month. A preview event on Channel 103. I love the speed, you know, the pace of the game to be very high and very quick. The great goaltenders try to intimidate that shooter no matter who he is or how good he is. See, goalies, you got to get them moving, you got to get them going side to side. Cuts the angles down very well. You see a lot of pads and you don't see much net. You try to give them a five hole or something down low and then take it away from them. And turn it into a one on one battle, like you're not going to beat me tonight. NHL Center Rights from Direct TV. Call 1 800 Get Sports and pay just $149. over the launch of XP, so we're going to take a quick break and ask you, are you having trouble knowing your jungle from your synth pop? Look no further than Audiophile's Chris Kosach, here to sort things out for us. Hey, Chris. Hey, Kristen. Uh, well, you know, it can be very, very confusing. Jungle, ambient, techno, trance. Isn't it all just electronica anyway? Well, the answer to that, my dear friends, is no way. The gear and software may be the same, but the sounds are very different. This week on Audiophile, we disseminate the subgenres for you. Here's a peek. Now, if you'd like to see that entire package, we will have it for you tonight on Audiophile. 
That is at 9 o'clock Eastern and 8 o'clock Central. Sorry about the glitch there. It's That's really right. a great What else piece. is coming up on the show? We also, well, the, the entire package is about, or the entire show, rather, is about electronic music. Mm -hmm. So, and as you know, electronic music uses uh, computers and technology. It's absolutely dependent on that. So it's really interesting because we're actually going to look at MIDI, which is a language that computers use to understand one another mm -hmm. uh, as far as making music goes, and the history of all of these types of music, and uh, we'll disseminate everything. So you will, in fact, we promise, we won't <laughs> cut you off then. You'll see jungle and ambient, and they can all seem very confusing, but we will disseminate everything for you. Now, you guys do the show for some, from some great places. Where are you tonight? Tonight, we are um, the Electronic Festival which is, uh, actually, excuse me, the Electronic Special, which is just shot here in San Francisco in a great club called the DNA Lounge. Um, but we go all over the United States for this show. And then tomorrow we are headed off to the uh, New Orleans Voodoo Music Festival. So there's going to be some big bands there, Miss Elliott, Snoop, uh, uh, the Black Crows, Bush, just name a few. We're definitely going backstage. We'll talk to those folks and we'll have that for you in a later edition of Tech Live and Audio Class. All right, that'll be fun. Looking forward to it. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Chris. It is XP all day long here on Tech Live. One of the biggest tech events of the year is taking place across the globe. Tech Live is in Times Square covering all the action and we'll bring you the latest when we continue. Destiny won't find you. Send out a search party for your next job. Tell us what you're looking for, like a specific city or industry, and we'll email you every day with personalized updates. Hotjobs.com. I got my business online a few years ago. To this day, I'm glad I used Register.com. They registered my domain name and got it out there. That helped. I mean, I'm still going strong. A company's name is its reputation. Got to protect it. That's why I transferred to Register.com. They watch your back on the Internet. Whether you're a startup or well-established, we can help you with everything from domain registration to personalized email. Call the number on your screen now to register and get a domain name that includes a multi-page website for under $30 a year. In the old days, shipbuilders relied on word of mouth. With the website I got through Register.com, it's just like the old days, only in 60 languages. Your name is important. Protect it with Register.com. I registered my craft. I registered my vision. I registered my knowledge. Visit Register.com for this limited offer to get your business out on the web and keep it there. MSN from Microsoft. More useful, more advanced, and now a great alternative to AOL. MSN, more useful every day. Optimism is your weapon, and we're in your corner. With the majority of Fortune 500 companies, hundreds of thousands of jobs, and new listings every day. Come out swinging. Hotjobs.com. Hello, Mrs. Lindsay. William? Hello, Stephen. You're not by any chance computer shopping, are you? Mm-hmm. If I can get some help. Well, right now, you can get a complete Dell system with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which is so nice, for only $8.99. Really? She's intrigued. Excellent. Because right now, it comes with your choice of a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. And as far as service and support, Dell's won more awards than any other PC company in the last five years. Just call or go online. Tell them what you want, and right to your front door comes America's favorite PC. Thanks, Steven. Now you can get a Dell desktop with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, which delivers performance where you need it most. And six months of Dellnet by MSN Internet Access for just $8.99. Call or go online today and get a free CD burner or DVD upgrade. There's great deals on notebooks, too. Dude, you're getting a Dell. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. Windows XP is the most powerful, fastest, most reliable operating system we have ever done. It's no 95 fanfare where enthusiasts were camped out to get their hands on the next version of the OS, but XP is still hot. 
the newest in Microsoft's dynasty, has hit the shelves across the world from Australia to Japan, Europe to the United States. This is Tech Live's special coverage from New York Times Square as Bill Gates and crew push the start button and launch XP. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech Live. I'm Kristen Dahlgren. And I'm Becky Worley. This is the XPO-rama. It certainly is. Matt Markovich is at that XP party in New York where Bill Gates wrapped up his keynote a little while ago. Matt, what's going on there now? Well, yeah, Mr. Sting is performing at a concert in Bryant Park here, not too far from here. It's a special one-hour concert for all the attendees and the people who have actually got some tickets from the local computer stores. A gift to Microsoft to the city of New York, a little bit of entertainment as well as some publicity. Um, but that's what it, this whole thing was about, as you could expect. This is just one, but one big photo opportunity and one way for Microsoft and company, Bill Gates included, to get their message out that XP is ready to ship. It's ready to go, ready to be bought on the shelves, and it is their product for the future and other uh, and, a, and a first stepping stone toward, stepping stone toward their .NET services. In all, it was nothing but a big marketing event for Microsoft.